glow. <coughs> uh, one second. Okay. Congrats on the gala. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. I'm good. Um, well, other than this neck brace, guys, I was re technically, I was ready to stream pretty early today, but the pain I was feeling in my upper back slash lower neck area is, was so bad. I literally was like in my chair like this and I was just on the computer. Yo, hello. Hi. Here we are, here we are. What's good, everyone? Um, what it do? Well, 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 well. If you hear that pumping, I'm just pumping air into this. Oh, that's why. It wasn't even connected. I'm like, why does it feel soft again? It got disconnected. Wait, I need to shove it back in. Oh. Michelangelo. Thank you so much for the four months. Your shiny hunt has been painful. Oh, don't worry about it. Now that I'm here, my luck will transfer to you. Neck brace, a bit of a vibe. <laughs> Not the neck brace aesthetic. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> feel better soon Arya thank you I yeah hopefully I do I mean to be honest when I use this neck brace the pain just goes away completely so I'm thinking it has something to do with like the my posture or something I wonder if without this because I can't I'm not like doing it naturally like what is what why what is the science behind what what is what is the the science behind this how come when I use this, there's no pain? But the second I take it off and I like, I don't know if it's a hunching thing or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, it's a neck brace aesthetic. But guys, it feels so good. Once the neck brace is on, I, I don't feel pain anymore. So I don't know, but I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm all for this uh, neck brace life. Anyways, how are you guys? I hope you are well. Um, yeah, I spent all day yesterday sleeping. I slept all day. I woke up to eat some Vietnamese noodles. And then I went back to sleep. <laughs> Guys, oh wait, no, actually. Actually, no, I did do something. I watched more episodes of Wednesday. So I, I think I'm like... I'm I'm on episode five now, which is nice, which is cool. Um, grinding through the pain, I respect that. Well, like I said, with this neck brace, there is no pain. I know this looks a little scary and daunting, and it it may look like I'm in pain, but I'm perfectly good now. Like I feel like, I feel like I I ha I have a, a new neck. It's great. It feels so good. Um, yes, Exo Suba. Aww. Thank you so much for the five gifted. Thank you. Starting off this stream nice and litty. Thank you, thank you. What Pokemon am I playing? I'm playing Scarlet and Violet. Uh, well, I'm oh, sorry. I'm playing Violet. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. I'm playing Violet. Um. Hold on. Let me pop out chat real quick. Aw. <laughs> Wacky snail, thank you so much for the 19 months. Welcome back. Violet on top. Yes, yes, yes. I I, I do. I am I'm all, I am all about the future. Won't lie to ya. I am about that. Angsty Reptilia. Kairos are bad for you, really? I do believe in te it, it being temporary relief. Long-term damage? Sheesh. Bravis, you got your uwu. It's gonna be a surprise. Give a close friend. Aww. Thank you so much for the bits and thank you so much for supporting 
my merch. It's very sweet of you. Thank you. All right, hold on. I need to set up my um, alerts and stuff. Sorry, whenever... Oh, guys, I only took one day of a break. I took one day of a break to just sleep, eat one meal, and, and, and watch Wednesday. And no, it wasn't intentional that I only ate one meal. I just was so freaking tired. All I could think about is sleep. So, yeah, this is just... This is my schedule now. I... <laughs> I stream for a day and then I sleep for a day. Stream for a day and I sleep for a day. Is it healthy? I don't know at this point. I I, I am a believer that time is a social construct. And and, and it, we've come to we've been brainwashed to believe that we need a perfect nine eight what? Eight hours of sleep? Nine hours of sleep? I don't I don't know how the how the lullaby goes. But anyways, yeah, you know, I I say no. I'm gonna put my foot down. Well, in this case, my fist down. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think I'm built different. And I'm okay with this. Guys, my mental has never been better. <laughs> it's not copium. Why would you say it's copium? I'm just speaking my truth. I, I'm speaking my truth. How dare you? How dare you? Tell those physics nerds. Yeah. Yeah. As a nurse, that hurts to hear. <laughs> okay, listen, my sister's a nurse. My sister's a nurse, too. So, like I said, please, please don't take me seriously. The moment you take me seriously, you, you've you lost. But anyways, you need to take a break again. No, 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 trust me. I've been sleeping way too much. Okay, how come the air keeps on dying? I, I swear, I'm, like, pumping the crap out of this thing. Is the valve, like... Oh, crap, this is loose. That's not supposed to be loose. I need a nurse up in here. How are you liking the show? It's really good. Oh, this feels... Okay, okay, it, it's working now. We're good. Is there a hole in it? No. We're good now, we're good now. All right, this feels nice. Ah, uh, yeah. Yo, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I am so ready to stream today. I have my snowman cookie. And I have my coffee. And do we have any coffee nerds in the chat? Because I need to start brewing my own coffee. I've said this for a while now. I'm tired of it. Actually, should we do a little just chatting before we start gaming? What do you guys think? Maybe I should do a little just chatting before I game. I feel like, guys, it's been too long. We need to catch up. Sup? All right, so a couple things. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, yes, yes. Did you see the World Cup? No, but I saw a lot of um tweets about it, uh, which is cool, because I I mean I I, I don't really watch soccer, but I, I do love people um uh, being hype about stuff. I don't know. I feel like I absorb that energy very well. So as long as like the timeline is people are like going woo and stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, woo. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really watch it. But yes, Pokey's country. Yes, Morocco. I saw that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I literally saw I saw Pokey tweet it. And then literally a couple moments after I saw Elon Musk tweet it. And I'm like, wait, wait a sec. I thought I thought Pokey tweeted this, not Elon Musk. And then I actually was like gaslighting myself to believe like, oh no, it, it was actually Elon Musk when I saw it was Pokey's blah, blah, blah. But then I, I checked and it was Pokey. So I was like, okay, okay. So they just had really similar tweets in it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know Pokey is Elon? Jesus. But yes, um, that's cool. I'm, I'm glad that, um, you know, Morocco, Pogger, that sounds fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Was was the game really close? Was it intense? Who who did they go against? Who who did they go against? Um and and where where are we uh in the what is it called? The brackets. They went against Portugal. Ooh, sheesh. Um is it is it the finals yet? Where are we at? What's ha what's happening? Tell give me the deets. They went to the semi Oh, semifinals. Sheesh. So so we got we got a couple more games ahead of us. Um and 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 how frequent do these games play? How frequent are they? Uh when is the next game? Or at least like when do they play? Um That's cool. That's cool. Let's put on some music up in here. 
next week. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Very nice, very nice. All right, let's put up some music. Um, Pokemon music. Pokemon full episodes. Best Pokemon OST. Um, yeah, let me know if the music's too loud. But anyways, gotta go see ya. Well, that was fast. Well, thanks for thanks for stopping by. But anyways, what was I saying? Oh yes, any coffee nerds in the chat? Because I feel like I I I, I really need to invest in the machine. Uh, Dalthy thinks he's so much of a prime, but I'm not. I'm I'm not like I, I've never really looked into brewing my own coffee or like making my own espresso or, or shots or whatever. I, I, I know nothing. I know nothing, essentially. Literally nothing. So I feel like I need a machine that's like somewhat um, decent for beginners. Uh, yeah. Co coffee making is not something I've, I've uh, ventured in. You bought a new ice machine. It's worth. Oh. Oh, nice. Got yourself some ice now. Anyways, get a mill, arrow, press, less coffee wasted. Easy to use. Huh. Kendrick, thank you so much for the 25 months. Thank you, thank you. Alright, let's do some let's do a little bit of React Andy then. I'm down. I'm down to do a little a little react. Just a little bit. Just a little. I injured my okay. That's so ironic, guys. I I I don't actually play rugby. I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but I actually don't. Don't always believe what you see, to be honest. Okay, okay. okay give me a sec. How do I do it incognito mode again? Oh yeah, this. All right. Speaking of incognito mode, guys, I have a question. Um, would you ever sell your Search history for, let's say, $1 million. If your search history gets put out there, would you sell it for a $1 million? Sure, why not? Yeah, easily. Oh. Oh. Alright. Hmm. I mean, we kind of already sell it. Okay, but then this is like public, public knowledge. Like, let's say your entirety of your history gets put out there. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. How about... Hmm. Even the ones deleted. Yes. E even the ones deleted. I'm a pure man. <laughs> I'm not famous for it to matter. Okay, let's not. Okay, how about. Okay, I need something a little bit more relatable to you guys then. How about this? How about you guys. Not only. Okay, not only is it publicized, but like. It's like personally sent to your parents and your friends and your. And your. Even your like distant cousins, like all your family. Anyone that kind of knows your name knows of you will get sent your entire history. Ah! <laughs> now we're getting the nose! No! Disowned and jailed! Oh! <laughs> Do we want to know? Oh, all, all of a sudden... All of a sudden, the people you care about, and now the money is a little questionable. Money gonna save me? Mmm. For a mill is fine? Mmm. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh hell no, they don't need to see that! <laughs> oh, it's such a funny question. Oh gosh, that's crazy to me. Um, I don't want to out any of my friends, but guys, let me tell you this. I have a friend that straight up told... Actually... Oh no, it's not outing her because we did it. She said it on stream. 
But literally, lit Lily would not sell it, her history for $10 million. And for me, like, a part of me... <laughs> a part of me is like, yo, that's exciting. Like, it's a, a, something about that is kind of mysterious and exciting. But another part of me is also, like, very terrified. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. It's just funny stuff. And... <laughs> At first, I was just like, yeah, Arya, how bad can it be? How bad can, can someone's, her, like, search history be? But then I also remember this is the same girl that the beginning of her friendship, she tried to bond by asking me to watch, like, how people die videos to uh, appreciate the fragility of life. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Lily is Lily is such a mystery sometimes. Anyway, sounds completely normal. Yeah, yeah. So normal. Blinking, I'm blinking, I'm blinking. No, I'm kidding. I love her. I love her. <laughs> but um, anyways. Um, what was I gonna say and do? Oh, yes! Coffee machines. Okay, so my sister has something called the Breville Touch. Do you guys know what that is? I don't even know what that is. Oh, uh, what the f- My sister? Bought? Well, it used to be $1,000, and she bought it a while back, so probably she bought it at full price. She bought a $1,000 coffee machine? Is my sister insane? This is the same girl that I paid for her school tuition and she's spending her money on this? My parents got one too. Oh my god. My dad has one. Okay. To be fair though, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, I do spend anywhere from 15 to $30 on Starbucks a day, now that I think about it. So maybe I should be yelling at myself. Like, why don't I have this machine, right? I don't even know what this does. What, what, what does this do? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Whenever I drink liquids, I just... I just need to burp. I, I'm sorry. It's kind of gross, I know. Alright, you know what? Um, give me a moment. I'm gonna log in. How come? I, I wish I wish logging in was automatic. For... But I guess it's not for uh, incognito. At this point, maybe I shouldn't even do incognito. I'm one of the few people. Oh, I'm one of the. I, I actually I don't know if I'm a few people, but I don't I don't mind my search history being like completely shown. I have I have zero to hide. Dang it! It's asking me to. No! It's asking me to to verify on my phone. Fudge. My phone is in the kitchen, and I'm too lazy to get it. Fudge. Predicament. Okay, it's fine, guys. We're just gonna watch YouTube with the ads. Yeah, why not? All right. Let's see. Breville touch. Let's see this. Okay, first of all, let's, let's pause the music. Uh. Let's take a look at the setup and first use of the Barista Touch. Enjoying Third Wave Specialty Coffee is made possible using the Four Keys formula found inside every Breville Espresso machine, just like this one. Full-bodied espresso with rich and complex flavors is created using the ideal dose of 18 to 22 grams of freshly ground beans, with a brew water temperature delivered at precisely 200 Wait, degrees Fahrenheit, your beans just like a commercial you? machine. You'll also need the right pressure during the extraction. Buy, and this like, time, bigger the is definitely not better. We start with low pressure pre infusion, See, followed by a high pressure nine bar extraction process delivered via our 15 bar Italian pump and an over pressure valve. 
And last but Why not least, watching powerful steam head? 260 degrees Fahrenheit no, is essential just, for creating shiny, silky I, microphone I, 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 that has I a rich, need, I need to buy a coffee machine. Without a microphone, but I don't know anything about coffee machines. Right. Now let's wash We're all the parts coffee. and accessories and dry thoroughly before use. Soak the filter in water for five minutes. <laughs> Set the new filter to the current mode. Pop it into the filter holder. Fit the holder snugly <laughs> into the bottom of the tank and fill with cold water. Really Check your water thinking. hardness by dipping this test strip into the water tank. <gasps> You'll use this info shortly. Fit the bean hopper to the top of the machine like this, locking it Why into place. Why do you test your water? Place the water tank into the machine. What the? Choosing the right filter basket to match your brew will help achieve a balanced coffee. Whoa, Use a two cup Ryan filter basket Gosling. when making two coffees, or You're when you so want a stronger mean. coffee. On the other hand, if you are making a single cup or a weaker coffee, kind of use the one cup filter basket. You might have noticed there are also single and dual wall filter baskets with your machine. When your coffee beans are at their peak of five to 30 days out of roast, use the single wall filter basket. But if they're older than 30 days or the bag is a best before or use by date, use the dual wall filter basket. What? Now, let's power it that up. That matters? Follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the screen to guide you through the first use setup. It's pretty simple. Hmm. When prompted, Enter the result from the water hardness test strip, so the machine automatically alerts you when to descale or change the filter. <gasps> Yo, that is now the machine is set up. You're ready to that make your so first advanced. coffee. That is so advanced. That is crazy advanced. It's gonna give you that 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 info. Wait, that's it? It didn't tell me anything. All right, how about we how about we we look at this review? Introducing the Jewel Oven with Auto. Hey folks, uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the new kit on the block from Breville. It's the Barista Touch. Hey, it's Gail from Seattle Coffee Gear. And if you've been looking at our website, you know that we have the Breville Oracle Touch. This is similar in that it has the screen like this with the interface. Unlike the old Barista Express, which is, it's the next generation, this machine has two programmable buttons, uh, grinding and you do the tamping and the milk is not automatic. You are going to choose the amount of foam that you introduce into the milk plus the temperature just by doing your manual frothing. This machine is very different. Let me go over some of the features before we dive into it too far into the programming up here. This is the automatic steam arm. This you can program on each drink and I'll show you that in a minute, how hot you want the milk and how much foam. And when you put it down and turn it on and you put your cup on top of this sensor right here, it senses the temperature of the milk. Unlike the Oracle that senses it in the tip of the steam arm, this one senses it right here. And then uh, by the programming, it injects air into the uh, milk making your foam. That's so that's automated. Uh, the grinding is uh, automated as well to the point that it grinds whatever you ask it to put down into the portafilter. You are still going to level it off and do the manual tamp. So you're still doing some of the work. But the other portion of it is this screen right up here. You have six programmable drinks that you can do. Espresso, Americana, latte, flat white, and cappuccino. And then the hot milk, you can do a portion of hot milk. And then you can get into making six more drinks that are programmed for you. What? And then you can actually put your name on it. Let's look at this one. Flat white, I we got a double. I put my name on it. And then we can change the temperature of the milk. It's at 150 right now. I like it a little hotter. Let's take it up to 160. And then the amount of foam is four. No, that's not nearly enough. Let's just take it right yeah, up no, there. That's not now, if I was enough. to make that drink, it'll make it just like that. That's what it's going to do, I which is kind of nice. I don't really like foam. So, same thing. And then when I, after I get done I will, doing that, I don't care for it. I go like this and I pick an, one of these icons. Pick an icon for yourself. I'm going to pick oh. this one. Now I can name it Gail. Or you can oh, name it whatever you want. Or you can name icon. it Gail. I, I thought, okay they were gonna, I so thought I was going to draw G the latte A art on there for R you. Upside down here. Come Ooh, on, L. man. Go check. Done. Now, that one is my drink. And your grind setting is over here. You still have to dial it in. You're looking for that oh, two God, ounces in 20 to 30 seconds. Grind and tamp makes that happen. So, if you have a bunch of people in your home and you want a bunch of programmable different drinks, this machine is great for that. It sports about, you know what, I couldn't find the stats on this, but I'm going to say this is about an eight <laughs> ounce uh, uh, bean hopper up here. And... True to all the bean hoppers that Breville has, you can lock it and take it out, change the beans, and then put it back in. Whoa. You can also take the topper out, clean it out, get rid of any of the junk in there, and put it back on again, which is kind of nice. And if you notice it beeped when I took that off, it disables it so you can't use it. Back here is the water tank, which is 67 ounces, and they have filters that'll go in here as well, charcoal filters. How long does that water last? The machine itself, as yeah. you can see, is all stainless steel. Like Very nice looking, nice storage spot magnetic right here for your tamper. Little holder for the uh, the porta filter to go into. Drip tray comes out. Kind of Again, gross. Breville has done a really nice job on this. This all comes apart for cleaning. Has a little warning that says "Empty me" right there. When it gets full, it'll float. So what's left? I'd say let's make a drink. Let me get some milk, and we'll be right back, and we'll make 
cappuccino. Okay, so I've got my milk. I've got the grinder oh all dialed gosh, in for what I want, and I'm going to us. make I a cappuccino. So it's going to brew or grind. Well, it's not going to brew. Got to grind first. This machine does not auto tamp, so you're doing the tamping. So that's one of the, you know, compromises on this machine. You're not spending the same money as you would on the Oracle Touch. Level it off like you typically would. All right. Thanks for the prime. <laughs> Do your tamp. Take the razor to it. Make sure that it's all. Oh yeah, I'm way down there. No sweat there. I got this neck brace off of it. Engage this in. You are uh, not going to brew and steam at the same time. This is not a double boiler. So you're going to do one function and then the other. I'm going to get the milk going. I'd like to do that first. So uh, make sure that your frothing pitcher is placed on that sensor back there. And then push milk. Because this is amazing. It has to come up to temperature. So it's doing that right now. The only issue about this right here is that like... So no auto on. You cannot control the temperature of the boiler. You do have six programmable drinks in here, which is nice. Which you can control Hello? the grind, the tamp. Oh, not the tamp, the this grind, better. the amount that comes testing, out into testing. the cup, and then the temperature of your foam and how much froth it's going to have. This and is it perfect. Adds, uh, it adds the air accordingly, okay. and it's ch it'll be checking the temperature Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, um, yeah, I need to get in the habit of... Uh, you can also make uh, drinks with hot linking water. Linking stuff hot water from spot. Amazon. But, um, here. It's right there, just so you know. Yeah. This doesn't start I heard registering this until it gets up to about 110. Um, so you're going to see it just though. sit there at a certain this temperature. This is also temporary and relief. And it'll start registering. At but, first I thought it wasn't working. But um, it is. You still have to train your neck muscles to like have One other feature I'm going to show you as soon as this is done foaming that it has, which is kind of nice for it you does the out there that temp forget to do this when impress. you're done. It does the tamping for you, okay? All right. What's this? Hi. Even though it's a rip. The Breville Barista Express was undeniably one of the world's most popular all-in-one beginner espresso machines from the day it was released. And now Breville have finally given it a long overdue refresh ah. in the form of this, the Barista Express Impress. It has some pretty interesting new features built in, but it also left me a little bit confused standing in some of the decisions they made for this machine. I, Stay tuned I mean, this, to find this out why. desk is actually a standing desk setup. I'm just, I just don't like standing while playing. Before we get going, I do want to just quickly say that this is not a sponsored video in any way. I purchased this Dang. machine with my own okay, money so and this one, price. This if you one want to check your own little pricing, I'll have it linked down in the description below. It doesn't Express have machines a cool with built-in grinders are seemingly and a dying breed. Personally, lattes. I still think this is a hugely mm. underserved market segment, as beginners often look for an all-in-one system that doesn't have the same drink quality limitations as a full super automatic. Breville continues to lead this built-in grinder segment with an iron fist, and because Maybe of that, I didn't necessarily OP, felt too much yeah. pressure to refresh their design language. <laughs> the new Barista Express Impress is a perfect example of that. Mm. Although they've packed in a new tamping system, the overall design and shell mm. are effectively identical. Love it or hate it, they are not going anywhere fast, but I'm sure many people will be relieved to see that the analog pressure gauge is here to stay. In terms of build quality, the story is much the same. There is a full metal shell, and the plastic that is used is not that thin, brittle plastic, but it's more of a thick, rubbery material that they use on the rest of their lineup. One difference is now the inclusion of a tamping handle, which I am happy to report they made out of metal, as it is a high-frequency touchpoint. But on the flip side, the cover of the new tamping system is plastic fake chrome, which is a bit of a Plastic. Other than that, there is the same large removable water reservoir, <laughs> hot water outlet, single hole steam arm, and convenient storage department behind the drip tray. Day-to-day -day user experience is by far the place where the Impress differentiates itself from the base Barista Express and the rest of the Breville lineup. Puck prep can be a daunting task for- I shouldn't, right? I really shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Oh, this sounds interesting. Wait, this video s seems so cool. He tries every single what one. Here is one sleeve of each of the different Nespresso capsules available from Nespresso's UK store, which is a lot. It's 36, and I'm going to taste all of them. You might ask, why would I do this? Um, that's a good question. I'm going to go through the pros and the cons of doing this. Firstly, the pros. I'm just curious. How, Yo, how different are these? This, how much this variety, guy's how much legit. Do they really offer? A lot of people get angry with my opinions about Nespresso, uh, arguing that I just haven't tried the right capsule or I'm uninformed. And to some extent, I, I might agree. I haven't tasted everything. Uh, and so if I want to understand what people love about this, I should approach it with an open mind. This is yeah. like 14 billion 
billion of these things a year. Understanding this is important. You, you guys trust his reviews? Well, firstly, Hell yeah, or I'm, I'm hyped. I'm really, really hyped. He's a coffee things. pro? Okay. About them, about them in what might be as a okay, I'm, I'm really way. hyped. That isn't really the intention here. The last big con, of course, is that 36 cups of coffee is not good for the human. Uh, I will be tasting, but I'll be spitting out, I'll be rinsing my mouth out, I'll be sparing you those visuals and details, don't you worry about it, but I, uh, I still might feel pretty weird from caffeine consumption. He should have drank so all the cups. I'm kind of nervous in that regard. I'm going to try and score each of these in a way that I hope is very useful to you. level of roast. I feel like if anyone drank 36 cups of coffee, they would just straight up die. <laughs> are they kind of generic coffee not tasting? Funny, which are very low, not funny. Or would they have some complexity, some character to them that's kind of individual to the pod? That would score much higher. Without further ado, let's begin. So the Cozy is the, the lightest, oh. I suppose, of these. It's kind of 4 out of 12 on the strength rating. Jammy I would say it, it's still fruit. medium, a developed, darker medium style roast. They talk about jammy fruit. I'd get none. They talk about cereals. I get some. So I would say on the roast level, for me, it'd be like a 5 out of 10. I know it's going to get much, much darker, so I need to leave some space. Ooh. Complexity, honestly, like a 3. Yeah, just kind of, kind of generic. You participated in World Barista so Championships? Oh light. my god. There's no strength rating on this one, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they say it's designed for, for working with milk, which seems weird for one you would call light. So this uh, is kind of the same level of roast, almost. Like, it's not particularly dark, I would say, in, in the sort of 5 out of 10. Maybe even lower. It tastes like the coffee's in that low altitude, so it's kind of got a heaviness and a lack of acidity. Speed, Very so generic coffee like... taste. So probably like a two out of ten. Like there's not a ton of characteristics in there. That's he doesn't many. talk fast. I just speed up the video. Together. I would have expected kind of fruit and body. <laughs> there is no fruit from the translation. What one might expect some whimsy. I'm not sure we're gonna get that. It's supposed to be South American arabicas. The, the least, you know, traceable origin description I think I've ever heard. And, and <laughs> a little bit of robusta from nowhere in particular. Still though, distinct cereal notes. That sounds charming. It's darker on the roast level, maybe a 6 out of 10 now. Again, maybe 3 out of 10 on interestingness. Yeah, it, it tastes like slightly burnt, exceedingly bland Ew. granola. The description says sweet biscuit, and I can't get past biscuit, though I wouldn't say particularly sweet. The thing about these, this is again, maybe like a 4 or 5 out of 10 on roast, and like a 2 or 3 out of 10 on, on complexity or, or kind of character. If you like these, I completely understand why, because there's nothing wrong with them. There's no defective or unpleasant taste in them. They're just not very complex or, or, or interesting. This has tasted in some ways very similar to everything else I've tasted so far, which is beginning to stress me out. So this is the same thing as the previous one, but decaffeinated, and it has absolutely Beginning no to stress me out. <laughs> Impressively, this tastes exactly like the previous pot, which I guess is easier because there's not a ton of complexity, but it is kind of biscuity and a little bit roasty, but not really roasty, just like a little bit roasty. Not particularly sweet, no acidity. But really, really like. Come on, how does he so call it roasty well multiple espresso, times? Right? So this is the and not follow up is Quarto, and, and with the word toasty. Come on, making you know, some milk. He even you know, you know, groove like of roasty of toasty. It just it rolls, off, it rolls off the tongue. It's got some punch. It's got some <laughs> impact. I can definitely see why you might want milk with this. Maybe seven, eight out of ten on the roast scale. I will say. <laughs> Ace this Venture tastes more so coffee from somewhere. You can taste the robusta in there. I would give it like a, maybe a four out of ten for for complexity. Woody, spicy. Okay, I feel like earthy, he's rated all of them roasty, four out of ten. A little bitter, no acidity. Like it's a big, heavy. He's heavy not a cringe lord. So another creation this time. Scuro, which means darkness. Good so morning. that kind of from a roasting perspective makes me nervous. They say like a twenty-five ml Scuro style thing with some milk because this is for you know milk drinks. I think that's the vibe here. That's weird. Not super roasty. Like a four, maybe five out of ten. Character, maybe a Rosie six. It tastes name like name stale, exactly. berry flavored cereal. That's what now I'm we're going to move into the single origin stuff. Where honestly, I, I have higher hopes. So this is a black honey process. So you know, after the fruit has been depulped, a lot of mucilage has been left on there. Typically, you'd expect some fermented kind of notes in those kind of coffees. They're once again promising. Can you guess it? Cereal. The good news is. It, you can taste a little of that fermented kind of character of a black honey that you often get. It's pretty smothered. It's pretty pushed down. It's just really kind of roasty over the top, and that feels like a shame. You've got an interesting process f from an origin that you're not really showcasing. Roast level, like a six at this point. Character, kind of a five, but a disappointed five. No, I'm, I'm revising that back down to a four. It's a four <laughs> for character. It really is too subtle, uh, and that's such a shame. Master Origins Indonesia. Or I could again. go on for espresso or a lungo. I felt an espresso was really the way to go. Roast level is definitely creeping up there. I'm going to say 7 out of 10. And to be honest, that's really impacted the characterfulness of the coffee. Wet held coffees from Sumatra, which is what this is and where this is from, can be really characterful. It's a bit Marmite. Some people really hate it. Some people love it. But that kind of vegetal, earthy, heavy thing that you get is there, but it's really muted and turned down. And I feel like if you like that, you'd be left wanting more. And if you don't like that, then you're not going to enjoy it anyway. And it just sort of sits in the middle and doesn't, doesn't have an opinion. And I want it to have an opinion. Have an opinion. You know, with this Ethiopian <laughs> capsule, I feel like they could really break my heart. Because if there's one origin that, you know, is a great stepping stone to get people excited about single origin coffees, I think Ethiopia is, is definitely one of the obvious choices. Now, this is a natural process. It's a dry processed coffee, so we should get a ton of fruit. They're promising orange blossom and rich fruit jam. That's exciting. 
uh, that's not terrible news. It's a little roasty still, like like a five or six out of ten. But character is absolutely there. You can taste that it's a natural process again. really clearly. That's good. So I'm gonna give you like well, an eight happening? out of ten character. This, um, if you we're just watching somebody, random videos. Like, I'll be honest. Like yeah, there's like, no plan right it's now. Kind of weird. I don't know what that I'm is. just going. That's really important. That's really useful. I think that's a good thing. This is by far, by far the most interesting capsule so far. It doesn't come close to what Ethiopian coffees are capable of. Which still kind of bums me out. So going into this Colombian capsule, mm. we should know that I have a slight bias probably towards Colombian Someone coffees. Liked Some of my one. favorite coffees have been from there. I love the diversity of the country's profiles. You can go from like heavy, rich, chocolatey through to jammy, through to light and bright and almost citrusy. What will they pick as their kind of quintessentially Colombian profile? So there's good and bad here. That's the first time I've thought about acidity in this whole tasting so far. This is the first coffee and I'm like, oh, oh, a little fruit acid. That's kind of nice. It's kind of upfront roast and a little acid behind it, a little fruit in there too. Six out of 10 for me on the roast level. You know, it's 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 present. It's it's not dominant dominant, but it's it's the first thing you'd notice. This has some character. It made me think about acidity and fruit, and that's good. So I'll give it a seven out of ten for character. It tastes of something of, of somewhere rather than just a generic roasty cereal taste. So this this has a bunch of monsoon robusta. So monsoon and coffee. I'm assuming I like cereal. It absorbs some moisture. Because yeah. I was gonna say uh, I very, very I acidity, hate coffee heavy, that tastes often sour. Very woody profile. And if it's sour, robusta then it's probably the acidic type of coffee. Woody profile. If it's the acidic type of coffee. So I'm expecting all the stuff that he's like kind of hyped about. This at the 11 out of 12 scale, and I'm maybe he's not the coffee guy for me. Too bad they can't make a cafe sedan pod, bro. Okay. They really like this, need sorry, to. Just really we need to get on that. Is, that is very bitter. They're really roasty. Like 9 out of 10 on the roasty front. Like it's really harsh. Uh, no acidity. I'm not sure it has character necessarily. This I love you, James, as a person, but I think our tongues will be different here. I just realized. I don't think I like acidic coffee at all. To me, I'm like, oh no, this is too sour. <laughs> I'm like, I like my coffees tasting like chocolate milk i'm not gonna lie i'm definitely a chocolate girl cold brew is less acidic yeah yeah but then i watched wednesday and she really roasted people that would drink cold brew she's like people that drink cold brew live sad lives or something or like the saddest people i don't know <laughs> i was like ah. i i actually used to drink cold brew all the time I used to drink the cold brew with vanilla sweet cream at Starbucks because it was like a lot cheaper and also it um is less in calories too compared to your normal frappuccino. Um there was a video I actually wanted to watch. But then I was like, you know, maybe I should watch this on stream. <coughs> Give me a sec. I actually, I know there was a video I wanted to watch on stream. What is it? Oh, it was the new Try Guys video. Yes. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Um, Because they make boba without a recipe. And I'm like, that sounds so freaking fun. Yes. All kinds of gifts. I'm so excited. Made for all kinds of giving. Do you watch Worth It? Yes. I took a really cute photo at home one time, and I got like a I little I haven't watched any of their new stuff, the they have counter. new stuff. Fumble. Um, kind of the last time when I watched was like, you can just when they were doing a couple of COVID episodes, and I'm not gonna lie, like the magic just Sheena, wasn't there as much. Pixel. And... Oh, God. <laughs> Today we're making boba. What is it? What's it? I actually <laughs> went to Boba ah, Mofo recently, and it was delicious. It was very good. Oh my God, it's salty. Why is, it, why is it salty? <laughs> Just an salty incredible boba. metamorphosis of goop. What is it? What's happening? Why is it alive? The first place winner is... We are going Asian this episode. Ah. Finally. <laughs> I addressed the part. Oh, wrong screen. I can't see it. Oops. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a goober. The screen queen. <laughs> That's right. You get to watch the finale live, 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 live. The show where we have no recipe, no clue, and no clue. The Try Guys are back in the kitchen for another episode of Without a Recipe. We decided that this is a cup, right? This week, they're making boba. <laughs> what do I do? Will they spill that hot tea? Every episode, a different kind of goop. Or will their little balls be unsuckable? That like <laughs> Each guy will have two hours to complete their, their boba tricks and present them to our panel of judges. They knew what they were doing. Welcome. They knew. We're ready to
to judge boba tea. Hey everybody, I'm Rosanna Pancito and I host one of the most popular Can baking shows online. Boba tea? My name is Jimmy Wong, I am an online oh, chef Jimmy, as well as an actor. Jimmy, it's Jimmy, I know Jimmy. Things, chef, that makes sense. My name is Philip Wang, uh, I'm a co-founder of a YouTube channel oh called Wong Food Productions, but in 2019 I realized oh, that geez, YouTube was no, too easy, so I started guy a cafe is. called Boba Mobo Cafe. Holy Ooh. joking, by the way. Wong food days. <laughs> oh man. We're here with Zach, who here. is one of our assistant managers and part of the Bopo fam. So Bopo is just basically like large tapioca balls, and it's usually added into drinks, usually milk teas. It was invented in Taiwan, and now it's more just like a lifestyle now. What I think is great about boba is that it actually slows down the sipping process because you that have to stop. That is too much boba. Should be boba. It should be Some cups soft I see chewy, they put boba that's like it's like halfway there, and that's like that is a nightmare. That perfect balance is key. I yeah, always, whenever I get boba, I, I actually ask for less. It should be this very almost like gelatinous mochi type. Texture and that's what makes good boba to me. Why? <laughs> Why aren't you? The internet is available. Because it's a challenge. Boba. They're kind of like perfect little boogers. Boogers. I've made tea before. Remember that six-part series that some of you tolerated? <laughs> I've made boba once before. It was with a kit, but I did it. This episode was my idea. So he knows. I thought it'd be fun. I thought it was different. We've never done a drink for without a recipe, so this is a first. I've made pre-made tapioca pearls, but I've never made them from scratch. But I know that they're relatively simple. I'm just a little worried about them getting too hard. Everyone likes soft balls. You don't want hard balls in your mouth. Oh, nice, soft, chewy balls. I really don't understand tapioca oh, balls. Oh, man. You can't eat them. You chew them until you're bored. If I had a dollar for every balls them. joke they were gonna make. Not to swallow bubble gum, and then we serve them a half of a cup of gum in a drink. I don't like boba tea. And I'm gonna prove <laughs> that they don't eat Gum it. in a drink? <laughs> Tapioca pearls, which I believe come from tapioca oysters. Boba is basically kind of like dough. It's dough. Oysters. <laughs> I love boba. I love. <laughs> oh my god, they made him a panda Three, this time. Two, one. Balls. Ugh, I gotta do this for Asia. If I don't win this one, I'm shaming the entire con. I'm also playing <laughs> Asia. Hot dog. Okay. Oh my when god, they, how did they Zatico, manage to I edit it like that? Too it's too funny. And it tasted like delicious root beer tea. So I'm just gonna make okay, that so mistake again. Okay, so basically, guys, one of, one of the members got canceled. Floba. It's a root beer float flavored boba drink. And now and they're using old rocks, footage that has him like in it. I wanted to be like edit him into a different animal every episode. And this episode, he's a panda. You must cook it. And there's bowls. I'm not a tea boy, and I'm not a tapioca boy. I'm trying to think, what is the thing that I drink the most of in like an Asian cuisine? And that is soup. <gasps> I love all sorts of Asian soups. The one that I like the most recently is Tom. No. So yeah, I think if I, I make a lemongrass coconut tea, I think I have what? somebody from there. And why is the pointy side of the too. straw? I do think I'm gonna put a little bit of chili oil in. No! <laughs> I do a Tom Cobb. Um, I need the bell. Okay, stop it's in this little, it. Looks like that bottom one. Do oh, it's down here under your dirt. Under my dirt. I'm doing a love letter as no. special effects. There. A love letter to one of the the greatest energy resources no way. That Americans have tapped into, which is of course. Yeah, he's tweaking. I'm dead. But I uh -huh. used to be this tongue flipping local beer I sipping just... relaxed dad. Bro. Oil. <laughs> A big satisfying so thing no boba there. is breaking through that plastic seal, which I immediately thought, wow, you know, it's like an oil rig. So my whole conception is called what the frack tea. I'm gonna create almost like a diorama oil of the rig? Earth's crust, and you have to basically lightly destroy the environment to get down to the good, juicy, oily boba. The boba themselves you can are tell gonna the, have some the edible person that drew this and art they're very over the seal. I'm gonna create like, an actual it's flat at the top. Poppy. I want you to feel. Why would really they make it pointy on both sides? Beautiful diorama that I created. Because what's more American than that? Good Eugene. Let's create a lot of jobs. <laughs> First, the bakers have to figure out what the hell goes into boba. What the hell is pinochillo sugar? <laughs> pinochillo. So I feel like I need to win this one or otherwise I'm shaming all of Asia. How many balls do I need? I feel like people really want to be slurping up as many balls as they can when they're drinking this awful thing. No. I don't like boba tea. <laughs> To get started, I am going to dissolve the brown sugar in this water using this pan here. As it heats up a little bit, I'm gonna add in all the brown sugar and mix it. All right, I guess here goes nothing. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I think it's like, it's a sugar water, and then you add the tapioca. And I'm just gonna use basically a teaspoon of the tapioca starch. You don't add all your tapioca starch at once because it will start to burn. Oh man, this immediately becomes too hot and it starts burning. What is my, okay, let's just, let's just freaking go for it, boys. This is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. Oh no. Just do equal parts, water and tapioca. It's tapioca, is it tapioca flour? 
What is it? I'm just gonna keep stirring this until it becomes kind of a sticky piece. If you do add in a bunch of tapioca in the beginning, your texture's gonna be all off and your dough is gonna come out kind of weird. What the f is happening to it? What the f It's turning into rocks. What is, what? What is it? Why is it? Why is it? He's what made is slime. It? What is it? What's happening? People like this? You get it wrong due to kind of like a non-Newtonian fluid or just like a really chalky dough. Yeah. <laughs> Drop that knowledge, Zach. What? It's wet, right? And then you do that, but it's not. It's just sitting on its own. It looks like a liquid, but if you hit it or pick it up, it becomes a solid. It defies physics. Are these the balls? Yeah, I, I actually that? remember making that <laughs> in science class. It's dry. And then it, it's melting. It's melting. <laughs> and then, and then it's dry. It's dry. Dry. <laughs> How could I move on? This is the most editor interesting is thing so I've ever experienced in this kitchen. So if you do have a non-Newtonian liquid forming, and you should probably just start over, the most you can do with it is just play with it. You just accept defeat, accept failure, and just, just you know, get back on the horse. <laughs> what is it? I have no chance. Let's try boiling it. So the only three ingredients you should be using for homemade boba are water, brown sugar, and tapioca starch. To really get the idea of fracking, I'm gonna create a gelatin top layer to replicate the top layer of the Earth's mantle. So it's gonna be like matcha flavored. Water, brown sugar, and tapioca starch. Let's put a lot of brown sugar in it. Oh, I wanted to put chili oil into it. Now's no. the time. I'm gonna put actual edible dirt chili into the oil. If you're adding a bunch of other different ingredients in there, the texture might come out wrong. That, that tastes like dirt. And then I'm gonna put the tapioca with it and hopefully make a ball form. You're gonna have some problems if you're not sticking to these three ingredients. Oh no, how did that just... Oh no, it just suddenly became impossible to mix. I don't know, I'm so confused. I know, <laughs> I know what it is. You know what, I'm just gonna dump this out and see what it's like. It might spill everywhere. No. Oh god, look at that, it's like, wow, yes, so weird. This video is like science, yes. Yes. How does that work? Look at this. Oh, give me, do me. Oh, yeah. Look at what's happening. Do you see that? Yes. Oh, oh, my God. Liquid. We love Why it. would you pour it out like that? He's. Oh, my God. He's such... I can't make bubble out of that. Maybe I'll need it so it just stops moving. Is that normal? Just stop moving, you weird. Kinetic. Oh, do we have flour? Can I just get some AP flour, please? I don't think there should be flour in this, but. Did he just say AP flour? flour? It's doing a flubber thing that I'm very weirded out by. What is it? What's happening? Why is it alive? <laughs> this will have to do. I'm in a bowl so it doesn't escape. <laughs> I am screwed. Looks like it's ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and I'm gonna slowly incorporate it in the rest of my tapioca starch. Typically the color of boba has that caramel color. So we actually do have some food coloring that we're gonna add right now. So we have a dough here. It comes completely off the pan. It's no longer liquidy. Got goop on a plate. What you gonna do about a goop on my plate? Just an incredible metamorphosis of goop. And we're gonna knead it until it becomes hey. kind of a smooth texture and consistency. Guys, is this so the first challenge that yeah, Zach might win? Because he's, he's made it so before. If it was super hot at this point, I would just He's the only one that has time. a dough that isn't, cool you know, and then I'd start working with it. If, if it was hot, why, why would you continue working with it right now? I don't know. <laughs> it's so hot. It's really burnt. Okay, I guess it's good. How do I know? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's brown sugar, tapioca, water, and vanilla. And it, it looks like goo. I feel like I'm a street vendor in another country entertaining children with my amazing gooey snacks. It's fun. Oh my god. It's fun. <laughs> what do I do? How do I do this? I don't know, understand. Okay, we're just gonna put this downstairs. <laughs> Let's try again. At Walmart, save on I cannot of imagine gifts for everyone being on your list. The, the person that cleans the kitchens long. after they Plus, film get these get delivery on your videos. gifts in as fast as one hour, right up to Christmas Eve. Shop Walmart online or Video will play today. after ads. Oh my god, these ads are so... I can't even skip them. Wow, okay. Emirates, isn't this... Isn't this the... The really expensive... Reduce. Reuse. Reuse. Recycle. Crack. So now you have your dough, it has been kneaded. You can see it has a really smooth texture. At this point, you want to roll it into little like snakes. So you do it like this. Do little strips. Cool, let's cut it up. These are like extra large Tic Tacs. I gotta make these a lot smaller than I want to. They don't fit through the straw. You got nothing. And then we're gonna coat our hands with some of the tapioca starch. And you can start rolling them within your own hands. I'm kind of playing the world's tiniest violin over here. Oh my God, it's actually What do you great. think it is? Look, it's all about technique. Oh no, it's like getting crumbly now because it's so dry. 
<laughs> if I have to tweak these nipples, I mean, roll these balls out again, I'm gonna be pissed. He call, he's got them With 45 nipples. minutes left, Keith is on his third batch of whatever he's trying to make. Oh, Jesus. oh my god. <laughs> okay, it's done. <laughs> it must be done. Cooling. Ow! Sound. Ow! <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> Candy goes on the table. You never seen the tappy guys? Since I'm oh, assuming things need to cool down, I'm gonna make my decorations, yeah. which Colin talked about, but these are the oil derricks. I'm making them out of pocky. Huge. Has the tapioca industry ever had a formal party? A tapioca ball, if you will? All right, so now that we have our boba balls portioned out and ready to go, you're gonna bring your water to a boil? I've been working for 30 minutes. Like, this is still maybe enough for three bobas. I think I just need to accept that it's time to move on. 34 minutes and no one has boba. Excuse you. Oh, this isn't the same as that. The first one was closer. Basically, you want to add your boba into boiling water, but around 20 minutes boiling and 20 minutes off the heat steeping. You think I boil the balls? No, they wouldn't say no way. <laughs> no way, Rach. <laughs> we got the balls. We got the balls. You'll know when to start adjusting the heat based on how the boba is reacting to the water once it starts rising to the top. Oh my god, it's um, they're getting big. They look like Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> and I'm not cuckoo for that. After your boba has been cooled down, we're going to make a brown sugar syrup so that it can sit in there, kind of soak in a little bit more of the brown sugar flavor. I feel like this kind of gives it one last nice little coat so that when it goes into the drink, it has this extra little flavor. Otherwise, you're kind of just eating tapioca, chewy starch. I believe this is the most important step of boba is giving it a little ice bath when you're done. Look at that, see? They're shrinking back down. It's like wait, when you go in a cold wait. pool. You want your balls to get... Chewy. Wow, way too chewy. Oh my god, they're still moving. <laughs> yeah, you need to boil boba. It's the one thing I know. Boil it. Now it's something I know. Because otherwise, what? you just have... You, you have... other. <laughs> 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 you didn't know that game? No, I was guessing. What if I just roll them up and throw them in there before they can move? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone in Asia is just shaking their head at me right now. He you know what? I'm just gonna test one. Spoil it. Nope, it's flattening. <sighs> That's not right. That's not right at all. I'm just gonna chunk these in there. And then Do they, will they even get any balls Like little out? dumplings. You know what are those called? Dumplings. Dumplings? No, that's soul. That's soul. I really thought I could no. do something cool. I'm so sorry, Eugene. Asia. Everyone in Asia is just shaking their head at me right now. I was just the thinking the same the thing. <laughs> You're laughing. He's not Rachel. making Asia proud right now. Oh God, it's so bad. Now that we have the boba balls oh all cooked, God, we're gonna assemble trolling. a classic milk tea. So we gotta make a tea, guys. That's the whole competition. So I've got Assam black tea and sarsaparilla. Wow, that did nothing. Oh my God, did I break the blade? <laughs> Do I need like a diamond blade to cut sarsaparilla? Did you guys know this? Is sarsaparilla just rocks? Wow. Oh God damn it, I grabbed a Zatico mug. I feel like I'm being taunted by the failures of my past. We're gonna start off with Assam tea. We're gonna sweeten it with some cane sugar. It's our basically in-house simple syrup. So I'm making a lemongrass, Thai basil, mushroom, and ginger tea, which is the flavors of Tom Kha, my favorite soup. The thing about Tom Kha is that there's ingredients that you're not supposed to eat. Our judges are gonna be drinking so much tea, and I'm sick of tea. I want some soup! Rosanna Pantino's gonna be like, I want some soup, goddammit! <laughs> I'm gonna give her some. What? How much time is that, Rachel? All right, now it's time to put the boba in the cup. Beautiful boba balls. The gelatin's from my jello. It smells okay, but it's gonna taste disgusting. How do you get the ice apart from the boba? What do you do? You ice don't ice them, Zach! Now we're gonna put some ice in, oh pour this green tea, just a splash of milk oh, on top. Wait, this is my tongue the boba balls, tea. Like, it's mainly like they're lemongrass and Thai basil, but it's also I some can't. ginger. Just do it. Oh. Hot, 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 ow, 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 ow! What was that? Now we gotta get our boba boys in. Now they're all stuck to my fingers like boogers. This is oh my god, tea, he's putting and the that raw. That tea is well known for tasting just like the twigs raw and dirt. I'm trying to make this like a root beer float, so we're doing you're that much to make cream. I don't really know the ratio. Soup? I've never seen ice cream and boba before. There's probably a reason. I wanted to make like a dark simple syrup to make the oil, but I don't have enough time, so I'm just using honey and dyeing it so it looks a little darker. Let's just put them in, shall we? Dying Perfect little boba honey. bumps. So in my tea we have oat ice cream, oat milk, boba, brown sugar, and pop rocks, bitch. That's a root pop boba boba. <laughs> trying to create a layer to make sure the jello doesn't sink over it. This is not working. Come on, Eugene, just make it pretty. Hey, the jelly sack. One thing I'm happy about. I'm so sad about everything else. Oh, God. I really thought this going differently in my head. Oh, God, it's not working. Oh, my God. Five, four, three, this two, is, this one. This is a disaster. I think this is the worst, their this worst the episode yet. So weird. In terms right. of, like, not getting out any product that looks edible. Welcome! We're ready to judge boba tea. We're judging on creativity, taste, and presentation. Also, 
Is it boba? It really comes down to just making sure that you have the perfect chewiness. If you overcook it, it's too soft, or you undercook it, it's still too hard, and you still get like some of the powder inside. I think it's all about the balance. Boba itself has inherent sweetness to it, and then the drink that it's in needs to complement it. So that's why milk tea is so popular. And I like my little boba balls. I like them soft and chewy. I want to be able to chew it like two or three times before they break. That's the perfect boba texture for me. Judges, evil Eugene is in the past. This is the whole season of good Eugene. Oh, so good obviously means best, most. And what's the most used natural resource we got? Oil. <laughs> we all love fracking, right? Yeah. So this is my what the frack boba tea, an ode to the oil industry. It's beautiful, though. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the, like the sludge you would get from refining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, that was the whole vibe. You want to get that petroleum aesthetic. What you see before you was intended to be sort of like a diorama of the Earth's crust. Oh, I wanted like no. an oil derrick of Pocky at the top. <laughs> Beautiful. The Boba colors, the okay. Like oil. I used Luar tea, famous for being very dirt flavored. I also threw in some cookies and cereal in there too, trying to create the layers. The actual boba has edible dirt in it. I want everything to taste like dirt. Why? <laughs> He's trolling. It's an ode to the oil industry. Then I also made my own matcha tea jelly. Wait, I see just dry matcha powder on top. And then that was supposed to, you know, be like the grass. <laughs> okay. So that when you stab it with your straw, it's like you're actually like the oil drill, you know? This, this uh, getting down there. Good. You know, I will say it does look gross, but I do like the story behind it. And I can understand the elements you were going for. I love how you straight really up says right off the bat. It I've looks never gross. I've seen an oil-themed boba drink before. And I like this. I think this is really creative to make this out of Pocky. How much boba is in here? I don't really see, usually, like, I don't even see it here. Usually you can see it kind do of Do they have paramedics? It's just like so dark down, down here. here. Yeah. Just just this. Like you oil. can't see. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm so ready. I'm scared. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. I don't even know where to start. Do we do Nick's first? Just it's go up for to you, it. Phil. You're the expert. Hold on, hold on, wait. Did everyone struggle one very, like, yeah. like there's resistance going in? It, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's taking a lot of things. Yeah, you know, it might be the, it might be the matcha jelly. Well, I'm smelling matcha and cereal. I'm not getting any. Oh my god, it's salty. Why is it, why is it salty? <laughs> why is it salty? Way too much. Gosh, this is matcha <laughs> overload. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? That's like sea cucumber. I haven't got one ball. I, like, I'm like, oh, oh, oh man. Where's, is there any? Oh man. I feed my kid better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found a boba ball. I, I can't a find a boba ball. Eugene, are there balls in here? You know, they might not be in ball shape. Have you ever heard of spatzel? <laughs> <laughs> It's like almost like a cookies and cream kind of texture. Yeah. yeah. But not in flavor at all. Mm. I mean, Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> do it, honestly. <laughs> no, 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 no. Do it! <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, it's stretched. It's stretched. <laughs> oh, look at her smile. She's oh. good. <laughs> That is not the sound that she was going for, though. Her poor <laughs> lips are like dyed I green. Love matcha. It's so is good. This a and this is a lot of matcha. Sometimes too much of a good thing is too too much. Oh my god, I got the bobo ball. There was one? Yeah, I got it's not a ball. What shape is it? It looks like a walnut. <laughs> is this it your does. is this your boba? It, it, yeah. Okay, it tastes like a it's like an alien creature. Like dumpling skin almost. Like spatzel. <laughs> it's just not um I don't know, it seems pretty evil. Is it boba? What the f do we think it's not boba? <laughs> Why would I ask this? Judges, is it boba? No. <laughs> no. This is so far from, this is an insult. It's a drink. This is an I know, insult. A drink. It's a drink. If it's a drink, Jimmy, why aren't you drinking it? <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> I, I honestly thought coming into this that there would be some that are like drinkable. Well, you never know. I don't know, I don't know why they put me first. <laughs> <laughs> is my Asian card revoked? No. Oh, borderline. This is a, your first strike. My first, first strike. strike. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Judges, boba tea. It's probably one of the most famous, popular Asian drinks. Uh, but I don't love Asian drinks, but I love Asian liquids. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> let me, I let me, I don't, 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 don't love, hey, I don't love Asian drinks. That's something about me. Not everybody loves everything. That's reality. <laughs> but what I do love are Asian soups. One of my favorite soups is Tom Kha. Ah. So I wanted to bring the flavors of Tom Kha to a drink. Oh, God. This is my Tom Kha tea. It's got boba. You've got some chili oil on top, and you've also got um, some nice hard 
herbs that you can't eat, just like in Tom Yeah, there's a star in these. <laughs> <laughs> star in these. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Planning a trip, but want to stay flexible? <laughs> Kayak searches hundreds of travel sites to show you which hotels and vacation I have to see their reaction. So you can book now and adjust later if oh plans change. Kayak. Search one and done. The best part of Christmas is... Alright, I can't take this anymore, guys. I, I don't know how you guys watch ads. Um... I do pay your subscription. Ads are cool if they support the creator. Or you can just buy the subscription. And I'm sure some money, a little bit of money goes to them, I'm sure. Here you go. I got you guys. Oh, God. <laughs> Today we're making Boba. Sec. Give me a sec. What's <laughs> happening? The biggest, bestest, greatest season of Without a Recipe ever. Oh, my God, it's salty. Why is it why is it salty? <laughs> Just an incredible metamorphosis of goop. What is it? What's happening? Why is it alive? The first place winner is We are going Asian this episode. Finally. <laughs> I've dressed the part. Four. It's like the soup smells like I actually do see four. Oh god. That's something you got going for this girl. Yeah, and it kind of looks like a milk tea. Like if I saw this at the store with the little lid, I'd be like, yeah, that's some kind of a milk tea bad? with something down there. Yeah. Okay. If you get up close though, and it really starts to lose a little bit. Oh of God. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's stop together. One, two, two three. three. Oh, wow. So, so I made a tea by steeping lemongrass, Thai basil, mushrooms, ginger, star anise and then i also put a little bit of lime in as well just to give it more acidity here we go oh god <laughs> <laughs> i feel so yeah, sorry for the judges like this episode what are we thinking? We thought this was gonna be the easiest thing. It's I the did. You know what's, I, you know what's crazy? If this oh was, my God. if this was hot, it would actually be okay. Like it tastes like the soup, so it's like what, like eating cold soup. <laughs> the taffy of the balls are they're so sweet and full of I think like ginger or like it really they're hurts. They're very mushy. And they're really soft. Super mushy. There was no bounce to them. They instantly just yeah. It's a lot of happening. <laughs> it's very diluted too. Like even as like a soup. It's just not very flavorful. It reminds me of... Oh, jeez, I don't even know what it reminds me of. It's not good, though. <laughs> what if it was hot? What if it was hot? If this was Tom Ka soup without a recipe, this would be pretty close. But we are doing boba without a recipe. Yeah, yeah so I, I don't love boba, and I wanted to show you that you guys don't either. <laughs> but it's not boba! <laughs> Your, th your thesis <laughs> is offensive. Evil Keith! <laughs> More like Tom Ha! <laughs> Woo! Okay. Guys. Contestant to judges. Is a boba. Just technically speaking. It doesn't have to be enjoyable. <laughs> it's a boba. This is the closest we've gone to boba. Uh, today, yeah, <laughs> it is boba with is a it, question mark. Is it boba? <laughs> yeah. It is. I. You know what? It's boba. Yeah, Jimmy, right here, boba. <laughs> boba. The first time I drank boba, I'll never forget the feeling as yeah. multiple balls hit the back of my throat <laughs> in rapid succession. It was both a surprise and a delight. This was a surprise, not the delight part so much. You know what? You convinced me. I will say that if someone had this drink, they would be like, "This is shitty boba." <laughs> So, sure, it's sure it's boba. No, it's all up to They're you. taking like all they can get right soft, now. Soft, <laughs> soft boba. Oh, Judges, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. What's up, judges? Boba is a. Oh my God! Will this be experience. Zach's Something win, guys? This guy oh, never I've wins. Never like that before. I wanted to take the experience of one of America's classics, the root beer float, the sizzle on your table, and I wanted to bring that to a boba experience. So I proudly present the root boba floba, a root, <laughs> a root beer flavored boba tea. Oh, God. The root boba floba.
boba. So wow. you've got yourself a boba milk tea. Zach is my favorite milk, try guy. Ice cream on top and then some pop rocks to simulate the sizzle of a fresh Coca-Cola. Oh, okay. interesting. That's fun. That's creative. Uh, you know what? The boba on the bottom looks the best, I will say. At first glance, looking at it, people would assume that this is a boba drink. We've got cute little bobas down here, yes, and they look pretty separate. Hopefully, you're going to get some of the Pop Rocks up into the straw, popping along okay. the boba as you drink. You know what's fun? I haven't had Pop Rocks in, like, 10 years. Yeah. So Guys, this, is... this boba mm, is good. I can eat this boba. Let's go. What the heck, Zach? The texture is boba. Is really close. This is. It's really close. Yeah. This one's really close. Really this close. close. The drink is bad. <laughs> 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 it's like really watery. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. the boba is really good. Gelatinous texture of it too. This is the closest. It's like kind of very like smooth on the outside. What show is this? This is, is called is um, Try Guys try, without a recipe. I highly bad. recommend it. It's I, uh, hilarious. <laughs> Just watch yeah, a bunch of dudes so um, I tried to make a sarsaparilla black troll tea. in the kitchen, oh, to be honest. There's like this herbiness that For I, the yeah. root beer. I am a little disappointed, though, Zach. You have a tea company. Yeah. 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 It's like if Keith brought And I used some of my tea in there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, don't say that. Yeah, don't say that. This is not a good uh, promo for your tea. I definitely, company. look, I think that I singed the leaves. I think that there's not enough flavor in there. I was going to put more brown sugar to overcompensate, but then it would just taste like milk tea. But I am impressed. I think the boba is... If I he well, just roasted if his if own I got product. Boba at the shop, I would question the color because typically it's more black. But I wouldn't be upset at the overall. It was not the best boba I've ever had. Right, right, right. But it's definitely. This like, would be like this would be like a ninety-nine cent like boba shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would say the grocery who store. put this shitty tea into the boba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did taste so much a root beer but i like the idea of a root Jonah, beer. Jono, thanks like, for the 10 like months. A Welcome back. Ice cream on top. I've never had boba with a little ice cream on top and i actually think that's a really cute idea. Kind of cool. I thought the creativity overall was, you know, it's not amazing but it's definitely different enough to make me go, "Oh, cool." Judges, is it boba? I'm going to give this one a Y E yes. It's boba. Zach has to it. I'm going to give going on teas were you know i knew it i'm doing it now well that was a good episode thanks for watching oh with me guys i really wanted to watch this episode i'm glad uh you have now watched it um give me uno momento i need to reopen a new window there we go all right are we ready for some pokemon that was fun that was chill i had a blast do you still have your tonsils upper back pain could be a sign of tonsil lymph node infection Really? Well, I, I, I still do have my tonsils. You know, fun fact about me is when I was younger, um, I was actually told uh, from the doctor that I should consider getting my tonsils removed. But because uh, there were points where I was a super tomboy, um, my, my mom was afraid that if I got my tonsils removed, then my voice would uh, go too deep. And the fact that I was already a tomboy, she was like, oh, nope, I can't have that for my for my princess. Because, uh, yeah. So I never got them removed, even though I should, because I get sore throats really easily. My parents also thought the same. Yeah, you know how it is, Asian parents. She would, she was afraid you'll go full, full man. No, it's true. It's true. It's true. Just the classic. Um, how have the raids been? Are you talking about Pokemon raids? Okay, I need to chug this coffee. Guys, I'm telling you, I've just been sleeping too much. And it's almost as if my body is used to all that sleep. Just as much as my body is so used to all that gaming. Like, right now, I'm like, yeah, I can go to sleep. Yeah, but I should not. 
I don't I don't want to sleep anymore. Getting them out when you're older can be tough. Oh no, that sounds scary. Huh? Law Shadow, thanks for the 16 months. Welcome back. Neck braces can be cozy in the in a weird way. They're kind of they're kind of like travel pillows. Excuse me. All right. Well then, I'm trying I'm trying to I'm trying to stay awake here, but I'm not gonna lie, guys, I'm a little sleepy. I'm a little I'm a little tippy. <laughs> All right, let's get to Pokemon. I'm sure once I start some Pokemon, we'll be back in business. Are y'all ready for this? Uh... All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Oh. I'm so excited, guys. Um, the new Just Dance is out, but I, ha I haven't purchased it yet, but um, I definitely want to. Maybe I'll do it for a Christmas event. Maybe. Yeah, my cat's passed out. He's so cute. Oh my god, look at the way he's passed out. Oh my god, look, guys, look. Look at his feet. They're spread out like this. Oh, you, you can't see the other leg because it, it's... <laughs> He's so cute. His leg's like sprawled. That is not... Not very uh, polite, Kisa. But that's okay, we forgive you. You're too cute. Alright, guys. Um... I believe we are- we were looking for Venomoth. Oh wait. Oh snap. I forgot I need to change the date and time. Because I will lose my outbreak if I log in at this new hour. Uh oh. Hopefully that's the right time. Does it matter what version you buy? What are uh, are we talking about Pokemon? They have different exclusives if we're talking about Pokemon. Um, in for, in for Black, thank you so much for the two months. Welcome back. Yeah, they have different exclusives. Um. You might want to look it up to check which Pokemon you prefer. Um, no, they have dispersed, guys. We have lost the Venomoth. I did not choose the correct date. That's fine. That's okay. Maybe he'll come back. Yeah, Venomoth actually spawns really frequent for me. Alright, looks like we have Mischievous. We have Azuril, which I already... I have. We have Swablu. We have Florges. I wonder if it's still bugged. Okay, let me confirm the bug. Apparently, guys, there is a bug with this Pokemon. That even if it shows a certain color, it's always going to be red. Um, that is what a viewer told me. And let's check that out. Right now, it looks like Florges is blue. But I, I won't actually know that. I'm going to confirm. Don't tell me what to do. Whoa. 
Oh. Blow it. Welcome to the train. So pretty. Anyways, let's go check out this outbreak. Please don't let it be red. Let it be blue. <gasps> no! It's actually all red! That's ridiculous! No way. Wait a sec. Are my eyes like... Is that... Is that normal? Why does she look like that? Oh, it's multiple! Oh, that's so creepy. That is nightmare fuel. Oh my god. Huh? How many is in that? That is so creepy. That That's cursed. That is cursed. Ew! They're all like this! This is so cursed! Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We gotta get out of here. That That's on some spooky Alice in Wonderland. She... No, it's cursed. That is cursed. I'm getting out of here. Alright. Oh, guys. What do I do? Fall asleep. I just started my stream. I just started my stream, but I already want to go to bed. Do I become that streamer, guys? Do I become that streamer and I just sleep on stream? Who cares? This is Arya's life you're watching now. And if I want to go to bed, maybe I should just go to bed. Do what you gotta do, okay? But the, but also I don't want to sleep because I feel like that's not good for me. Oh, <gasps> Lily cat, so pretty. I love her. Ah. <sighs> Holy chances. Simmer pot, dope AF. My house smells so good. Yay! I'm glad you like it. I'm glad. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I think today's a fail. I started my stream with the intention of wanting to stream, but I'm just going back to what I was doing yesterday where I just keep on dozing off. And then today I woke up with really bad like upper back pain and neck pain and I'm just like okay I gotta chill and then I chilled too hard and now I'm just like wanting to sleep what should I do it might help your back recover is it is it actually okay to sleep in these I feel like it's not what if I wake up and my my my, my neck just flops over because it's like not used to, I don't know. Not having the brace. 
Are you okay, Arya? Um, I, I I have pretty bad upper back pain and lower neck pain. Where my neck meets my back, pretty much that area. You've been awake for many days. Well, I also slept for an entire day yesterday. I already have slept. I slept so much. Just get a new neck. You right, you right. Let me just... Let me just get a real, uh, new neck real quick. Yeah. Thank you for redeeming a sip of water. Okay, I don't have water with me. I have coffee. Hmm. Maybe I take a nap. Should I take a nap? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna take a nap. I think I have to take a nap. Should I end the stream or should I leave it on? Um, leave it on. <laughs> Long VOD. True, true. Could leave it on. Yeah, cat stream. True, true. Um, you know what? Let's do it. Uh, let's see. Four K aquarium. How long should a nap be, you guys? What's the best amount of napping that will get you in like good energy mode? You guys know? Twenty minutes? Oh hell no. That's too little. Ninety minutes? I think it's ninety. Fifteen so you don't get too REM? Wait, fifteen is probably too short. Less than 60? I say 30. Two hours is good. Fifteen minute power nap. That's that's real? For me, 20 is perfect. Just don't think how long, just go nap. Okay, fine. Um, let me put up a coral reef or like a, a nice, this one's 11 hours. Eh! Okay. I don't know why Tur turtles, turtles, turtles in, in cartoons are cute, but turtles in real life. I'm not going to lie. When you see all the details, they're kind of freaky. Let's see. Hmm. Actually, we're going to do this. I have a better idea, guys. This is actually so genius. Maybe while, maybe while I sleep, you guys can catch um, a cat of mine watching this video or something. That would be hilarious.
All right, guys. Be right back. Um. I'm going to mute my mic. I'm going to go set up for a nap. I'll probably put it in the corner or something. Be right back.
Atentei.
guys, I literally just spent that entire nap time just arguing. And it's not even done yet, and I can't take it anymore. I must escape. I must escape with games, right, Bookie? Sometimes, it is what it is. <sighs> Give me a red book. Escape into the world of Pokemon. Hey, you little purry monster. Hey, little purry monster. Oh my god, look at Mayo, guys. She has taken over the internet. Oh, never mind. It doesn't go any further, but... I'll take a picture. She looks like a donut. It's too cute. Too cute not to. Oh no. Mayo, don't move. She moved. It's not the same. <sighs> Never mind. Overwatch helps too. How much does your cat weigh? This one weighs, I think, maybe two, two or three pounds? Two pounds? Two or three. Both Mayo and her weigh the same. She just looks smaller because, well, I mean, she is smaller, but like bone structure wise. But the meat on her, she's like, she's thicker than Mayo. Mayo, she's like longer than Buki, but she's very like uh, dainty and smaller frame than Buki. Two pounds? Maybe like three. Maybe three. Three pound baby. How's your back, Arya? It's fine. I mean, that the nape part is always going to be like sore, but whatever. It's it is what it is. Can't do much about it, right? Mm -mm 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 -mm. But yeah, I try. I tried. I mean, technically, I did rest a bit because I was in resting position. Unfortunately, I didn't get to nap was dealing with some family issues and uh yeah you guys get it 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 it, it it's not easy Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. you know one of the things i'm most grateful for and i'm like very proud of in the sense too is that when you realize family is what you make of it, and one of the things is like, just because you're blood related doesn't mean they're actually your family sometimes. Because sometimes the way they, they treat you is awfully not like family behavior. Um, it's not easy dealing with, you know, and growing up with. And... When I was 19 years old, I realized, like, I had to do something about it, and I left. Um, and obviously things were patched up, and everything was good again, but or, at the end of the day, like, people don't always change. It's hard to change, and I get that. You know, no one's, no one's purely at fault, I think, just... At the end of the day, very different upbringings and very different understanding of things and generational differences and and also mental capacity different. All of that factor. I'm, what I'm trying to say is family is what you make of it. Do not feel tied down to family just because you're related by blood. It is a lot. Chinese wiener buns. I could make Chinese wiener buns. I could. Yeah. But a part of me also kind of just wants to game and forget the world. <sighs> the mouse is cute. <laughs> yeah, I think Buki got bored of it though. She's so cute. Oh my god. Can you guys see me? Oh, you guys can see Mayo. She's like blended in with my bean bag. So cute. 
He's not also super cozy right now. He been cozy. <sighs> you see Mayo's ears? Yeah, she's 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 down there. See her face. <laughs> Precious. You feel better? Not I mean, it's hard. I don't really I don't feel better. It's not the the problem isn't really resolved. It's more so like I just need a break from it. Good morning. Hello. I didn't even sleep. <laughs> but I am feeling more awake though, but I am feeling that type of awake where you're like you're choosing to be awake because you do not want to fight any demons tonight. So you're like, "All right, I'm not ready for that. Let's distract ourselves, shall we? We shall." And before anyone says this is unhealthy or a bad co coping mechanism, I'll have you know I slept for pretty much 23 hours yesterday, so I would like to say I am well rested. Anywho, <sighs> um, mouse eating good tonight. <laughs> how how was watching the mouse video with my cats? By the way, sorry I put you guys through that. I was literally just so occupied with personal issues that I couldn't even get up to end the stream. I genuinely wanted to end the stream, but I literally was like, I was occupied every second that I was awake. Buki was on the edge, or wait, was on the edge, super cute. Buki might come become an emote, aww. It was a bonding experience, aww. Well, I hope you got to know Buki a little more. She is the cutest baby in the world. I actually, Kisa is my favorite, obviously. He is my favorite. There's no doubt, because he's my first child. But I can't help it. Buki is definitely on the rise. You didn't hear that, Kisa. You didn't hear that. Um, Buki watching chat like a hawk. <laughs> yeah, Bu Buki's just, she's so unique. She has like this weird, she has a very odd aura. And I, and I love that. And I love that a lot of people actually think she's ugly. I love that. She's, because I know her personality and I think she's not ugly because of it, you know? A lot of people when they see her, they immediately think like um gremlin or like Furby or like, you know. But she, her personality just makes her so freaking cute. So. Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> She'll come back. And also, um, I was thinking too, like, holy map. Uh, your tag, ariasaki.com, is up for sale. I uh, don't care. If it's up for sale, that probably means someone owns it, right? They're trying to sell it. I remember that. I remember when I was hinting about merch, um, the, per the asshole tried to sell it for $5,000. Or something like that. Three or three thousand or five thousand, something ridiculous. And I just think those type of people, there's a special place in hell for those type of people. I understand they're trying to make their buck, but it's not the kind of uh, making buck that I care for. So I'm the type of person where I'm like, I'm kind of petty. If you want to keep my domain, like, keep on paying for it, bruh. I I will thrive without it. <laughs> Yeah. I I'm a I'm a Slytherin for a reason. There are there are things about me that I do feel very naive and gullible and innocent about, but there are also things about me where I'm just like petty as hell. <laughs> I don't own it. <laughs> All good. I was just speaking out. House of Slytherins Arise, yeah. I just saw it because of your Twitter bio. No, all good. I don't need it.
I wouldn't buy it even if it was like one penny more than how much they paid for it, which is, I don't know how much domains are, I forget, to be honest, but yeah. The fact that someone went out of their way to claim a name or being or organization or whatever that isn't theirs just to like gatekeep it for like the intention of making a little bit of money i don't know that's just deceptive and like in my opinion <laughs> Yeah. No, I've seen it happen to so many people. And the worst part is that, like, my own friends have paid good money to pay to buy their handles. They're very original handles, I'll have you know. Um, I'm not going to out who, but I know a person that paid $1,000 for a handle. And when I heard that, I actually was so depressed i was like this is this is reality like this is the this is how people are and for those of you guys saying like don't hate the player hate the game i'm just like oh hell no y'all's hearts weren't in the right place to begin with don't even start with me anyways guys before we play pokemon um I need, I, I need, I need, uh, I really need some company. Like, I, I need some, um, anti-parasocial, parasocial club, uh, type level of, um, communication and comfort right now. Because I'll have you guys know I am out of it. I am in the need for comfy vibes. And I am actually one to preach that being comfortable is the devil, actually, because being complacent comes with comfort sometimes, and um, I'm not about that. But uh, in this moment of time, I would appreciate some talky-talky time. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, I was going to say, what should I put on? Some cute music. Let's do, let's do some 8-bit. Will you making will you be making wiener buns after? Um I will ma be making wiener buns when I am closer to being hungry and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm I have no appetite right now. Ya girl is not good. Um what do you use for chat overlay? Uh I use this website I found on the uh I was recommended originally by a mod, but also um when I googled how to embed uh the emotes for chat uh, as an overlay. I saw it on Reddit. Yes, it's, I think it's called JChat. Yes. Yeah. Um. The girl wants to play Overwatch. Actually, that's a, that's a good time. And right now, that would be a good time to play Overwatch because I think like. 
Overwatch is the one game I can probably talk my heart out. Talk my little heart out while mindlessly playing the game. You know what I mean? I think I need some mindless gaming hours. Uh, although I wanted to play Pokemon, I just feel like I would have to focus. Especially if, like, I wear shiny hunting or something. I have to, like, focus on making sure I don't miss a shiny Pokemon. Um... Fluff pillow on your other chair, can you pet it? Are you talking about this thing? Can you peek it? He loves chin scratchies. He always like brings it out so I can do more. He's so cute. Actually, I remember watching Hune's stream and she had like a pet the cat award. I think that's a really good award. I I I, I gotta I gotta yoink that from her. Hi, Pookie. Pookie, do you wanna? Here, actually, I have a better idea. How about you see? Pookie, will this chair make it look better? Can I? Can you get out this box, Pookie, real quick. He says my favorite. Oh, actually, chat. I want to ask, who is your favorite cat of all my cats? I have Kisa, Mayo, uh, Alfredo, and Buki. I want to know who is y'all's favorite. <laughs> all of the above. Buki, Kisa, Alfredo. Um, Buki is too funny. I agree. Mayo, Mayo. I actually think all four of my cats are the four houses of Harry Potter. <laughs> Mayo because she trolls. <laughs> okay, I think the Slytherins are straight up Kisa. Because, okay, I'll explain all why after. But Slytherins are Kisa. Okay. Gryffindors are Buki. Or sorry, sorry, not Buki. Um, Mayo. Mayo is Gryffindor. And then Hufflepuff is Buki. Actually, no, no, no. Sorry, Gryffindor is Buki. Yeah, yeah. Gryffindor is Buki. Hufflepuff is Mayo. Ravenclaw is Alfredo. Yes, this is Kisa. He's the father. Um, he resembles the Slytherins in the chat. And then, I think, yeah. And I would say Mayo. Uh, anyways, he. Oh, sorry, actually, actually, I should explain one by one. Kisa, he's the Slytherin of the chat because he's he's very cunning. He's the type that will. He's smart enough to do things behind my back. Like he will, he will not do anything like bad, unless there are guests. Then he'll just do whatever he wants because he knows that I'm not going to like. I'm not likely to be upset if there's guests around. Like he just knows. He knows that I'm less strict around people or that I'm not watching him. So he'll go get what he wants, but he'll do it in a very like sly way. And then. Yeah. And then Buki is Gryffindor because she just got that main character vibe about her. Okay, she's always going to like go like the beat of her drum, but it's always like because she has a very kind heart. Like you could just tell she's so kind hearted and so wide eyed and so like innocent. And she's just, I don't know. And that she's very brave too. For a little kitten like her, she's like, she's been jumping my counters at the youngest age she just and and the thing is she will fail but she'll try again like she is actually super courageous and i love that about her she got main character vibes for sure 
And that's what makes her so cute too. Cause she's so small. And she's not like the most aesthetically pleasing cat or anything. But that she doesn't care. Like she just she, she's so cute. And then Alfredo is so Ravenclaw. Cause he is so cautious. But he's I feel like he's cautious because he's kind of like the will this benefit me? He'll only come out for treats. He'll only come out if it's like feeding time or if I'm... He actually loves being brushed. So whenever I'm in the bathroom, that's when he loves to be brushed. He'll come into the bathroom when I'm in the bathroom. Because he's like, I want to be brushed. So he he's very... He, yeah, he, he's kind of like... Yeah, I feel like Ravenclaws, they're very, they're very like calculative and smart. And I feel like that's all that's all for you. Like he's he's not gonna be nice to just anyone at any time. And then Mayo is a Hufflepuff because she's just the friendliest creature and wants to be friends with everyone and loves people, thinks she's a person sometimes, wants to talk to people. Kind of like the opposite how like Hufflepuffs are like super kind to animals. She's the opposite where she's super kind to humans. <laughs> But it makes up. Is ketchup around? Yes, ketchup is um, very similar to Alfredo. Super, they literally have the exact same personality type. So they're actually probably together. Uh, let me show you guys a picture I took. Um, she, uh, what is it? Ketchup only gets along with Alfredo, by the way. They're kind of their own kind. Second, sorry, I still have to argue.
sorry. I'm okay. I'm not okay. And 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 a normal person would be like, get off stream. But I'm just like, okay, so what what if what if escaping is the way I do things? I didn't admit it was healthy, but let's look at your track record. I don't think you're an angel yourself, so let me live my life. Don't judge me, please. Thanks. Sorry. Um, just dealing with personal stuff. For those of you guys coming in and unsure. I'm sure no family is perfect. What I miss, what's going on? That's yeah, that's what's going on. Just dealing with personal stuff and it's really hard and draining. And sometimes I'm just like I just can't. Just not no don't need to be sorry. I know I can't help it. It it's because like I'll be very honest. If I'm watching a streamer and they're just giving me bad vibes all the time, I can't help but be like, oh my gosh, why is this girl even streaming? <laughs> or like, this is horrible to watch. But I can't help it. I feel like me, me, it wouldn't be me if I didn't bleed my emotions to strangers only over the internet. Faceless strangers. Because. I would never be able to do this if, you, if I saw you guys in person. But there's something so comforting to me about like just text. And like the fact that I don't see your guys' faces. It's, it's just easier. I don't get bad vibes here. <laughs> Stop. Maybe I, I just view myself very poorly, especially during times like this. I feel very pathetic. At the same time, if I don't stream right now, I would probably be like bawling my eyes out and not end. You know, it's almost as if the stream is keeping me in check. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I can't cry right now. I am live. I need to hold my composure. I'm not calling you guys ugly. I'm just comfortable in this way. I've always been comfortable this way. Um, I was an introvert at heart at all times of my life and I always escaped using whether that was like Neopets, Gaia Online, Maple Story, Audition. Like, I would go into these games treating the people on there like they're my family, you know? What? <laughs> Orgly, she was watching Try Guys. She's joining Try Guys Confirms. Yeah, mm hmm, totally. I'm, to I'm joining the Try Guys because I'm a. I'm totally a guy. <laughs> but yes. <clears throat> Arya, one of the boys. Oh no, 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 no. It's gonna start off with Arya, one of the boys. And then it's gonna go with Arya, not like the rest. And then it's gonna be like... Like, Arya, not like other girls. And then it's gonna be like, oh no, she just straight up has internalized misogyny. This is not true. Nor, nor, please. I love women. I'm just an extra sensitive and annoying one, I promise. I'm self-aware, all right? The first step to correcting your, your, uh, ill behavior is, uh, is, uh, to admit it in the first place. And, and I, I'm already there, I promise you guys. I'm a self-aware queen. I prom promise. Misogyny arc. No. No. Anything but that. Please. No. Not Arya the top G. No. I will never. Not like this. No, 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 and then I'm gonna shave my head bald and just walk around in a- in a robe forever. No! <laughs> oh god, this is just a joke, guys. Please don't come for me. This is a joke. Slash J, slash J. Um... 
No, don't, don't give me bits for that nickname. But thank you for the 500 bits. But don't do that. <laughs> do you know what color your Bugatti you're getting yet? Bro, I don't even know what a Bugatti is. What's a Bugatti? That sound, that's a, is that a type of pasta? <laughs> no. It's a car? <laughs> I don't even know that. Bro, it's a supercar? What is a supercar? Does it have wings? Is it the first of the hover cars? Huh? Were we promised hover cars by like 2010 or something? It's 2022. Where are my flying cars at? There is not a single time in my life where I'm stuck in traffic and I don't think about hover cars because I constantly think to myself, wouldn't it be nice if we just had another hot freeway on top of our freeway? You know what I mean? Like, sky traffic sounds awesome. Sounds limitless. Sounds like exactly what LA needs. It kind of has wings. Oh, no. No, are you talking about, like, the the doors that go up? The butterfly wing doors? I'm telling you guys, that's the reason why. That's the sole reason why I don't have a Tesla. Um, I'm going to be really honest, guys. Uh, I probably can afford a car um but i will not and i don't think i will and actually my car is actually is probably dying <laughs> because i'm not the best at upkeeping my car um it's a honda civic good old honda civic um and i've always dreamt of a Tesla Model X um, because I like larger cars. I felt so much power and I felt safe mainly um, because I I drove my mom's SUV and I was like, wow, this is this is the size I would love. And on top of that, to to go with energy and you know save myself trips to the, the gas station because I hate going to the gas station. A Tesla sounds right for me. But then those doors! They're the sole reason why I won't get them. It just goes... It, it's like... And I'm like, oh no. no. Oh, I cannot afford a Lambo. Oh no, 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 no. Me and Ray are just... No. Different levels. Maybe, maybe one day, if we manifest enough and work hard enough and, and, um, have some cool original ideas that pop us the F off, maybe one day I could be on that level. But I, 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 I can't afford <laughs> There's an emo for Lambo, I'm dead. <laughs> Japan. Didn't know if you were cool with snipers or not. Um, naturally, well, it depends. If you're a woman, it's, it's, it's never as bad. But for me, like, um, I don't welcome snipers like other streamers do. Naturally, because I don't feel safe. But, if I were with others, um, I still don't welcome them. But I don't mind them as much if they're polite and kind and nice. Um, that's why I didn't. Aw, uh, I appreciate the thought. Thank you. Um, but luckily, I didn't run into any um, awful scenarios or anything. Or any, like, traumatizing, life-altering scenarios. Um, but, you know, it is one of those situations where you guys have to understand why streamers have to be extra ca cautious. Especially female streamers. Um, yeah, both have to, I mean, all, every, every, every person, every, doesn't matter what gender you are, 
has to be cautious in this day and age, in my opinion, because it only takes one. What happened if they just notice you and you're IRL streaming? Like I said, some things can't be helped. And like I said, as long as you're polite, I it's not like I, I'm i like, you know, gonna like pee my pants or anything though. But it's, it's more so, um, my comfort comes from the support of you guys online. Just as much as you guys see me for who I am online. And I'm not at a point where, like, I can transition to that and, like, see, feel the exact same thing IRL. Unless I know you guys are well-intentioned. So it, it's hard to control that, to be honest. Um, at TwitchCon, you know, I had, like, a 99% like, all good vibes. But I did have that 1%. I did have that 1%. And I'll be honest, it was actually one person. Um, has it been a long enough time for me to talk about? Um, there was a person. I guess it is. I don't think they're watching the stream. But there, there, there was one person that was extremely uncomfy vibes. Um, orbited the booth. And, yeah. Uh, facial expressions were odd, too. The way they spoke to me was odd. And it's like, moments like those where I'm like, I can't shake it out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is going to live with me for as long as I live. It's hard to protect the mental when you do this type of job. It's very hard. People will- you're always going to run into something. It's better I train myself to like, be stronger, but that comes with time. So. Was it sus behavior? I already talked about it? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> um. Did they ever come up to the merch booth to say hello? Um, sort of. Sort of. I mean, I suppose. Yeah, I think the best I can do is just read into it as like a... COVID did this to people! COVID made people socially awkward! <laughs> Watch Strictly Dumpling video ramen tour. Oh. Um. <coughs> this has never become a drama channel, but at the same time, um, I read up, I saw a video talking about said person, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I read some, uh, uh, some stuff. Yeah, and I think it was brought up on stream once too about said person. And I, at this point, I'm just like, I don't know what to believe other than the fact that uh, I don't want to take my chances. So, yeah. Uh, that's the thing. This is a moment where ignorance is truly bliss. Sometimes you just don't want to know too much about people. Um, I think we all have our vices and we all have things we probably weren't proud of. People make mistakes or people are, you know, just people. But sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, when you find out about certain things, it just, uh, hmm, it's hard. <laughs> Yes, I do wish to be uh, ignorant, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, what is this about? Uh, I don't know, just like... 
I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, let's change this. Let's change the topic. Let's not talk about others. Let's 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 keep it cool. Uh, I do not have a PO box. Talk about how cute you look. Oh god, no. I don't feel cute, but I I appreciate the sentiment. Thanks. I, uh, gala, truing, gala, um, yeah, awesome, um, I'll have you guys know, it's, uh, I was not personally invited, so before we all celebrate, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, okay, I, I should, I should stop not giving myself credit. But, um, I'm going as a plus one, um, and you guys can probably guess who it is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's just... The one and only. Yeah, well, Newton's pretty cool. He's only my best friend. And we help each other with, like, events. It's really nice. Because I get invited to the cool stuff, he gets invited to cool stuff. But we get invited to different cool stuff because I'm with UTA and he isn't. He's with, like, a different agency. Or person, group, whatever. And it's really cool because we basically just share events. And then whenever there's a plus one, we'll take each other. And it's perfect because... It's just perfect because you would never... I mean, I think there's a different type of person out there that can go to events alone and just mingle with people like holy crap you have to be the most extroverted of extroverts to do that and there are people that can do that kudos to you but i could never and i'll have you guys know i was invited to so many events um pre-covid but as a natural introvert i would never say yes like never because i'm like why would i ever go alone that sounds ridiculous. A party? No. Snooze. Like, um, a, like, a movie premiere? I'm not gonna, I'm not about to go watch a movie by myself. I've done it before, but not by myself in the industry. Because that's like, now I'm forced to talk to people and that's scary. I can't do that. Have you always been like this? Yes. But yeah. Um, but, to my credit... Uh, I did, I was the person who, like, reached out first, and, um, put effort in the real, put effort in, like, the friendship. I was gonna say relationship, but that's, that's kind of weird, people are gonna take that out of context. But yeah, and I was able to build this friendship with Putin, so we trust each other to bring each other to events, and not be weird, and not you know, have bad impressions on others and get invited to more events in the future. It's awesome! Did you find the Shinies? No, I haven't started, really. Uh, uh, it, it has become a talk stream. Can we change the title to, like, Chill Talking Stream? <coughs> it's awesome having another introvert friend. Mm -hmm. How you're back feeling. Um, guys, call me an engineer. But I literally bought this thing off of like the, the, the deep of in Amazon. Like, you know when it's like coming from China type Amazon. And then it didn't fit this chair properly. So what I did was I pushed down the, the stuffing. Like I literally shoved it down. And then I wedged a piece of pink cardboard in between to make more space so that it can get nailed in what can i say i am an engineer now it fits yeah you see this little pink thing that's that's cardboard because when this thing is like screwed maximum it wasn't fitting it at all so yeah i had to uh do a little tinkering and uh now i'm good 
Mm -hmm. We love a woman in STEM. I don't even know what STEM stands for. The only STEM I know is are stems from plants, gardening, work. But anyways, <laughs> bro, so many freaking kecks in the chat, but no one telling me what STEM actually stands for. And now you have time to Google it that I'm calling you out. I'm the one that's dead. I'm the one that's crying. I'm the one that cringed too. Don't even. Super tough. Effeminate moms. <laughs> Science, technology, engineering, math. Well, no, no, I'm gaslighting you guys. No, I'm gaslighting you guys now. I'm, I'm saying it right now that you, none of y'all knew. Cause all of you guys are too busy kecking in the chat. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> All right, all right. Now, now to find, now to find the real alphas in the chat. Who here will admit they too do not know what STEM stood for? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Me, I, see. Okay. Uh, okay. Go oh, chill, chill, chill. I forgot the M. Not gonna lie. Exactly. See. Listen. 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 I know what STEM is. I understand, like, the course, the genre, okay? But I just didn't know what the words themselves meant. Because yes, indeed, in fact, I was that art kid. I actually love sciences, but I never cared to pursue it further. I always got A's in all my science classes, but I never, like I said, I never took any enhanced courses never cared for AP classes when I moved to the States and found out what AP meant. And yeah. <sighs> Art kids rise up. That's what I'm saying. I work in fashion. What the F is STEM? See, exactly. See, see. I appreciate the empathy here. Um, but also when I was in high school, I've told this story before. Crazy, by the way. Um. <laughs> Copium shipment? What the fudge? <gasps> Guys, I said I wanted comfort, okay? We need an echo chamber of yes men right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Fine. Call me out. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways. What was I going to say? In high school, um, what was this? It, this was, uh, I remember, oh, I got kicked out of class. I get kicked, I got kicked out of class a lot. But anyways, I got kicked out of class and in the hallway, there was another class, uh, specifically a, a bio class that was going on and the door was wide open and I heard the teacher picking on a student that was not paying attention and because they weren't paying attention and they couldn't answer the question he had for them, he straight up said, the art department is that way. That, that teacher got fired by the way, <laughs> but I hate teachers like that. Like, holy crap. It was, yeah, super yikes. Yeah. Yeah. I just... <laughs> no, it was, it was just so uncalled for and so unnecessary. Like, sometimes a person's gotta sleep, man. Also, not copium because it's not like I got kicked out for sleeping in class. literally me <coughs> so in high school I've gotten kicked out probably I would say every other class for this just one class for English actually I got kicked out once in in uh, history too the teachers apparently really really take it to heart if you're sleeping 
like it's never a it's never a hey what's going on like how come you're so tired it's always a like them taking it personally and kicking me out and i'm just like you know i have two jobs part-time jobs I, I i'm juggling two jobs while doing high school in a new country like i just i'm always tired and i'm not gonna lie your voice is a little monotone and i yeah i'm gonna fall asleep <laughs> i i once i yawned first class english and teacher got so offended i why is it always the english teachers why is it always the english teachers <laughs> Hot tea for that cough. It's okay. I got a lukewarm coffee. How about that? Why were you doing two jobs in the U.S.? Oh, I, I was always obsessed with 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 working at some points. Um, in more, more particularly, I love customer service work. I was really good at it, and I needed money to fund my hobbies. So I was um very hard working when it came to certain things. I was never a good saver. I, in fact, didn't have money. I didn't start saving money until I was like 22. And I always balled on a budget. I believed in that. I, I was the definition of work really hard, but also play hard until you have zero in your bank account and then repeat. Like that was how I lived my life. And I was happy. I was okay with that. You're low-key insane for liking customer service. I, I, I think, I, I don't know, I just, for me, I was just really good at like, leaving my feelings at the door if it came to getting tips and, I don't know, I, I just understood the whole workflow really well. I was very happy to work. Um, at the age of 14, I got my parents' consent to work at Playland in Vancouver. So I was already working at 14. And it was the best. Um, my very first job was Playland. Um, it was, I was working at the Beach Hut Lemonade Stand. So I made lemonade. Then I worked a little bit at the Fudge Factory there, but I didn't enjoy that as much because it's very grueling work and you get dirty all the time from all the cotton candy and stuff. I was like, ah. I want to get back to Lemony. And then when I moved to America, I worked at uh, this Boba Bakery lunch and dinner spot. Um, and I worked at Swatch. I worked at GameStop. And I worked at Blue Sea Sushi, which is like a... Con uh, an attempt at upscale conveyor belt sushi. <laughs> That's a lot of places, yes. The most I've ever worked was three jobs at a time. Uh, what was your, did you have a favorite? Yes. Um, my favorite was probably GameStop, despite it being my most short-lived. Um, because at Swatch, very competitive nature. I think it was because, um, when it comes to commission-based jobs, I think the only time it will work is if everyone is on the same page with how commission should work. So, with that said, there should be a competitive side where we all are thriving our best to make the most money we can so that we can just get a lot of sales and make money which is more on the competitive side or we all agree to not give a crap and just do things for fun it is what it is not take things personally and all help each other out unfortunately at the time i i'm naturally a competitive person and i am the type to like try really freaking hard um I'm not to step on one's toes. I'm not like evil, but sometimes my competitive drive will, I guess, irk the people that are just more lax and chill about their jobs. 
So I ended up butting heads with a person and they threatened to beat me up. <laughs> and I, th I, th I literally told them I'm quitting because it's so immature of you to threaten to beat me up. <laughs> And then they were really sorry after that because they realized what they had done. And I'm like, well, it's too late. You can't take it back. I'm forever paranoid. I think I think you're scary. Uh, and I actually quit. <laughs> How did it get that far? Do you guys want to know the tea? You guys want to know the tea? It's been so long. But I think with the Statue of Limitations, I'm pretty sure I can tell the tea. Spill it. All right. All right. I'll tell you guys the tea. I, I love, I love, I love tea. All right, all right, so, the tea. All right, <clears throat> so this was at Swatch. And, um, we had, uh, we have this system that is low-key toxic, but it is what it is, where there will be, you know, you guys know, like, employee of the month? We had that. But, unfortunately, it's one of those employee of the month things that is very heavily just based on numbers and I'm not gonna lie like I said when it comes to commission it, like as a manager I'm just so shocked if you know you have a very colorful team where it's like not everyone's the same with like how commission should work I don't understand why you would even think to do MVP because it's gonna be the same person every month, you know what I mean? And that's gonna just put a target on your back. People are gonna be annoyed with you. People are gonna call you goody two shoes or a suck up or a toe sucker, feet kisser, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Because I feel like at that point, the manager's just dangling a title that no one wants except the one or two people that genuinely do care about making money. Anyways, that's just a little bit of background and context. Um, competitive people, naturally, especially when put on a shift together, sometimes it gets a little it gets a little feisty in a sense where if they feel like they gave up a customer to you and you get the sale, they might think that they're entitled to the sale, or if they're helping your customer with something like buffing a watch they might feel like oh maybe we should split the profit of the next sale because i'm busy with your customer so there's like different elements that can factor in that make i guess competitive people pit against each other all right more context all right so um we had a lead position lady that is very very mature she's like she she has like grandkids like she's a grandmother okay very mature lady very experienced she is called the shark for a reason and she was the only person that was like heavily competitive until i came not gonna lie people would always just like let her do her because you know they always knew like that's just, just what she's about like she cares about making the bag but then when I came along, I also cared about making the bag. So naturally, I was like, oh, this is a cool challenge. I want to do my best to, to, uh, um, uh, exceed. Um, Manta, Manta Rayo, thanks for the tier two. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, like, I'm not perfect. Back in the day, I, I mean, I think the most I can say is, like, you know, I didn't handle things perfectly. I do wish maybe I was a little bit more considerate of people's feelings. But uh, yeah. So, not everyone took well to this. And yes, I was pretty competitive with every sale. I, I was that annoying girl that was like, Hi, can I help you? Blah, 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 blah. Would you like to check out our this? Would you like to check out our that? Like, I literally was that girl. And then one day, um, what happened again? <laughs> okay, okay. I think what happened was, oh yeah, yeah. 
one day I was paired up with a guy. Um, he's a really chill dude, or so I thought. So I was venting to him. I was venting to him about this one incident where I butt heads with this lead, the lady. And um, it was a genuine situation where I was just venting, I was getting off my feelings. I even, I even told this guy, hey, disclaimer, I'm just venting. Like, please don't take this to heart. I'm just like, I'm just trying to vent. And he, and he was like, oh yeah, no worries, go ahead. So I'm venting and I am very emotional. Um, so I basically told him that I felt like she was butting heads with me in a way that I felt was like a little too much because at the end of the day, she, I felt at, at, at that moment, I was like, I'm like a starving high school student, you know, like why is she fighting me for this one sale so hard? I forget, I forget the, the details exactly, but that was the gist of it. Because I felt like she was being extra competitive against me. Yeah, she already owns a house. She's rich, by the way. She's like ballin'. She always wears like designer. And I'm just like, come on, man. Abe? Oh, hi, Abe. Wait, what the heck? <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm just storytelling. I'm telling the tea about uh about how I how I got threatened to be get beaten up at work. <laughs> Auto filled the emo. Oh, oh, why people happy? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> guys. Why is it auto fill like that? <laughs> you got beat up. No, I I never got beat up. Uh, I got threatened to get beaten up. But anyways, I vented to this guy, basically, that I felt like um, she was a little aggro with me. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I was probably very immature with my word usage, and I, I, and I, I use words like petty. I, I was talking smack, all right? I'm not gonna lie, I was talking smack, all right? I'm gonna be honest here, I was talking smack. But anyways, I was talking smack. I had let him know that I was venting. And you know what he does? He decides to tell everyone. <laughs> Except the lady, of course. He's not that horrible. But anyways, he so he tells my coworkers that already hate me, by the way. Or I wouldn't say they hate me, but I think maybe they were annoyed at me because of my competitive nature or whatnot. But anyways, he told everyone. And obviously, like I said, you guys, there was already an environment an, an, like a, a system going on when I came in where she was the the head honcho the shark and they all just respected her They're all like yeah, 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 go ahead because all of them are super chill and they're like she can have it She can have it. She's she's our elder. We respect her. We love her like that was the vibe. All right That was the vibe so <laughs> Naturally they were very upset with me because they're like how could you hate on our, our, our mom, our grandma? You know, like that was like, they, they were like pitting up against me for this. And I'm not going to lie. I probably deserved it. I learned a grave lesson when it comes to venting and who you choose to vent to. And also the scenario, the situation. I Like sometimes it's just better to not talk about it. Trust me, I've learned. But either way, they were very upset. spaghetti. And the girl in question she decides to text me and call me out and was like, hey, I heard you've been talking mad sh about blah, 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 like head honcho. And I'm just like, oh, you must have heard it from this person. Um, yeah, I was just venting. I was just getting things off my chest. And then they're like, well, you have no right to say that because blah, 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 basically just tell me how hor what a horrible person I am not giving a crap about how my feelings at all like it was very like you know like she was trying to put me in my place and then i think at some point i was like you know i've i've never spoken to these people like this like i am so sick of this so i think i i think i may have a snap back a little i may have snapped back a little 
And uh, I, I don't remember what I said, um, but uh, it angered her enough to be like, Oh, you think you're so good, huh? You think you're so this? Well, let me tell you. I, the next time I see you, I'm up. Beat your ass. That's what she said. <laughs> and uh, I saw that. When I got that text, I was like, okay. Like, I never knew that she was affected this much. Because I think, like, I think I was being snarky with her. That's what it was. I think I remember saying, th I, th I think I said, I said things along the line of, of like, uh, oh my god. Actually, I do. <laughs> it's coming back. It's coming back. But basically, I was saying, like, I'm just doing my job. Or that I was kind of getting at the point where I'm just like, like, you know, like, I just I, kind of making her feel like lesser than I'm not going to lie. Like I was being snarky. All right. But she was she basically said that and I thought it was so immature. And at that point, I'm like, okay, you're, you're this is clearly like, I think she was just texting me just to come to this response. Anyways, like there was nothing I could have said to make her feel better. <clears throat> like what I'm saying is she already came in to fight me, you know? Hi Ari, I'm new to your stream. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is your first stream. I'm literally I'm literally talking about some tea right now and this is not who I am all the time, but uh, this is today's the day. I'm going to I'm going to let off some steam. Anyways, but when she when she threatened me, uh that's when I was like, "Whoa. Um that's scary." Like, I straight up said, like, well, I'm scared of you. Uh, you use your wushu on her. I mean, yeah, I did know wushu, but, you, you, I mean, I don't think about... I, I just think... I think it's more of a mentality thing. Like, I think I'm not afraid of her physically because she was, like, a head shorter than me. Like, I'm not afraid of her physically. I'm just afraid of, like, the, the mentality and, like, kind of the hostility and how quick people are will go to that place of wanting to beat someone up. Like, I could never get to that point. I never, ever was like, I want to beat that person up. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll say it if I'm, like, wanting to defend my friend from something, but it's for other people. But when it comes to, like, myself, it's like, holy crap. I don't think I could ever do that. S sounds like typical Metro Town beef. <laughs> uh, I was in America at this point. But, um... It's a South Coast Plaza beef. <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, I genuinely was fearful. I was, I was not having it. So I told her that I was very scared. Um, I just told her my feelings. I just was like, this is scary. I don't want to come to work to knowing that, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to quit. And then, I, right when I said that, something clicked. And they completely turned 180. And they're like, whoa, whoa, wait. Like, I, like, don't quit. And then I was like, why is there a dead cat there? No, he's, he's not dead. He is sleeping. Yeah. You ever be blessed with a, a, a kitty that can sleep this close to you? Anyways. Anyways. Sorry to wake you up, Kisa. Just had to prove that you weren't dead. <laughs> um, where is it getting at? Oh yeah. So I told her that I was scared, and I told her that hey, you know, I'm not looking forward to coming to work, to a workplace where you know this is the energy that I'm getting and like the hostility. I I I don't feel good about this. And then she turned 180, and immediately was like, oh, okay, I that don't quit i wasn't trying to get you to quit like and then she starts explaining how she was trying to like pretty much put me in my place and tell me not to talk shit and i'm like if you didn't want me to talk crap you can just tell me that you don't appreciate me talking crap and i've already apologized and luckily the word never got to her so i have no need to apologize to her because that'd be very excessive if, if if a person didn't even know that you that you know you had resentment towards them or you were feeling a certain way and then all of a sudden you're like by the way i kind of talk smack about you like it's weird to like admit something like that like to me i just didn't th didn't think it was necessary because she didn't know um but i 
I already apologized and to my coworkers, and I was just like, I'm sorry that you guys had to hear it like that. Like, uh, I'll be better. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then she was just like, okay, I'm really sorry. I'm just like really heated and I was stressed and yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's probably two sides to every story. Like, she starts talking sense now. And I'm just like, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's just a little too late at this point. And I told her, like, I, don't, I just don't think like we see eye to eye when it comes to like work and, and you know, how work should be. And, and I even told them, like, I'm sorry for disrupting the piece. Because I do feel like, I genuinely did feel like I disrupted the piece because of my competitive behavior. Um, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> um, and when I quit, one of the things that uh, I did go up to the head honcho lady. And she was like tearing up. Um, because like, we were a very close group. Like we, even though like they didn't love me, I was still invited to every event. And I went to all of them because, um, I don't know why, I just, I, 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 I think I, I think it was because I had nothing else to do. But anyways, so yeah, I, the head honcho was tearing up when I was leaving and then she's like, do you really have to go? And I'm like, yes. And I even told her, I'm like, I'm sorry if I ever came across, um, like you were my greatest competition and I'm sorry if it, it ever came off like, like that was stressful or that you needed to compete against me. Um, and I even said like, to be honest, I just look up to you to the point where I want to surpass you. And then she was just like, oh my God, that would never bother me. And then she was like, actually, you remind me a lot of myself when I was your age, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, this is so wholesome. Like the fact that she even saw herself in me and doesn't blame me for any sort of attitude or maybe sass that I may have shown her due to my competitive behavior naturally because I just want to succeed. Like it was so wholesome and cute moment. And I know this might sound crazy, <laughs> how I'm about to end this session of a story time, but she died in a car accident. And I know, th guys, this isn't this isn't funny. This is true. Um, oh, why did you say LMAO? I oh, come on. No, <sighs> it's cursed. It's cursed. Like it was a really awesome upbringing story you know like like senpai kohai no not even senpai sorry sensei and that was not the plot twist i was expecting you said that so calmly nah no guys i've already grieved i've i've grieved enough glassy gecko thank you so much for the 14 months Anyway, I'm dead, Lamau. No, she is. Lamau. No, not funny. Anyways. <laughs> I choked on my sandwich! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> it still affects you. Okay, guys, okay. Any any sort of smiling and laughter you get now is literally just my awkward way of coping. But I promise you guys, there was a point where I could not get out of bed when I found out. It was very awful. And, um, I actually didn't believe it. Um, but because I had such negative memories of, um, how I left Swatch, other, other than her, um, I pretty much unfollowed everyone, everywhere. Um, but then randomly, I don't know why, but it's like, I, you know, sometimes you have like a weird gut feeling. I had a weird gut feeling to check my Instagram DMs. And this is not something I do. Ever. I, I, like, I check my Instagram DMs once in a blue moon. Once in a blue moon. Probably two times a year, I'd say. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I had a gut feeling 
for some reason to check them. And you do know with Instagram DMs, especially if you get too many because you're a public figure, whatever, um, matter of fact is when they get too old, they actually, like, you actually just can't see them. Um, so it was recent that I got the message from my, my uh, ex-coworker. And they said, hey, um, I know you're a streamer now, and that's really, really cool. Um, I'm happy for you, blah, 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 blah. But... You know, she... she uh, you know, like... Our, the lead person? She's gone. She's no longer with us, and I just want you to know, because I know you guys shared a special connection, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I know she cared about you a lot, but yeah, when I found out, I I was like shocked, and I didn't believe it at first. <laughs> I was like, "Is this a prank?" But then you actually look up her name. Her first name is Mavosh. I don't remember exactly her last name. It you can look it up actually. Uh, but yeah, she was in a car accident, I think involving a truck in Tustin. And... Because that's where she lived. And yeah. And it's just so sad because like, I literally shared so many memories with this woman. Competing head to head with her. Both me and her constantly checking the POS system to see like our numbers. To see who has more sales, like... And she was a grandmother, always talking so highly of her son and her grandkids. And like, her house was like used to host Thanksgiving dinner. Like, she was such an inspiration and she was so great to us. And like, despite her competitive nature that I also had, it was fun in the end, you know? And like, we both acknowledge each other's like, um, work ethic but yeah rivalries build strong relationships yeah it did feel like that checking pos to check on sales i did the same when at express yeah we were obsessed like uh, yeah us two we were the worst <laughs> we just every time we were free we would check <laughs> yeah but that was really sad Lesson of the story is never mess with Arya. No, she didn't mess with me. No, don't say it like that. She did not deserve that. No, I mean... I don't know. There's... I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. What happened to the guy that betrayed your trust? The audacity of that guy, he literally kept on trying to like still talk to me in DMs. No, like, I will never have respect for that person again. I think like, for me, I always love the attention of women the most, but Naturally, I made the most friends with guys and One of the, my favorite traits about guys is whenever I would vent about anything or anyone Usually it just becomes a laughing matter and then they forget the next day like they don't hold on to anything I say they don't They don't they don't make a big deal out of anything Because they know like oh, it's probably just you know Oh yeah, Arya's just acting up, or Arya's just like, you know, a little emotional right now at that time of the month for her. Let her speak her truth. Hardy har har. Like it's 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 they don't think twice. But then I feel like when I saw the way that guy acted and betrayed my trust and used it as like gossip fuel to everyone, that's when I was like, okay. That's... 
not why I usually blab to, uh, to, uh, boys. <laughs> What's a butterfly effect? <laughs> um... Hi, welcome to the stream. We are currently talking about life. A long, casual chain of events. Small action leading to big effects. Oh. Small event cascades to major effects down the line. Oh. Chaos theory. Flap of butterflies when you can start a tornado. Oh, wow. You guys are speaking such beautiful language. That's cool. <sighs> Where are you? Podcast? This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, if you guys trigger certain, like, unlock memories, Type B, I, I, I probably have a crazy story for all of you guys. Yeah, I may not be the most eloquent person, but I promise my, my experience with life, she is, she is seasoned. Are you always with stories? <laughs> it's true. My life was kind of, not even kind of, it was super chaotic. I don't know what it what a peaceful life sounds like. <laughs> Do you miss Vancouver? Um, yeah. I miss Vancouver for various reasons. Would I move back? I think I would consider settling there, but I don't think I would move back while I'm still, like, working. Ew, Canada. No! Canada is so nice. I miss it. Like, it's so good for people, kindness, chillness. I just watched Sid's charity stream. You would have smoked everyone in badminton. I wanted to be there so bad. But to be honest, I'm glad I wasn't. I'm glad I wasn't because... Okay, first of all... I don't think, it, like, if someone smokes, I thought about it more after, if someone just smokes the competition, I don't know, I feel like, isn't that, like, a bad thing? Because, like, what if, what if it's, like, people are just trying to play for fun and then I just become that overly competitive girl again? <sighs> uh, well, I'm pacing, thanks for the four months. You gotta be the villain and then lose in the end. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's also like... It's, I, I don't know, maybe it's copium too. At the end of the day, our friend group is very, very, very big. You can't be invited to every event. It's just natural, you know? That's just natural. So maybe I was just like, coming up with ways around, or different thoughts where I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I didn't want to be there. It's fine. But it's okay, I have, I have let Sydney know, I have let, um, uh, my friends in OTV know, like, hey, if it's a sporty event, please let me come, because I love sports. I'm not super good at badminton. I was on the team in high school, but I wasn't super good. Yes, I was also, I was on the badminton team, volleyball team, basketball team, track and field, and ultimate team. But, I was only... Mm, no, I only played soccer in like preschool. So, that doesn't really count.
<laughs> you and Michael would have been the final bosses. Uh, yeah, I think if Michael were were there, uh, that would be fun for me too. Sydney is very sport sporty herself. Like I I saw I saw her. Uh, what was it? Was a hundred meter dash? That's crazy. So you're the girl I'd be scared to to talk to in high school. Mm, actually, no. If you ask any of my friends, I think I was super pe people pleaser, happy go lucky type. Um, the first half of high school when I was in Vancouver, I I you could tell I was just friendly to everyone. But in high school in America, um, I became like a ceramics freak. All my lunch hours, I would just spend in the ceramics classroom. I would buy extra clay. I would, yeah, I would just buy extra clay to create my own projects. Um, finish the homework extra early so that I can do my own projects and have them fired up in the kiln. It was so cheap. Like a whole block of clay was just five bucks. That's it. Five bucks for a whole like block. And then I was able to do make whatever I wanted. So I would spend all my hours in the ceramics club and I was very, I would say I was very unapproachable. I became so, like, I would say I was like borderline extroverted my first half of, of my life. And then the second half, I'm just like hardcore introvert. Why ceramics of all things? Um, I naturally uh, am a fine motor skills type of girl. I've always loved the arts. I love cooking, baking. So I felt like I could express myself. Ooh. I wonder if I still have the photo of uh, my ceramics project. I'm pretty sure it's like on my my photos or in my history because you know how your your phone has like your photos even from like way back when. So this was um, a side project um, where me and the other ceramics tryhards did. Um, I made the Maleficent. We all did villains, Disney villains. And then mine is the far right, if you guys don't know who Maleficent is. The first one is Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatian. Second one is the, the evil stepmom from Cinderella. Third is the Evil Queen from Snow White, and then fourth is mine from Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was very proud. I spent so long. I remember sculpting her nose too. I had to like make sure it was perfect. And the horns, the horns took me multiple days to figure out because it was so hard because the thing is guys, you're not allowed to have it like, mm, there's like some physics. Like you can't have it, ha I didn't want it to have a hole. So I wanted it to be completely like smooth. But then the way gravity works and the way you shape things, it just kept on slopping and flopping over. It's crazy. Like, it took me so long to figure out. <laughs> Did you glue the horns on after? Nope, it is one piece. I'm very proud of myself. And I remember too, my teacher was like, there is a chance your piece might explode. Are you okay with this? Because the way I like plugged it, like, um, it's just like the balance was gonna be very off, especially like the tip versus the base. Um, and I remember too, I used uh, tin foil balls to fill the inside of the horns to give it like um, structure while it dried before it went into the kiln. But yeah, she was, my teacher was like, this might explode. And I was like, YOLO. And she's like, but you're all your hard work, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. 
I took a chance and it worked. But not to toot my own horn, guys. You guys, you guys know me. I'm not, I'm not one to be like I'm the best. But when it comes to um, art class, um, I was always the best, <laughs> and this is just true. Um, the only time I wasn't the best was because I would say I'm second best because I uh, this one guy named Ryan. He literally, I'm pretty sure he took art lessons. But he he was he was he was better than me. I'll admit that Ryan was better than me. But like you guys may know him, like I, I say Ryan and Brian a lot because they're in my chat and I used to play a lot of league with them. But it's true though, like other other than Ryan, I was always the best. <laughs> when it comes to art. So yeah. Why did you stop with art? Um, I don't think I ever was interested in art in a way that would make me money. For me, it was very like personal and it was uh, kind of like something I used to express myself and um, it was something that I looked at as, I want to make it the best I can, but never would I ever think I want to sell this or I want to make money off of it, or I want to make this for someone else. I think art's like that one thing where it's very personal for me. And a lot of the times, especially with school projects too, I just wanted to do it the best I can uh, because I was told to do it. For example, um, <laughs> this project you guys saw here, the entire class was told to do a self-portrait where they had to make themselves. And I remember telling my teacher, I was like, hey, I don't want to do myself. And she said, why not? You're a beautiful young lady. And I said, that's not it. I have a different idea. And then she said, what is that? And I said, May I do Maleficent instead? <laughs> and she was like, Maleficent? The the Disney villain? And I was like, yes. And she was like, why? And I said, because she's much more interesting and her horns are beautiful. And that's what comes to mind when you tell me to do uh, like a, a headshot of someone. And she was like, you know, I... I want to see where this is going. I, I just want to see what you make. I love what you make. So, yeah. Um, I remember our very first project. I think like I easily rose to become one of her favorite students because, or at least in that class, because our very first um, project w uh, was making boxes. And everyone in the class, um, she said that you can decorate your box however you want and a lot of people were just like doing her method was basically using a um, cutting tool to kind of carve details into the box and a couple people used the extra clay they had to like put maybe like hearts and stars or happy faces or like small details i think one guy put like a cute little soccer ball on his as the knob like very cute and i dead ass didn't listen to her with the measurements. She's like, make, I, I forgot the measurements she told us to make, but I had in mind, I was like, I want to make a cake box. So I deliberately made my box smaller. I like literally didn't even care about acing the class. I just, my vision was I need extra clay to make like whipped cream and fruits and cute stuff. So I made a whole ass cake. Like a Japanese, like, you know, like the um, shortcakes? I made like multiple strawberries and I, I even like made the whipped cream and I used the cutting tool to create, to carve the edges to make the whipped cream look like it was like a star tip piped whipped cream. When she saw that, she was like, 
Um, wow. Your box is too small, but what you made, astounding. But you do know, and then this is when she's like, everyone in the class, can you all look here? Look at this masterpiece. And everyone was like, wow, wow, oh my God, so cute. Wow, I didn't know you could do that. And she's just like, I love what she did here. But next time, I just want to let you guys know that you can tell me if you need more clay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and this is when she told us, yeah, uh, I don't normally, you know, offer this or tell you guys about this because you guys are just beginners with ceramics. But if you ever want to buy more clay, you can buy more clay. It's only $5 and you get a whole bag, blah, 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 blah. you put your name on it. And I, that's what, that's how she told us about buying more clay was because I was making a project of my own and she saw that I had to sacrifice my my inches on my box <laughs> so yeah I hope that teacher is still teaching happily retired I think she was still teaching when I asked chat last time I had some alumni um, in the chat I went to Fountain Valley High School and her name was Miss Troyer but I forget her new name because I left, or I graduated when she got married. So, her last name is her husband's last name now. But, she was Miss Troyer. Don't know if, if, what are the odds if any of you guys are from Fountain Valley that would know her. But that, that was her. Plot twist, she owned the clay store. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not her making money off of students. She, she was definitely one of my favorite teachers. Anytime I had like a detention slip, she would just sign it off for me. <laughs> Granted, probably a couple times she made me like actually wash her her like basin area and the and like organize some of the art supplies, but I was more than happy to do that. She she would sign off. I mean, I feel like sometimes if we had like our favorite teacher, they would do that for us. Close to Found Valley grew up in San Diego. Oh. Is the cat behind you drunk? No, they're just sleeping. <laughs> Ace art t student, how did you get attention? Well, you see, just like I described in my story on how I did not care about the measurements and how I made a self-portrait project become my own project, I don't give a crap sometimes about the rules and I often have a habit of doing it the way I do things. So same with classes, I, even though I am told not to sleep in them, I will sleep. So most of the times I got kicked out, it was because of sleep. The other time, this, this one other time I got kicked out was because I think I like snarkily replied something with the breath of my, 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 uh, voice. And the, the teacher heard me and was like, I will not tolerate that behavior. Blah, 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 get out. And I was like, no, and the thing is, it wasn't even evil. I think what I said was something like, like, oh, but I had it in my bag. Like, I forgot, I, I don't know. It was just one of those, like, I just talked back, you know? And the teacher was Asian, so he was not having it. And he's like, get out. And I'm like, okay. Whoa, chill. I wasn't a problem child. I think I was just stubborn. I think... For me, like, I just did not care about what, like, teachers thought of me. I cared about what my, my peers thought of me, but a lot of the times I did not care about how teachers. Because I grew up with a father that, um, verbally will, uh, what's it called? Get crazy <laughs> with policemen. My dad is not afraid of authority to, author authoritative 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 figures yeah authoritative that he is not afraid of them he hates them to be honest on the most for the most part um, um we've also gotten kicked out of water mania i don't know if you guys know vancouver but um we got kicked out of water mania probably like four times because my dad will always argue with the lifeguards. <laughs> and because I grew up with that, that's a throwback, yeah. 
so if you guys don't know, Water Mania is an indoor water park, uh, and it had, it had a wave pool. Yeah. <laughs> Why, what does he argue with them about? It's always the same thing. It's always life jackets. So my dad enrolled my sister and I in swimming lessons, but in particular, it's usually my sister. My sister was a premature baby, and naturally she was always a very small kid. She was always misaged, and no one could tell that we were a year apart. People always thought she was like the baby sister, but we're just a year apart. She was always really, really, really small, but she can swim. But it does look concerning when you see like a really small, almost toddler-esque child swimming, you know, with no life jacket on. So a lot of the times they'll they'll always tell my dad the same thing, like put life jackets on those two girls. And my dad's like, but they can swim. And they're like, rules are rules. And yeah, sometimes sometimes our form is not perfect, but we 100% can swim and will not drown. But they didn't trust in that. And they still also probably didn't want to do their jobs as constantly lifeguarding. So they wanted to make their lives a little easier by forcing us to have life jackets. And my dad was very offended um, by that every single time. Another thing is um, they're kind they're okay. They're not even kind of, some of them are blatantly racist. Um, I remember one of them, I remember one of them arguing with my dad and I forget what he called him, but he called him something along the lines of like Chinese something. I don't remember it, but it was for sure racist. And cause I remember, cause I was a kid, right? And I remember like, why did she call you that? We're not Chinese. Like I remember her saying like something really messed up and she was just like some white lady. But yeah, I just remember they're racist there. So they're always on guard when it comes to like the Asians that were coming in to that establishment. Um, and at that point, they're always trying to look to fight with my dad. <laughs> My dad is not, he, he, the thing is he, his English isn't perfect. So a lot of the times, like I think his tone too, um, his hearing isn't the best either. So when there's a wave pool, that's you, the waves are constantly crashing, you know, kids are screaming, like it's a loud area. So sometimes he can't hear them. And sometimes he'll raise his voice because of that. And they think it's like coming from a hostile place when he's just trying to communicate with them. Um, so yeah. We've gotten kicked out four times. They have a no tolerance policy with uh, arguing with guests. So for them, I think like their policy is they'll tell you to do something and the, literally they'll only give you one chance to correct yourself. If you do not listen to them and you argue back, you literally get kicked out. So after you get kicked out, it's always that's always when my dad gets riled up and he'll be like, why you treat me like this, huh? Why you treat me like I'm a criminal? And he's like, they're like, sir, you will be a criminal as soon as we call the cops on you if you don't leave. It always it always gets to that point. <laughs> but he'll make sure he yells at them. He'll say you're racist. He'll say um, you you treat me like a criminal. He'll say f you mother effer. <laughs> and then he and then he starts swearing in Japanese because my dad like that's the one quirky thing about him is if he wants to say foul language. Um, that we won't understand as kids, he'll speak Japanese. He's not even Japanese, by the way, but it's because um, when he took, uh, riff, when he was, uh, what was it? Uh, what do you call being again? Like refugee camp? Um, he went to Japan. So, and he stayed there for a few years. So yeah. <laughs> Your dad is awesome. He is pretty awesome, not gonna lie. He does have some rage issues, but that's okay. Like I said, we all have our vices. I love him to death. I am 110% a daddy's girl. Zero, um... Yeah, I never had daddy issues. <laughs> I argued with my dad a lot because we're both like stubborn, but I always forgave him in the end and I always understood why he did what he did. I was very empathetic towards my dad. <laughs> And I think like there, there's a saying where um, if you had a really good father figure in your life, that's what's going to depict um, your standards with like men. And then if you had a really strong 
relationship with your mother, that's what's going to depict your self-esteem levels and how you view yourself. And because I had mommy issues, my self-esteem is very, very low. But because I have an amazing father, I am very, very picky with um, men. Very. My standards are... I actually don't think my standards are high. I think they're just very particular. And I'm very picky about it. They're not high at all. And by the and the reason why I say they're not high is because every time I date someone or I choose someone to date, people are always like, why? Like, I, I, I'm not the type of person that would be like, in school, I, would, I like, you know how, let's say I'm the most popular girl. I would never go for the most popular guy. Like, I'm not the type where I'm like, prom queen doesn't mean I go for prom king. I always liked like very oddball people, but I knew they had such good hearts and I was always treated so well, at least in the beginning. We can talk about, we can go into depth about like my being cheated on stories, but yeah, um, for the most part, always treated well in the beginning. <laughs> looks doesn't play a part. I think looks will always play a part in attraction level, like initial attraction, but for me, Looks will never keep a relationship for me. I think improve, in, like self improvement, is hot on anyone. I am, I am one to one hundred and ten percent believe and understand that a solid two out of ten can easily bump themselves up to like even a seven if they just are constantly trying to improve themselves. It's like that improvement and wanting to improve and taking actions towards improvement that's hot, you know? Anyone is a seven with effort, exactly. Okay. Every man can be a seven. Mm -hmm. And I've gone for people that I felt looks were as a four. Straight up, I was very honest. I was like, yeah, your looks are not very conventional. They're not very, like, actually what I would consider handsome, but I like you and I don't care. You said that to them. I said that to them when I was well into our relationship already, and we were very established and, like, already talking about marriage and stuff. So, it was like a, I told them as, like, an initial thing. And obviously, I, it was like a sandwich, you know, complimented them, told them the truth about the initial, and then also, you know, complimented after. It's fine. They took it fine. They took it well. In fact, they they also said I wasn't, like, their first pick anyways. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> You're not cute for real, but you got heart. No. I never said they weren't cute. I just said they weren't my type, looks-wise. No, I'm not giving chat anything. I mention it all the time to not be parasocial about things, and I have dated a viewer before, and it because it went so bad. Yup, guys, one bad egg will ruin it for the rest of y'all. You guys are never getting a chance. And they say never say never, but I'ma say it. So don't think I'm milking this situation, I'm not. I'm just being very honest. You're cute, but not physically cute. Sorry, not sorry. No. Stop. It was a first impression thing. Stop. <laughs> People become even cuter with personality, and that's true. Come on, man. Come on, man. Do you guys want to take the chances or not? Not with me, obviously, but on the fact that, like, a semi-attractive girl could think like this. Come on. Take it as a dub for the day. Take it as some soup for the soul. Be gone. <laughs> Do you have a special tactic when you want to tickle someone? Um, no, I am actually not an engager when it comes to tickling because I don't like to be tickled very much. So I know that tickling comes with a price. Usually you either get tickled back. So I don't want to risk it. Even semi-attractive ones. Um, like I said, it's not really a, it's not really about that. I think like something you guys will learn with time <clears throat> as you 
mature and get older is you will stray further and further away from looks being that important. I remember in elementary school, it was always about looks. A lot of the times it was about looks. Um, but the older you get, the, the, the sooner you'll realize that looks fade. We all get wrinkly and old. Have you seen your grandma? Have you met your grandpa? Have you seen images of old people? Old people walking across the street? Yeah, that's gonna be you one day. Mm -hmm. Not not me, bro, stop. <laughs> but my grandpa is a joke. How do you even say that about your own relative? That's weird! Huh? Chat, is that you? You claim this? You claim that, dude? Oh my god. Bro, I'm built different. Stop! Proof? Stop! It just means he's handsome. Okay, just say he's handsome! Do you know what JILF stands for? The audacity in some people. We just different, are you okay? Bro. <laughs> Sand pigs! What am I reading up in here? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. No, what does it mean? Oh, goodness. Okay, well, it means G for grandpa, and then the ILF part is I'd like to bleep. Uh huh. Or grandma, yeah, it could be for grandma too. Mm hmm. So MILF is like for mother, and then DILF is for father. What is bleep? I'm confused. All right. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> okay. It's referring to... Yes, it's that. Right, let's change topics, yeah. Um, what was your guys' first console? N64. Oh, PS1, Sega. Wow, Sega. That's a rare one. Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Oh my god, Game Boy Advance! That came much later. For my time, at least. PS1 Spyro! Oh, we have similar upbringing. I think technically my very, very first were, were, uh, was my parents. They had the Super Nintendo, and they played Super Mario World. But I was too young to, like, remember it belonging to my parents, even. I always thought it was, like, a toy that they bought for me. Um, but turns out my parents beat the whole goddamn game. And I tell the story all the time, but literally we were on the freeway and my broken English parents saw the billboard of, of Mario, like a, the new Super Mario Party, and my mom was like, hey, look, it's, it's, it's Bowser. And I'm like, huh? You know who Bowser is? I was so confused. But she was like, yeah, your dad and I beat Super Mario World. You know that console? It belonged to us, you know? It's the mistake we did with you! Because my mom, like, she has a theory that I'm addicted to gay games because my parents were addicted to that game when they were pregnant with me. 
because um, my mom said her pregnancy with me was very difficult and her feet were very swollen. So she was um, pretty much bedridden. So she would stay on the couch while my dad and her, whenever he got home from work, they would just binge the game together. And my mom was like, yeah, your dad was Mario and I was Luigi. And I'm like, oh my God. My mind was so blown because I was just like, I, I'm always helping them with English. I'm always like taking calls for them. And all of a sudden now they know the entire cast of like Super Mario and they know the lore too. My mom was explaining, she's like, yeah, we saved, we saved um, Princess Peach from the castle. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's crazy. I never even, I never even like got that far with that game. And then my dad and her started bickering about who was better at the game. They were literally arguing about that, by the way. I was in the car, I was in the car with them and it was literally just them being like, I was better at these levels, you were horrible at that. Oh, you are bad at that, we had to keep on restarting this, the, the, the one part, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like... <laughs> Do you guys believe in horoscopes or zodiacs and stuff like that? I genuinely think it's like, for fun. I love reading on it and stuff. Um, but I, I, I never, like, take it to heart or anything, or I, I wouldn't take anything negative from it. But, um, one thing I learned from my parents was that something my mom preaches a lot is that they are, like, cat and mouse. And apparently that is their zodiac, um, because, um, my mom told me in some parts the rabbit is the cat. So she's technically a rabbit, but then she identifies as a cat, pretty much. And my dad's mouse so she's always like we're literally tom and jerry because whenever i'm like hey guys stop fighting because they fight every day they're like it's because we're tom and jerry <laughs> mm -hmm. tiger oh cool i wish my parents were like this i mean they were they were cool about it after i mean they were cool about it for that one day, one part, but for the most part, they were always against my gaming. They hated watching me game. But to be fair, I, I hope you guys see my issue with gaming. <laughs> I game for crazy amounts of hours. Like my addiction started at a very young age and they knew it was going to be a problem. And they had a feeling that it would follow me even into my adult life, which it did. However, the nice thing about it is with a stroke of luck, I was able to monetize and make it now my dream job. So, I, I it's it's not normal to have this route, guys. Um, monetize your addictions, thanks Twitch. No, I'm not gonna lie, it definitely did. It enabled me, if anything. It, it, it almost blew up my head a little too big because I literally be telling my parents like, Ooh, look, at my, look at me now, like, I told you so. You really thought I'd get nowhere with my gaming. <laughs> Ooh, hoodie coming next week. I'm so excited to wear it. Oh, thank you for so the support. <laughs> they are concerned for their future. They love you. Oh, I know. I know they love me. And I know they were just doing everything out of concern. And I'm not gonna lie, my dad's concern and ultimatum was the best thing that ever happened to me. He essentially kicked me out. He was like, it's you or the computer, um, you have to make a choice by this day. I will toss your computer if you decide to live with us. And I was like, but what about school? And my dad was like, we're gonna buy you a really ass laptop. Just enough juice to do college homework, to type essays in, and that's it. It will. I will make sure I tell the salesperson that it cannot run games. <laughs> I was so rebellious, guys. I was like, my my blood is my blood was black. I do think deep down, I wasn't a horrible person. But I do think I am very, very cunning in some ways. Um, I'm going to share 
a story. But before I share, I want you guys, this is a two-way street. I want to hear about you guys. What is one of the worst things you guys have done to your family? Um, yeah. You don't have to type up a paragraph, but you maybe you can like bullet points make I don't really have one. Sorry. You push your brother down the stairs. <gasps> I see. I went to rehab. Oh, don't talk to them much. Hmm. Failed freshman. Oh, your college cost them 10k. Oh my goodness. You accidentally hit. Okay, accidents don't count. Dislocated your brother's shoulder once. Uh, dislocation can happen easily for some people. Drop your baby sister. Okay, a lot of these sound like accidents. You took a nap with your cousin's ex. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm not that evil. I thought I was really evil, but I'm not gonna lie. Some of your guys' stories, Zara. <laughs> no, they said cousin's ex, so it's they're not blood related. It was more so like they did not care the fact that it was like Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay, you guys seem to Okay, okay, you guys seem to your your guys' story seem to be mainly accidents. You trip your grandma when you were four. She had to go to the hospital. Let me guess. You're that kid. You're that kid on TikTok. That is blowing up because he shot his mom for not buying him a VR set. <laughs> that is for sure you. Wait, why are you guys decal? You guys don't know? Let me inform you. Apparently, there is a kid that really wanted the VR for Among Us VR. He wanted it so bad and his that he demanded his mom buy it with her credit card. And when she refused and did not want to give it to her, he shot her, took her credit card, purchased it, by the way, while she is dead. And when he was questioned and uh, confronted by his grandma why did you kill your mom ah, blah, blah 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 he goes i'm sorry for killing my mom but also did the vr set come in yet <sighs> real story by the way real story <laughs> yeah that kid was the real imposter uh-huh that's Cap. It's not Cap. It's not Cap. Literally, look it up. Look it up. Kid kills mom for not buying him VR set. You will li you will see the article. It is so sad. It is so, 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 so sad. Not putting that into my Google. <laughs> yeah, it's true, though. It, it, it is real. <laughs> It's so it's so messed up. See, I don't. I yeah. I, I was never that kid. Definitely not. I was addicted to games, but not to the point where I would kill my own parents. Yeah, a lot of people are. You know, th this this does come for um, bringing up the topic of mental health for sure. We are waiting for your story. Okay, guys, I'm not gonna lie. After you guys told your stories, and then and then I told this story, my story is kind of like lukewarm water now. It's not that. It's not that exciting. The tea is no longer piping. Man, I opened up for nothing. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, I mean I'll say it, but please. If... Anyways. I personally thought it was really, like, evil. But anyways. Um. 
technically this is like freshman year of high school for you guys, but but this for me this was like elementary for me. Or like middle school. Um uh, I had a Blackberry phone. And because I had a Blackberry phone, you guys know that it was much easier to browse the internet because it had a full uh, keyboard. So, a Blackberry, you monster? It's because I was from Canada. I know um, you guys use like kicks or whatever, sidekicks, side sidekicks. I forget what they're called. But, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the razor too, but at some point, I don't want to like tippity tappity like my fingers were getting sore using the razor. So it's it's much nicer to have a full keyboard. Anyways, um, and it was much easier to browse the web this way as well. So I remember. My this was this was probably one of the worst years of my gaming addiction. I was so addicted to Maple Story. Like, like you you would have to pry my nails off my laptop or my computer to get me off of Maple Story. I love Maple Story so much. I breathe lived in I, I literally breathe Maple Story. Um, so I remember there were times where my dad would take away my laptop and. It was so frustrating to me whenever he would take away my laptop. So one day, finally, I decided, wait, if he takes away my laptop, how about I just take away the entire internet? <laughs> so I used my Blackberry and I logged into our modem and I would change the Wi-Fi password <laughs> and the funniest thing was my dad got so scared because he was like how is it every time I take away your computer the internet just dies and the funniest thing was that I'm also the techie of the household. My sister didn't know shite about internet or ISP or modem work. Nothing. I did all of that. I had to make every phone call to our internet provider. So, yeah, vengeance. Yes. So, at some point, my dad was like pointing at me. He's like, you're spawn of the devil. Like, you're pure evil. Like, how did I raise you? Saying all these mean things. And I'm just like, Dad, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, totally gaslighting him. I was literally like, I have no idea. I, I didn't even admit it. I was like, no, no. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> There's the cunning, yeah. And then, by like the ninth time, he confiscated my laptop. He finally thought to confiscate my phone. But then... My dad did not know that I had an old phone. <laughs> I had an old phone. So I connected that Blackberry, the Blackberry Pearl, the smaller version, to the internet. And I remember it took me a little longer because the phone was dead, so I had to charge it. I charged it, connected to the Wi-Fi. Doesn't need a SIM card to operate. Because it was like, uh, jailbroken or whatever. And I did it again! I changed the password again! <laughs> and as- and as a edgy kid, I remember too, the password would always be like, like, I hate you, dad. <laughs> or like, dad, you'll never find out. <laughs> Oh, I think one time too I made the password. It is me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was so evil. <laughs> okay, sorry. I should be proud of this. I mean, at the same time, it was kind of funny. Like my dad and I laugh about it all the time now. I I even told I I admitted it now as a kid. I was like, yeah, I remember I did that. <laughs> and you know how like, um. 
his English isn't the best too, but I remember when I first told him he like used the wrong word. I think he meant to like call me a scammer or something, but he, he was like, you are a cheat. You're a cheater. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's the right usage, dad, but I get, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, was, I was a little evil. A little bit. <laughs> the story's funny. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed. Um, yeah. There were a lot of things I did to kind of defy my parents or, uh, yeah, I lied a lot. <laughs> For example, one of one of the famous stories I tell um, is back then my dad used to threaten me to delete Maple Story all the time, and every time I would delete it, I would show him by uh, dragging the icon into the recycling bin. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh no, it's deleted. <laughs> fake tears, fake tears. <laughs> How could you do this to me? <laughs> it's gonna take me so long to download it again. I have to wait each time. Cause my dad tried to do this thing where he would limit our computer usage. So he'd be like, all right, after your homework, you're only allowed to pay for three hours max. So back then I would like, whenever he would tell me to delete it, I'd be like, oh no, the next time I download it, it's gonna cut into my three hour time. So then I, w <laughs> I, w I would just like fake cry and like do the same thing over and over again. He finally caught on, you know, cause he's like, how is this girl able to play this game? Cause he's also, he's also witnessed me download MapleStory before and he does know it's a long process because we did not have fast internet back then. So he was very curious why. Finally, I, cause my dad loves using, um, his laptop himself like that that's why he got so mad about the wi-fi because he he likes to like read news or watch like youtube videos um so for him i think he finally youtube or he googled um why my game wasn't deleting and the recycling bin so the next time i i, I did the whole act again i dragged the um the little mushroom icon into the recycling bin and I'm like, oh no, not again, you know, my fake tears. My dad goes, oh, my game ain't gone, huh? Tao biết á, tao biết mày làm gì á. Which means, oh, you think you're so good? I actually know, I actually know what you're doing. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. What's going on? <laughs> and I kid you not, he goes over grabs the mouse right clicks the recycling bin and empties it <laughs> and i literally was like oh my god i have to hold in my laugh i have to hold in my laugh if i laugh right now it's over my ploy everything will be unraveled i still got another like 10 tries up my alley if he doesn't know that emptying it still won't do jack and I was like, I was holding in my composure. Like, like my acting skills really came out today. I was like, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Oh no, again. <laughs> I'm so sad. You figured it out. Ha ha ha. You emptied the recycling bin to the icon of Maple Story. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. That was such good times. Oh, such simpler days, guys. Simpler days where like my biggest issues in life was just how to like not be ganked by my dad and play Maple Store for as long as I can and <laughs> Did he ever find out? No. He gave up. <laughs> This was also the same era where whenever I played, um, so when there was a point in my life where my dad banned me from MapleStory, um, but I still played. I just played on my laptop whenever I was sleeping. So, um, but we have a, a better computer outside in the living room. 
where he like kind of mo he monitors the living room at all times so i have to like essentially play in front of him and um yeah so whenever it is in the daytime uh and evening hours i would play games like gaia online or gunbound and that was like my routine i'd go on my neopets gaia um puzzle pirates gunbound whatever like desktop like uh web browser games i would play in front of him there and at some point he was getting irritated with uh, gunbound because i got a i had a gunbound phase so at some point he was like what are you playing what is that game and why is it always on your screen and i'm like dad are you trying to ban me from another game and he's just like yeah he he asked me what it was and then i had the most giga brain idea I had just finished my math homework and my protractor set was still on my desk. I quickly grabbed my protractor set and I laid it against the monitor and I said, Dad, this is math. You see the angles here and the trajectory that it's going with this weather? Like I would literally just start bullshit on my, I literally was just, <laughs> because the game does it does state the degrees in which you're, you're gonna shoot your bullets at. Like, literally. <laughs> so I told him it was for math. And my dad's favorite subject, the subject he is so good at, is math. My dad even tutored us in math at some point. You were an absolute monster. <laughs> Come on, guys. I, okay, think about it this way. I, I never lied to, like, hurt a person. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't, I, 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 I wasn't bad intention or wished ill will. I was just the type of liar to to, to play an, an extra hour of video games. I didn't kill nobody. I didn't take a shotgun to my mom and be, be like, "Give me a VR set." And like, no. <laughs> and also, it was harmless because he didn't know. It would be harm it, it would be more harmful if he if he if he knew but i told him all of these things later my man like my old man never knew and sometimes ignorance will forever be bliss <laughs> that may be true but your dad needs therapy now he's traumatized oh no no <laughs> no, 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 no. Asian parents and therapy is just not not a real thing. They do not believe in mental health. They're like, you're paying a doctor, like just pay me and I'll tell you that you're a perfect person and then everything will be okay. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe my dad just said that. <laughs> yes, I am Vietnamese. Same with Hispanic. Damn. Yeah, just generational difference. And one thing I like to think about that kind of grounds me and reminds me of like why they are the way they are is think about it this way. However they treated us, I promise you, I put it on my mom, all right? I put it on my mom for not buying me that VR set, yeah. Your parents had it harder with their parents. Because a lot of the times they grow resentment against their parents and then they tell themselves i would never treat my kid like this or that there are some things that they push it way too far and that they would never want to do and exercise themselves they're literally like your grandparents light <laughs> so that's why they say that as like you know generations go on and like with this generation you know it's like the, the undoing kind of, of the very toxic old ways. Because in a sense, we, we are becoming better and better and better because we are becoming more and more aware and also a lot more communicative about these type of issues and we're not gonna be perfect, but it, like, for example, I 100% will know, hey, if I have a child, maybe I won't have a child with, uh, with a father figure where we fight every day like where i'm not going to raise my kid in a chaotic household i'm not going to move a lot with my kid because for me i always moved as a kid like i moved probably like 10 times so 
and that really harmed my like social skills and I never wanted to put my kid through that so I would be very sure of where I want to settle stuff like that there's definitely a lot of things that I learned from my parents I'm going to be better for my future kid so yeah I don't like how nowadays parents are raising kids by phones 24 7 Mm, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. Six different schools before high school. Mm-hmm. I changed high schools, okay? I feel like changing elementary schools is pretty bad, but it's not as bad as high school when you're already kind of like, I know what I want, I know what I like, and I already like things, I already am used to things. Why change now or... Yeah. But meanwhile, when you're a kid, you're like, I'll play with you, I'll play with you too! Like, it's like, not the hardest. It was still hard for me, but it wasn't the worst. Why'd you change schools often? Um, uh, because... Mainly because, uh, our family, like... The, uh, my parents... Um... We were never, like, super wealthy or anything. But... Our income definitely came in bursts and then sometimes we would have an unlucky situation where it got depleted and it, we had to downsize so my entire life was very chaotic it it was always like it was like an upgrade and then a downsize and then back to an upgrade and then back to a downsize um, and it was always like due to work or due to some, like unseen circumstances um, so yeah I remember um, we have a very famous memory between our, uh, my family. We call it, um, Yavi Chum, which means house of bugs. <laughs> because we used to live in a basement that had a manifestation in bugs. Um, um, and in particular, the, the, the roly-poly bugs. What are they called? I always forget the, the actual name of them, but they're, they're like those, those black little bugs that kind of roll up into a ball um but yeah we had a manifestation with those pill bugs are they pill bugs oh is the music louder yeah I, I i can lower it oh it's a different playlist so that's probably why uh let's do some animal crossing music some cute vibes Why is it always like sleep playlist? I want like a happy upbeat playlist. Sure. Yeah, we call it the roly poly bugs. But yeah. So that's that's like the life I used to li to live. Um we lived in the basement of another person's house and very chaotic because we can always hear the upstairs and then the downstairs was very very small and it was infested with bugs i have one younger sister what do you i, I i've never played the new overwatch hero yeah um <clears throat> Do you think moving all those time made you more resilient as a person? Um, I think moving ha got me almost like addicted to environment changes because for me, there was always a moment where it did feel exciting to meet new people and have a new home. Cause and so that actually I, I found fun. The things that weren't fun though was acclimating because ultimately not everyone wants to be my friend. Um, when I moved in the beginning of school years, it was easier. But sometimes I actually had to move in the middle of the school year. And that was the worst. Because friend groups were already had. So a lot of the times I would have to like try to bribe my way into friend groups. Um, yeah, some kids were very ruthless. Um, some bullying stories I had was like, 
um, these group of girls, they were Chinese and they thought it would be hilarious because I, I was clearly always begging to hang out with them. They're like, okay, how about this? How about if you know the password, um, if you can de decipher the code that we give you, we'll let you in. So then finally, one of the days, I memorized what she said. I was like, oh, all the, all like these Cantonese numbers. I memorized it. Um, obviously it wasn't like that, but the numbers were different. But I, one of the days I finally memorized it because she made the numbers easy enough. Um, because I failed all the other days to remember it. But the one day I remembered it, I was smart enough to find another girl that was Chinese. And I was like, hey, what is these numbers? And I said it. And she was like, oh, I think that's 137729 or something, something like that. And then that's when I was like, okay. So I went to the girls and I told them the number and they were shocked. And then they're like, didn't you say you were Vietnamese? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, then how do you know the password? And I said, oh, I asked Jesse. And then they're like, you asked someone? And I was like, yeah. And then they're like, you cheated. You're not allowed to cheat. Blah, 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 blah. So you can't play with us. So I was like, darn it. So that was another recess. And then I just waited for the bell. <laughs> and I was like, darn. <laughs> no, guys, if you guys like see, I, oh, man, I, re I do wish Gro GoPros existed back then. And I just recorded everything. When I look, think back on my bullying stories, I'm like, holy crap, I'm so pathetic. I'm like the most pathetic kid. But the thing is, guys, I was never hurt by it. Like, you guys think it's like really sad or really pitiful or really like messed up. But for me, back, back then I was like, damn, <laughs> tell us more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the main girl, the, the head honcho girl, we'll call her, we'll call her the head honcho of that group of Chinese girls. She, um, she started this thing um with friendship bracelets and she was uh she was making them with yarn and they were very very cute and at some point i was like oh my gosh because i love art right i was like i want one i want one so bad so i was like hey hey uh we'll call her, we'll call her um what shall we call her We'll, uh, we'll, we'll call her Heather. I was like, hey, Heather, I would really, really, really love a bracelet. And then she was like, no, you can't get one because you're not a part of our friend group. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so one day, um, so one day during show and tell, because we had every Friday, we had a uh, show and tell where uh, the teacher goes down the roster and we would have to bring uh, a certain thing from home and talk about it. And, but then because we do that, we all have to gather around by the small carpet area. So we all gathered around, we we're sitting down, crisscross applesauce. And one day I sat behind Heather and I looked at her pocket and I saw the, a friendship bracelet was poking out. So when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, is this, is this me wanting to steal? And then, and then I thought, okay, how about, how about this? I'm just going to take it home and I'm going to analyze it to see how she makes it, but then I'll give it back. So because I like said that, I'm like, I'm going to give it back. I took it. I took it and I remember it was like playing operation. Okay. I was like <clears throat> pulling it ever so gently and I managed to grab it. And I remember like it was so difficult for me like to figure out. And cause I was just looking at it and I was trying to like copy it with the yarn I had at home. And then I realized, oh, maybe I work backwards. So I actually started pulling the bracelet apart. And when I pulled it apart, I noticed the loops and how it behaved. Every time I pulled further and further, that's when it would like loosen up. And I saw there were loops. So I started creating loops. 
and I figured out how to make it. I made it an inverse way, but it still looked pretty much the same. Um, so I fixed up her bracelet. I finally have my own bracelet and I give it back to her. And I remember saying, hey, Heather, you dropped this. And she's like, okay. She takes it and she sees the bracelet on my hand. She looks at it. She's like, where'd you get that? <laughs> and I said, I learned how to make it. And she's like, I didn't teach you. Cause you know, like with, with kids, they don't, they don't even know, like they can't think beyond themselves. So for her, she's like, I'm the creator of this bracelet. But I'm like, I just, I don't know. I just got yarn and I figured it out. <laughs> so I lied to her, but yeah. Um, so she was just really annoyed. She's like, oh, <laughs> um, and then same girl, by the way, mother freaking Heather, man. How old were you? Uh, this was grade three, third grade. Um, Every Wednesdays, we would have actually what I was craving, Chinese Wiener Bun Day, or every other Wednesday. It, it was like the Wednesdays would alternate. It would alternate between Sushi Day or Chinese Wiener Bun Day. Um, so during those days, oh, and also every Friday was Pizza Day. Yeah. So during those three days, or those two days of the week, um, my mom would always give me uh, five dollars in order to buy a meal. And when I buy a meal, no, no, she gives me, sorry, she gives me four dollars. She gives me two toonies, which is two, two dollars for those of you guys that don't know what a toonie is. Um, so two coins. And each time the meal would cost about $1.25, but if I wanted snacks on top, then it'll cost me up to $3 max. Like for example, if I wanted like an extra, like if I wanted chocolate milk or if I wanted chips or if I wanted like a candy, um, it'll cost me up, up to $3. Yeah, I had sushi day at school. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so, um, so my mom always made sure to give me extra money. So the, the money that I, I was always left over, I was always left over like a couple quarters. And at the beginning, I would always give my mom back her change, always. But at some point, Heather was noticing that I always got change. And Heather was always very jealous that I got to eat the paid meals um, almost every time. And so, cause not only did she ask me to share, cause I always gave her half of my food too, guys. <laughs> and I always asked her what she wanted and I would get it so that she could eat half of it. Anyways, we're not talking about that. Um, the worst part was that she would make me give her money. And she was like, oh, there's a new rule if you wanna hang out with us. I said, what's the new rule? And she said, you have to give me your change every time you um, buy lunch. And I said, why? And she said, oh, because um, it's fair. Cause you get to eat more of the food. And I was like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was just really pathetic. I literally like anything this girl wanted. I'm like, if you want it, you can have it. Literally. So, I would give her all my change every Wednesday and Friday. And I think this happened for, I think, two months. Two months of constant twice a week. I would give her a couple quarters. And then finally, two months later, it was my mom that sussed something was up. Not even me. I literally would have happily given her my lunch change for the rest of the year. Like I just, I did have, I did not even suss her one bit. I did not question it. It became so natural to me to just be like, here you go, here you go. <laughs> like Heather was like ready <laughs> to take the money. Um, yeah. 
So my mom finally goes, hey, whatever happened to all the, the change from um, from your hot dog days and your pizza days, and your sushi days, and your Chinese wiener bun days and stuff. And I was like, oh, I was giving it to someone. And she's like, who are you giving your money to? And I was like, Heather. And he's like, why would Heather need money? And then I found out this whole time that my mom was on the volunteer committee with Heather's mom. And my mom knew for a fact that Heather comes from a very, very wealthy family. And her dad owns one of like the biggest companies in Hong Kong. She is very rich. Like, very rich. And this was before I knew she lived in a mansion too. Mm-hmm. My mom was like, she's literally one of the most wealthy students at your school. Why the hell would she take your money? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. Um, I mean, my mom called it a mansion, but we we were we were not we were not rich, and her, like her, her house was like a like a two story house, no, like three, because it had a basement as well, and that was considered very big for our area, because I lived in like East Van, which is like not. I mean, there's like it, it's like half and half. It's either like super poor Asians or super rich Asians. She was a super rich, I was a super poor. Anyways, yeah, so. <clears throat> Why was Heather jealous about the sushi if she was rich? Because her mom can, her mom cooks a lot. So her mom would bring her meals and then her mom would only allow her to eat like some, some of the food days, not all of them. <laughs> it's so animated, the scenes are playing in my head. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. That's how the rich stay rich, yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean, Heather Ark was huge, by the way. So huge. I could talk about Heather forever because, guys, this all sounds like a crazy uh, foundation, but it was a foundation for our best friends forever type of beat. But, well, I'll get into that. Um, so finally, when my mom got really angry, she told me, I'm going to talk to her mother. And... I was like, please don't do that. Please, like I worked so hard. She's finally letting me eat lunch with her. Like, do not do that. And she's like, then get your money back. And I said, how much? And then my mom was just like, I don't know. How much did you give her? And I, I just, like, I, I, like, I, I wasn't sure. And she's just like, get back at least $10. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so, I remember bringing it up to Heather and Heather was like, oh my God, you told your mom? And I'm like, no, my mom just asked me. She's like, why didn't you lie? And I was just like, well, like I, 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 I couldn't, like I wasn't like, where'd the money go? And she's like, oh, I'm so mad at you. How could you do this? Blah, 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 blah. And then I was just like, well, my mom told me you're rich. And she's just like, I'm rich. I'm not rich. My parents are rich but they're not giving me money and i'm like well still you have a big house <laughs> like i was just you know being a kid and then i was just like okay well my mom told me if you don't give me ten dollars my mom is gonna talk to your mom and then she was like oh so i knew she was like afraid of her parents so she knew like she could not get in trouble and she was just like oh fine yeah, and then the next day she gave me five dollars. She didn't even give me the full ten. She gave me like five. <laughs> but it was good enough. We got something from her. And that was all good and good and dandy. Um <laughs> No, her name her her name isn't Heather, by the way. Her her, her real name is not Heather. It's it is a fake Heather name. But um yeah, so um, after that phase, it was we were heading into fourth grade, and this was when everything changed. the 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 tides have turned during the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, girl. 
glue up. Mm -hmm. I would say fourth grade was when I actually started to grow into my features more. My lazy eye was improving. Like, uh, so something about me in uh, school was this, well, this eye was so problematic. It, sometimes it would wake up with like 10 eyelids. Have you ever seen a kid that like woke up like that? That was me. And I think it's because when you're a kid, your th your skin is like a certain way. Yeah. So I had one eyelid that always had like hella folds. So fourth grade, it fixed itself. And I swear that made the biggest difference because I looked like I had two symmetrical eyeballs for once. And... Not only that, but over the summer months, I also grew out my hair. I My parents always forced me to cut it really short. And finally, um, that year I was allowed to grow it out. So I got longer hair, my eyes fixed themselves. I was starting to look a little cute. And also like, yeah, I, I was just starting to look a little cute. So Heather was Heather also because she had a right she had a like a right arm woman she had she had her best friend that pretty pretty much enabled her to do everything one day we found out that that friend was moving away because she belongs in some gifted program to skip like two years of her grade like she was really smart so she was she moved away so without her, Heather was so lost. Literally, Heather lost her best friend. So Heather had nowhere else to look. We also, at this point, um, we, were, we had new homeroom teachers or new classes. So the only person really she was, she knew, liked her, was me. So immediately i'll never forget day one of fourth grade she links arms with me right away and i was like oh oh my gosh love and affection from heather what is this feeling <laughs> i was like i was so happy that like the person i felt like i was trying so hard to be friends with finally finally wants to be my friend and i was like okay this is new i like it so i talked to her i'm like so how was your summer blah, blah 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 and she was like it's awful because blah 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 told me that she was moving and now she's not here blah 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 blah, blah. but that's okay because now you're gonna be my new best friend and i was like oh best friend i have a best friend now i was so elated i was like it didn't matter. Like, I didn't care about our history anymore. I was just happy that I have someone to call my best friend. And it was different after that. After that, it was so fun. She treated me like a human being. She treated me like an equal because she wanted me to choose her back. So whenever it became like when we had to pair up into twos or we had like, yeah, anytime we had like partner work or group work, immediately we eye each other. We're like, got you, got you. And we exchanged numbers at this point too. And we called each other after school every day, every single day. And my, our, both of our parents would like get so angry with us because um, back then we use like landline. And if you guys don't know with landlines, if you are using the phone, anyone that calls in, it will, it will sound off like a busy sound rather than the, the call won't go through if the line's being used. So yeah um, no it didn't cost anything it was it was a fixed cost because we were local but um we were truly best friends and we nothing could separate us or so i thought so this was like my, this is like my whole boy crazy arc um like i said I, I i really did glow up during this phase and this was also when her and her brothers showed me maple story yeah it was thanks to heather <laughs> All thanks to Heather. And Heather was really good at games. She was really, really, really good. Um, I remember she was like a fire poison mage. And I thought she was so cool. And I thought her brothers were so cool. Um, yeah, I even had a crush on her brother. 
guys i ha I had brother complex this is true you know why though i blame my father my father one of his things was he was like you are never ever allowed to go over to someone's house that has a brother you know because parents are very paranoid and you know i'm sure they've gone through some experiences themselves where they know boy and girl alone something can happen they don't want to risk their chances also him being very overprotective over his two only daughters i understand so i naturally was always curious i had no idea um for uh fun fact guys i had no idea that like that sexual intercourse the, edu <laughs> the most educational way to put it um could be recreational i only knew what it was to create children i had zero idea about its effects on relationships or how like it is just a thing i didn't know i had zero idea so i was a very sheltered very innocent kid i'll have you guys know mm -hmm. and i didn't even know about 18 plus websites until i was like late high school so i promise you guys very innocent either way anyways with that in mind I had no idea why my dad was so against me going over to friends' house that have brothers. Um, I had another like friend where she also has just another sister, and my dad would let me go to her house every day, every day, and I didn't know why. I'm like, why do you let me go to her house every day, but I can't go to my best friend's house? And he's like, because your best friend has brothers. And then I told you no brothers and i said why no brothers he just said you're too young i can't talk about it maybe when you're older you'll understand and i was like you can't do that you can't just not let me go and not tell me otter pack thanks for the prime but naturally i became very curious so it got to the point where the begging wouldn't stop Heather would beg my parents, please, 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 can can she please come over? My parents said no so much until finally they gave in because, um, because, what was it? Oh yeah, because Heather's mom was there and she was just like, I'll be watching them the whole time, no worries. So that's when finally they're like, okay, you know, as long, like, you got to make sure you're watching them though. Like, we'll call, we'll call to check in on you. <laughs> so yeah. And, you know, my dad was right, but I also think my dad was the reason that I, I started developing brother complex because I always felt like brothers were mysterious. I always felt like brothers were like the forbidden creature. They were like the unicorns because I never saw older brothers ever. So finally, when I saw older brother in Habitat, I'm like, they're so mysterious. They're so muscular. They're so much bigger. And... They type so fast. Like, I remember being so fascinated by just the way they type on the keyboard. Because they were in high school. They were in high school while I was in fourth grade. I didn't know anything. But they're like... Duh, 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 and I'm like, wow. For me, I'm like... Duh, 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 duh. Like, not, not the fastest typer at all. But, um... <laughs> I just always thought they were, like, mysterious. Um... Did I tell you guys about the, the scammer that... I bought um an ex from oh i don't know if i did but basically it was her brother so heather's brother when i first got into maple story because they showed me um i really wanted nexon cash which is the uh um microtransaction equivalent in their game the currency where you use your real money and you buy nexon cash in order to get like aesthetic things or you know game enhancements whatever I really, really wanted it. So he said, I have a credit card because he's in high school. And I was like, oh, can I please, please, please get an X? And he said, how much do you want? And I said, maybe 15K. So he said, okay, fine. But I'm going to charge you more than $15. And I said, why? He said, because... You are too young to understand this, but this is almost like gambling. It's very bad, and I don't want you to get addicted. And I was just like, why do you say that? And he said, because it's very addicting, and I have seen people spend all their money on, on this type of game. So, as a penalty, 
And as a lesson for you to learn and, and remember is if you want to buy cash from me, I'm going to charge you more money. So if you want 15K, give me $25. And I'm like, $25? Okay. So I, I told myself it was like a one and done deal. So I gave him 25 bucks for 15 bucks. He made a $10 profit off of that. <laughs> Does this family not act on good faith? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, okay, after I tell you this, the, the updated Heather stories, you guys will know. She paid her price. She's fine. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but this is how the rich get rich, I suppose. They were very wealthy. Uh, apparently, like, both brothers ended up taking over companies in Hong Kong. So they're, they're very wealthy. Very, very wealthy now. Anyways. <laughs> so, uh, I got really addicted to games. Um, MapleStore because of them. Bought NX through them. Um, they also showed me we would play um, Naruto Ninja Storm. Super fun. Love, love, loved it. Um, thanks for the sub, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So, um, oh, this is like the boy arc. <laughs> we're playing games together. We're talking every day. We're, we're, we're like pretty much butt buddies at this point. We're, you cannot separate us. Everyone knew that we were the bestest of friends. Thank you so much for the sub, guys. Thank you. But yeah. Um, finally, oh wait, was my, oh, my alert box, was, was it showing this whole time? I'm so sorry. I don't know. It is. Uh oh. Oh, it wasn't. I'm so sorry, guys. Let me, let me try to. There we go. Okay, now the alert should show. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. All the subs. You guys were subbing even not knowing 100% if it would show. Waiting for Heather's karma story. Oh, 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 yeah. Yes, I do know where she is now. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, um, Heather did serve me as a really good friend at this point, though. Like, at this point, she genuinely, like, treated me with all the kindness in the world. And I'm not gonna lie, guys. Classic Leo behavior. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where once they, they're like lions, right? Once they accept you into the pact, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna love you to death. Like their loyalty is undying, which is true. Her loyalty was borderline obsession at this point. And this is, this is true. I did feel very loved. Uh, very, very, very loved. Very loved at this point. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, she became a ride or die for real. She became such a ride or die. I'm a Leo. Yeah, nothing wrong with Leos, by the way. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with Leos. But anyways. Um, yeah. So I felt very loved by her. I I, I genuinely loved her. I love I like she was my best friend. Um we had so many fun moments. Um she would sleep over at my place too. Um yeah. Very, very fun moments. And we would stay up till really late at night just playing Maple Story. Super fun. And then, finally, the boy arc. We started getting crushes on boys. She had a crush on a particular boy. And she never strayed from this one crush. And I've talked about this whole arc before. It's the Three Musketeer arc, guys. Yup, yup. I don't know if you guys remember. I told this story in depth a long time ago. But let's call them the Three Musketeers. The three musketeers because they are the three cutest and most popular by far boys and they can and they are also three besties they were besties since preschool by the way so they they were like they they grew up together forever together even on the soccer team together so um the three musketeers she liked i would say if i if i were to rank them first second and third right by popularity she liked second place me i always liked first place naturally because he was the most competitive and we were always like fighting to be first place with things um yeah anyways 
And to me, he was, like, the cutest. So. But also, not only to me, but to, like, all the girls in school. Every girl had a crush on him. If I... If we brought up his name to any girl, they will know him. They'll roll their eyes, but they'll be like, oh, yeah. Everyone had a crush on him. But anyways. So I did too. So at least we could agree that we liked separate guys. And this is where my evil art comes in. We all play Maple Story, by the way. And then... I remember I was focused on talking with first place. And he was amazing. Yep, yep. He's awesome, he's so fun. We played this game where every single day we would give ourselves or give each other a clue towards who we liked. It was so obvious, painfully obvious that we liked each other. Every day was just one more clue, one more clue. Um, this person is Asian, <laughs> this person is really good at art. This person is really good at math. This person runs really fast. Like it was just so cute and it's so innocent. And this went on for a whole month. <laughs> like it, it just, every day was just, okay now another clue. <laughs> very innocent, very cute. Like we were destined, very cute. And then finally, finally, right before i think it was um summer break right before summer break this was a what was when i was like all right i have to tell him um i have to tell him because i'm about to not see him for all of the summer he goes all right i'm gonna be really honest my parents said that i'm not allowed to date until i'm in college and i said what no boyfriend or girlfriend until college? And then they're like, yeah. So I go, how about if we date in secret? <clears throat> because we do end up telling, oh, we do end up confessing, by the way. We're like, all right, it's time to say it. It's like, no, you say it first. No, you say it first. Went on for an hour. And then finally, I, I think he said it. He's like, okay, well, I clearly like you. And I'm like, well, I clearly like you too. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So he, he, he hits me with the parents' news um, because academically speaking he was number one and he had a lot of pressure to stay number one so unfortunately he hit me with the my parents won't let us date so i was like all right and i kid you not a day later i noticed number two comes up like he logged in on maple story and I was like, you know what? Number one isn't online right now. I might as well talk to number two. This is where it all went wrong. This is where it all hit the fan. Guys, I was boy crazy. I was boy crazy before fourth grade, okay? Like my cousin, one of her most memorable memories was me apparently telling everyone when I was in preschool that I have a husband and I have, and I have a prince somewhere far, far away. Like she, she knew that I was boy crazy even at a young age. I don't remember being like that, but apparently she was like, yeah, you, you, you were telling everyone that you have a husband, that you have boyfriend, that you have prince, like you are, were obsessed with love. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. I believe you. So at this point I was like, sure, I'll talk to this guy. So I'm talking to number two. And it takes me like two days to crack this guy. He was too easy. Literally goes, I like you. <laughs> and I'm just like, I like you too. <laughs> oh. So, um, I then said, but how about Heather? Didn't, I thought you were talking to Heather. And he goes, oh, no, Heather told me that she doesn't like anyone. Heather was the type that thought playing hard to get was better. And she was also very prideful. So unless she knew that he liked her first, she wouldn't admit it. She was also on the Shire end too. 
Well, Heather's loss. But also, shame on me for being a horrible friend. Number three was very, very much available. I did not have to go to, for number two. But I was dumb and young. So I was just like super excited to have a boyfriend at this point. I was like, yes, 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 let's date. Yep. So please tell me Arya collects all three. I'm getting to it, guys. I'm getting to it. <laughs> How long ago was this? This was uh, fourth grade. Fourth, fifth grade. Well, fifth grade at this point. Anyways. Um. Oh, yeah. By the way, guys. Fun fact. I have no idea the concept of cheating. I knew about boyfriend, girlfriend, love, but my love goes as far as disney love i don't know anything else about love i didn't know cheating was a thing i didn't know you could cheat on someone this becomes relevant later anyways so um number two and i start dating and we are ugh, by the way dating in fifth grade literally is just us holding hands um and then us literally scheduling when we kiss and our kisses were never making out it was just like like, you know, like, like, like pecs, you know, like it's very innocent, very super, super, super innocent. Anyways, we're holding hands where it's very obvious that we're dating. Everyone knows all our teachers know our teachers are a little bit disturbed, but also some of them ship us really hard. <sighs> Heather gets a little possessive of our friendship and she is also very hurt. However, like I said, her pridefulness, I asked her, I'm like, hey, are you upset that we're together? And she says, no, because he never liked me. And I was like, are you sure? And she's like, yeah. And also I think number one likes me now. And I'm like, oh really? And he's, she's like, yeah, I think I will talk to number one. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, yeah, and actually number three is kind of cute too. I'll go for any of, uh, like, I, I like, I, I like the others more. You can have her. And I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah, you can have number two. I'll take one and three. So I was like, okay, deal. Um, so the issues came when I started lying to her a little bit. Not lying, but I was more like trying to please everyone at the same time. She was upset that I was calling him over her after school and she wasn't okay with that. So she asked me, she's just like, are you gonna call me after school? And I said, yes, I promise you, I'll call you after school. But number two, his classroom was across from mine. And we had vision of each other. So we would like play hand games and stuff. And one time after Heather, I had promised Heather that I would call her after school. I flirt with number two across the, the classroom. And I said, I do this. <laughs> I mouth call me with the like the whole telephone thing and she saw it and she gets so mad but she held it in and I didn't know that she saw it so after school I still called her but I cut the conversation short and it was abrupt like she could tell because I had already given my boyfriend at the time a time that I would call him so she was like I know where you're going and I go I'm, I'm, I'm busy today. My parents need to use the phone. And she's like, no, you're going to go call number two. And I was like, oh, why do you say that? And that's when she told me that she had saw me send over those signals to him. And I was like, fudge. Damn it. Can't lie out of this one. I didn't do that. <laughs> so this goes on. This goes back and forth. Yep. But then there's some tension that ends up happening. Um. Oh my god, this is this is so. Anyways, so number two and I, we actually date for quite some time. We date until se seventh grade. Um. And. There are points where basically Heather and I are 
still partners with everything, but I can feel the resentment. So I start making friends with other people at this point. And at this point, I caved and I ended up actually hanging out with the queen bees of the school, the white girls. There was the queen bee of the Asian crew, which was me and Heather at the time. But I finally was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hang out with these girls anymore because I can feel the tension with Heather and she's, she was the only person I was interested in being close to. So I decided to jump ships. Yes, the Regina George crew, literally, literally, there was three of them, three of them. And these girls, oh, they were next level crazy. Oh my gosh, during fourth grade, true story, by the way, they made it a thing to love to get hurt or pretend to get hurt to go to the office. I don't know why. They just love cutting class. And they were, they started at such a young age. They'd be like, ow, 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 uh, my, my hand is bleeding. I got paper cuts really, really bad. I gotta go. I gotta go to the office. So they would always go to the office. And this was, and then this other girl was really, really, really like ignorant when it came to like other cultures and stuff. And I remember she would like make a huge scene. And it was like, ev it was like a thing, of sad unfortunately, it was like a meme in our class that every Wednesday, whenever it was sushi day or whatever, we would go watch this girl attempt to eat sushi. And she would just like, eh, eh, like literally act out of her life. Like her, like she was going to die because she licked a piece of rice. Anyways, more of the story with her. She actually ends up loving the cucumber roll. But anyways, anyways, <laughs> Irrelevant, sorry, went on a tangent. I started hanging out with the white girls of our school. And uh, I never really fit in. I pretended to though, because they were rich, I wasn't. They were wearing Lululemon at their age. Like imagine buying your kid $100 yoga pants when they are going to literally have a growth spurt the next month. Like I just don't understand. But they wore Lululemon, they wore TNA, and TNA is like a, a part of Aritzia. So they were wearing like, Shmoney shmoney. Oh, yeah. At elementary school grade. Yeah. As low as third grade. They were already wearing, like, Lululemon at third grade. Um, but they never fit the pants, by the way. They But they wore the Lululemon headbands. Like, that was a super huge trend uh, for the white girls in our school. Was Lul Lululemon headbands. Yep. And I'll never forget oh, my very first Lululemon purchase. I was so proud of myself. I saved up money to buy a singular headband so I could fit in with these girls. And guess what happens? I kid you not, my life is such a meme. I bought this beautiful periwinkle colored Lululemon headband. No, it didn't snap. No, no, no. Worse. Worse. I bought it. And I actually happened to be able to buy it because it was on sale. You see where this is going? Literally the next season comes in and now the newest thing are the thinner headbands and they're slightly more expensive because they're brand new So I come in with this thicker old-fashioned version on sale Lululemon headband and they're looking at me like You didn't get the new ones <laughs> It took me so long to get them and finally I got my hands on the newest Lululemon headbands and they're here just mocking me because I didn't get the thin versions. God damn it. I'll never win. Either way, I wasn't that embarrassed. Like like I said, like I had no shame as a kid. I was just a pathetic loser. But it's fine. Um, did you cut them to be thinner? No, 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 no. The design was clearly different. Um, all good. Back and forth fifth grade, I just want to play Zelda with my friends at school. Oh, fun fact. The reason why... All the boys liked me at school was because I was a closet gamer. I was a closet gamer. It wasn't as cool uh, to talk about being a gamer, but no, I, I, so I never like made it my personality too much until I, uh, I grew up a little bit. But yeah, uh, the boys actually knew that I gamed, and I could like talk to them about it and stuff. But I'm pretty sure that's like one of the one of the reasons why they liked me. But anyways, how did you drop hints? Um. There was a point where I brought my Game Boy to school and I would play Pokemon Emerald and I, I would just like show people how to bury, um, do the bury, 
Berry Blender. And it, but it became a problem when a girl I didn't like asked to play and I didn't want to share it with her because I didn't like her. Um, and then she told on me and then the teacher was like, all right, you're banned from bringing that. And I was like, fudge. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> so back to the story. Um, back to the story. Uh, yeah. So I hang out with the white girls. Only issue though is Queen B likes number two. And she cannot wrap the head, her head around the fact that he likes me and has been dating me. And she, I remember she would always tell me things like, aren't you bored of him? Like, haven't you dated him long enough? Do you think you're going to marry him? We're only in elementary. All like these things. And I was just like, no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. He's cool. He's nice. We talk a lot. Blah, 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 blah. So finally, um, grade seven comes around. And grade seven camp comes around. And she goes, hey, can you please do me a solid? And I don't even know why I gave in. But she was like, I really like number two. And I promise we'll be besties if you give me him. If you break up with him. And I said, what? And she was just like, I'll give you number three. Number three is my boyfriend right now. How about you take number three and I take number two? And I promise we'll be best friends. Guys, I'm weak. I am weak to women and I'm weak to women calling me their best friend. This is, this is a trauma response at this point. It literally husband swap. Yeah. Yeah, we were on, we were on TLC. Yeah, literally husband swap. So I go, okay, but mainly because I just heard the word best friend. I didn't care about number three, but she said best friend. And I was like, you know what? Number three is cute enough. He's actually pretty cute. Yeah, I'll go for it. And she goes, okay. Uh, uh, and to, to be real with you, to make things easier for you, I'll break up with number three first. She breaks up with number three. Number three is very sad. Number three doesn't know why. But she then goes, okay, I'm breaking up with you because I'm gonna be honest, I like number two. But I know that, you know, Arya really likes you and she is actually no longer interested in number two. So I really think you should talk to Angela. I mean, my, okay, sorry. My, my birth name is Angela, by the way. Hello, fun fact. I don't know if you guys know that. But anyways, so yeah. <laughs> so she goes, hey, how about we do a swap seize? And he actually was like, you literally just broke up with me. I don't know how to, I don't, I don't know how to feel right now, but I'll think about it. We're all kids, right? Like this stuff is just, this isn't crazy. Anyways. <laughs> so I break up with number two and it was not easy he was crying he was like why are you doing this to me I really loved you I felt so bad this was like oh oh I am hurting a person <laughs> like I just was so mm, I was definitely, I wasn't a sociopath, but for me, my love life was very Disney. And for me, I didn't think beyond, you know, like fairy tale. I didn't think like, I, I didn't think of, you know, feelings. I didn't think of like, you literally know how Cinderella falls in love with the prince, right? Literally love at first sight type beat. And they don't talk about hardships. They don't talk about um like deep conversations and like, investments in people and feelings I, I i literally all i knew was disney so i didn't know what love was i didn't know about breaking hearts i didn't know about cheating i didn't know about anything all i knew was love equals holding hands and making schedules to kiss and that was it and phone calls where we talk about games like we don't like our love was not like mushy at all and it wasn't deep 
So I had no idea why he was crying over me. I that I was shocked. You guys ever watch Wednesday? In one of the early episodes where the guy's like confessing to her and you can see how uncomfortable she is. She's like, uh, uh, and she even tells the siren, uh, like, I wish I cared more. Literally me. That was me as a kid. I had, I had no idea. It was like, it was fake love for sure. I like the idea of love. Yeah. So he was crying and all. I was so confused. I was like, oh my god like what is going on right now like i just i just wanted to swap boyfriends i don't understand the problem here he gets a new girlfriend like and someone new he gets to try out you know a new car like that's how i thought like <laughs> anyways it took it, it took him a little longer to get over it but we end up swap we end up swapping however grade seven camp comes around and grade seven camp is a privilege not all right so not every student can go only students that can afford it can go and unfortunately um number three um his parents uh didn't allow him to go due to the money so um also another thing because our swapsies happened fairly recent from the grade seven camp days the worst thing possible happened guys Remember when I said some teachers shipped us? Me and number two? Well, they did not get the memo. They did not get the tea while it was piping hot that we made a swapsies. So they assumed that I was still with number two. So they put me and number two in every camp activity. We even had our sleeping bags assigned next to each other. Ew. So... You see where this is going? <sighs> you see where this is going? Naturally, I had to spend so much time with number two. And number two was still heads over heels over me. I We had, like, we were sitting next to each other on the bus. And I remember, I remember, Queen Bee was not having it. But either way, doesn't matter at this point. I told her, it's fine. Because number three is madly in love with me, by the way, guys. I remember... I remember getting him a soccer ball mm -hmm. because I think it, um, I don't remember why I got it. It was either an anniversary or something. I don't know. Maybe our one month or something or our, I, or, I don't know. I, I remember getting him a soccer ball, a mini one. And then he gave me a card, a love letter. Very sweet boy. Very sweet boy. He explains that he cannot go to the trip. He really wishes that he could. And, um, he, he'll miss me and all that. Very, very, very sweet. So, I told that to Queen Bee and I said, you know, there is no way that all, like, anything will happen because number three is so in love with me. Blah, 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 blah. On the bus, number two confesses and was like, Basically saying, I don't like Queen Bee. She's not you. I only like you. Blah, 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 blah. Please don't do this to me. Can we please get back together? This is just like, I I love you so much. And I'm like, ah. well, I'm with number three now. You know this. And he goes, no, I know you're with him. But like, don't you love me? I can tell you still love me. Blah, 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 all these things. All this crazy talk. And I'm just like, ah, oh, this is just, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know what to tell you. Like, I just... I just don't want to hurt anyone. And he's like, but you're hurting me. And I'm like, okay, but um, I already am with number three, you know, and you have queen B. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was just like, okay, you know, how about, how about we just be very, very good friends and we just start talking again? He is like, okay, I'd like that. And I, and I was like, yeah, maybe in the future, if number three and I don't work out, maybe we'll get back together. That's, that's what I told him. But, of course, because we are paired up in every activity, and unfortunately, Queen Bee is so far away from us. Like, completely different groups. I did everything with number two. And... We all have moments we are not proud of. We all have moments where we look back and we're like, ah, we were a bad person. This was the moment. 
weakest. It was the first night together. Our very first night being together. The air, it was romantic. We were in sleeping bags, all huddled up, facing each other. Hi, Aria. It was just a perfect moment. Deo, damn, D colon, D colon. I committed adultery. Die, Dariusaki. Grade seven, cheated for the first time. <laughs> for the streets, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was for the streets, mm-hmm. Very much so, for the streets. <laughs> you harlot? <laughs> Scandalous, mm -hmm. Join the champions club, no. <sighs> uh... <laughs> How could this happen to me? Anyways. Anyways, we shared a kiss, and I had no idea. Like, I literally, like I said, I had no idea what cheating was. I It wasn't in my vocabulary or understanding of relationships at all. So, to me, what I thought was, hmm, we're just sharing a moment. But, once grade 7 camp ends, life will go back to normal, and we will never speak of this again. Like, that's how, that's literally how I saw it. Uh, unfortunately, he did not see it that way. Because the bus ride back, he's like crying all over again. And I'm like, why are you crying now? And he goes, you know, we shared so many moments. We hung out the entire camp. Do you still not love me? And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I have number three to get back to. And you have Queen B. Like, this is not going to work out. Like, I, we have to, we can't hurt other people. Like, I was so evil. Like, I, I, but I didn't know any better, you know? And he's just like, cause for me, I thought I was just giving him the time of his life and like, like, like a fever dream, you know? And just let it, let it be that. I didn't even think it was a mean thing. I genuinely, in that point in time, I genuinely was a people pleaser to a fault and I couldn't say no to anyone except him because I think he was just so in love with me that I felt like okay you have so much love for me I need to give love to other people like that's how I thought I, I was just a people pleaser and then um Queen Bee found out <laughs> he told everything to Queen Bee he couldn't fake it anymore so he broke up with her and he was like I'm in love with Arya. I'm sorry. I cannot date you. This isn't fair. Um, I kissed her at camp. Blah, 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 blah. And when she heard, it was like a hit to her pride and she was not having it. So she... She also went to preschool and grew up with the Three Musketeers. So they are very close to her. She invited them over to her house, okay? All three of them. And she told them everything. She made them have an entire, pretty much, it was like a support group for being hurt by me. <laughs> Number one, two, and three. Yep. They were so appalled. They were so angry. Oh, but you think she went... She, You think that's all she did? Oh, no, 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 no. This girl was like, you cross me, I'm gonna make sure you feel the burn. You thought I was vengeful with my parents and the Wi-Fi password? She calls me and puts me on speaker without knowing that she made them quiet in the back. I did not know that they were at, over at her house. She calls me and she pretends to be all good with me, no issues. I had, I had no idea at this point that they, they knew everything that happened during grade seven camp. So she goes, 
you know how we swap sees and basically just like laid it out you know the the proof that we did agree on this like backdoor swapping and which discussed in number one obviously she goes i want to ask you something because it's going to be summertime and i'm not going to go to the same high school as you guys and i'm going to miss you guys and it's going to be it's going to be really sad and i just want to know something and i said what do you want to know she goes out of one two and three who do you really like? Like, if you could date any of them, who would you genuinely date? I didn't know they were there, guys. I didn't know. So I said, number one. <laughs> I'm like, no. <gasps> my god this point number two and number three are hysterical laughing in the back and i heard them immediately my heart sank and i said the first thing that i thought was by chance number one are you there too and he goes um yes And then it was just like a movie, guys. It was just like a movie. I profusely apologize. But they're all laughing. I can hear they're like jumping on her bed. They're just being silly. They're being monkeys. They're like, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We don't want to talk to you. Like, it's just really stupid, annoying boy stuff. And then the last day of school. I'll never forget it. The sun was like peering in, the warmth on our skins. He looked so cute. Number one was standing right in front of me. And we were uh, after school uh, art buddies. Um, we had to clean up after the art class. It was like a, it was like chores pretty much. And the very last week of school was our, our week. So we were cleaning up the art class and it was like a scene from a Japanese anime. Literally, boy and girl looking at each other. And I go, it's the last day of school. And he goes, mm hmm And I go, I meant what I said. Like, I, I feel really bad for dating people I didn't truly like. And I feel like in all of this, it just made me realize that I only and always did have eyes for you. And he goes, you know, at one point, I really liked you too. I liked you a lot. But you knew that I wasn't allowed to date. And I don't think I could ever date you, even if I'm in college, because you hurt my be my two bestest friends so bad. You hurt all my friends. I don't think I could like you anymore. And that was like <sighs> the biggest heartbreak of my life. Number one, real homie, W, a real uh, like a, a, a real bro. <laughs> I got, I got burned. I got burned, dragged through the mud. I, um, I literally got ran over and he put, he put the car back in reverse. All right. I got er, over me. I was dead. It was so bad. My heartbreak was unlike any other heartbreak. Anyways, he does become even very popular in high school as well. Except he was uh, in a, a more like gifted program, accelerated program as well. But apparently uh, he his social, I, I guess because he 
he wasn't a uh, girl crazy or anything or he never got to experience that because his parents gate kept him for that uh, he was very awkward with women so i heard grapevine apparently senior year a girl asked him to to prom or something and apparently he ran away like what kind of response is that <laughs> he literally he literally ran <laughs> so w person turned awkward for sure w again <laughs> he just like me for real he don't miss wait you guys claim that the poor girl no not w l l l we should all be seeing l's uh at that point you should be mature enough to say no <laughs> sigma fail what the fudge you hurt him no 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 no. sorry guys i'm talking about senior year and a different girl i'm not talking about me i'm talking about a random girl that was nice to him that they were probably friends women are scary oh god yeah no he literally sigma male i'm getting subs for this <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the subs guys thanks for the subs <laughs> this is so troll he's focused on the bag oh god oh god Jimikyo, thank you so much for your gifting subs good thanks guys thank you so much for the sub you guys are hella troll i can't believe you guys are <laughs> gifting subs <laughs> anyways <sighs> so let's um do we talk about high school phase? I feel like high school, high school Aria was probably the least I talked about. Maxwell Stonewall, thank you so much for gifting five subs. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. I feel like I need to like stand up and like bow now. That was like a that was a that was a solid elementary school arc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ceramics, true. I did talk about ceramics. That was high school. That was high school. Really? Next chapter, please. Okay. Next chapter, but just like your favorite webtoon, just like your favorite manga, go ahead and give me them coins because microtransaction in order to unlock the new chapters. Yeah, I gotta sub. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. But anyways, yeah, don't worry. I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys a story. I'll tell you guys. We have a this 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 was a good day. This was a good this was a good day for me to to unleash uh the history. Oh, what happened to Heather though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you guys. I got you guys. Um, fun fact: <clears throat> Heather ends up getting into fashion design, and she uh, ends up admitting to me that um oh, well, a couple things. Sorry, I skipped a couple of chapters. <laughs> Um, Heather ends up transferring schools because Heather is actually a secret genius and she also belonged in the same program as her best friend before, but she was joining her a little later. She joined her in high school. So they both ended up going to the same accelerated program. Um, so she left our high school in order to go to the gifted accelerated year program. But because of that, she became way too overstressed with schoolwork that she began flunking all her grades and ever since she started flunking her grades um she also had a period where she hated the world so she cut off all her hair and she everyone thought she kind of like was swinging it the other way but no she she, she never dated any woman or anything she just really wanted to def like defy her parents pretty much so she became like just super crazy and um also lost she, she was the probably the one of the first friends i knew about that lost her virginity pretty early um but i didn't really know much of that like i said i didn't know about sex being recreational until 10th grade so i had no idea about all that until she told me her life story how do i know well we do reconnect the craziest thing ever and this is why i said karma really hit her When you spend so much, um, when you spend so many of your years just actively bullying someone, you end up forgetting, oh, not only do you bully people, but you also get your way with friendship because you are, you were lucky enough to find a person that was, that had no self-respect for them. 
uh, for themselves, aka me, because anything she said would go, she did not develop the best social skills. So, with that said, um, one day, 20, 2000, I was a streamer already at this point, but this was when I was still living, there was a small period of time where I quit my esports job and I started living with my parents in the mobile home. And I don't know if you guys remember, there was like some, like that stream in the, my yellow room. Ad? Okay, 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 fine, I'll wait. I'll wait for the ad, people. Hold on, I need to type in the chat. Do you have a custom keyboard? Um, I have a high ground keyboard. Not sponsored, but they are very kind and um, uh, yeah, they're very, very nice people. Have you told any of your friends any of this? Um, I'm pretty sure they know a little bit. Maybe they know the gist of like me being very popular and me having trauma with girl friendships. <laughs> get your water bottles filled. Oh yeah, true. I should, get, I should get water. Thank you for the reminder. Hello, I'm back. Dried shampoo my bangs.
Okay. Male lurking. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I feel like I need to touch up. I look a little. What is this? I'm. My makeup is melting. Let me touch up. Um. So. I appreciate you guys' uh, such sweet, kind words and support towards this storytelling, but uh, I'll have you guys know this is not my regular content. I don't normally do this. It's like I'll... Uh, I think I, I talk about this story probably once a year, Max. So you're lucky this time around. Because I know for a fact, I know for a fact, some of these people that actually recognize the story that I'm talking about um, know of my stream. And uh, Vancouver is a very small place, so it's not unlikely that they may hear me talk about this. <laughs> not like I care now, but at the same time, it's like, it might be awkward. I don't want to step on anyone's toes. But then again, we're all in elementary school. We're all kind of dumb. It's all good. It's all in good. Yeah, no harm, exactly. Statue of limitations. <laughs> true it's like we're so far removed too also um i'll never i'll never truly know how they'll perceive things because um um sad fact um one of the girls that i really uh like liked um uh, friends wise in high school uh we ended up like reconnecting and um she's from vancouver and i remember a long time ago when i was storytelling about her i told you guys that i really appreciated hanging out with her um and i told you guys to go to her instagram and comment like aria sent me here you're beautiful or like something something kind right Apparently, I don't think she appreciated that very much. You did? Yeah, a long time ago. It was, it was, it was a very harmless thing. No, it wasn't dangerous. I think it was just more so like she wasn't expecting it and maybe she doesn't really like the attention of like fan bases that's not her own. Like I had good intentions, but maybe she didn't appreciate it the way I thought. I meant like I didn't want her to like feel gratitude towards it or or anything, but I think she took it the wrong way. She probably prefers her privacy. Oh, that's not true. She's a she's a model. <laughs> she's not a streamer, but she is a model. Um, but I think like for her pro portfolio, she is like a like a um uh, like a classy model too. So I think like she didn't appreciate the whole bombarding thing. Like it it wasn't her tea. She's like the type of person that like, you know, when they make their Instagram, like all the same kind of colors and tones and like, like she makes sure like the edges are perfect. Like she's that type of person. So I don't think she appreciated the crowd that was just meant to say hi, really. Anyways, but because of that reaction, she like unfollowed me and blah, 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 blah. And yeah. <laughs> so after that, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't involve um my people in the past if they don't want to be involved or if i don't tell them beforehand so that's why i give you guys fake names and even though it's been a long time a part of me still feels like okay what if they are watching this right now and take it the wrong way so anyways so high school and what happens to heather um yeah i told you guys she went on her like kind of her britney arc not gonna lie and um becomes really rebellious um and she ends up becoming a a little bit of a gold digger and um to her it was actually very natural um it's actually not like the worst thing in the world to be a gold digger because um she herself is at this point very aware that her her family comes from wealth 
so for her to have uh, a boyfriend that's also wealthy it's it's not like it's not a bad thing right um it's almost as if like they prefer each other um it was very common actually for Chinese guys um, in Vancouver to prefer higher maintenance girls, uh, Chinese girls. So yeah, she, <laughs> so the reason why I know all of this, um, I was already a streamer at this point and this was when I was staying at my parents' mobile home and then randomly I get a DM Again, random blue moon once in a while, I'll check my Instagram DMs. And I see a DM from her. And when I saw her name, I was like, no. What? I haven't heard this name for like 10 years. What? Why now? So I open up the DM. And she is spam calling me like crazy and then she's like please it's an emergency if you cared about me and like please pick up please call me right now and she even inserts her number which is a vancouver area code she this girl is not lying and i checked her account it's definitely it's definitely heather so i'm like oh my god what business does heather have with me by the way this was like at two three in the morning Three in the mother freaking goddamn morning, okay? And guess what happens? Guess what happens? She threatens her life. I know. Nice to see you too, Heather. But she basically goes, she goes, Hey, this is an emergency because I called her, right? I'm like, hey, what's up? She's like, oh my God, it's so nice to hear your voice again. And then I can hear like in her voice, she's like kind of fake crying a little. But I'm just like, it's nice. It's nice to hear you too. What's going on though? This sounds crazy. And it's three in the morning. She goes, oh my God, I knew I can count on you. But this is a like a life or death emergency. And I'm like, what is it? She goes, I can't tell you right now. It's really bad though. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, and I have nowhere to go. And I'm like, huh? And she's like, I'm in LA and I have nowhere to go. And I'm like, what? And she's just like, you need to pick me up now. And I need to stay at your house. And I was like, girl. And I even told her my situation. I'm like, I'm not, I'm, my parents are still not rich. You know, like you are used to, you know, three story house. I live in a mobile home. Like, are you going to judge me? What's going on? And she's like, no, I, I never cared. I love your parents. It's fine. Like, I need to come over right now. Please save me. So when I hear that, I'm just like, oh my God, like, I'm so tired. I, I'm, I'm about to go to bed. You know, I literally had to open the fridge and chug on a coffee just so I could like make it out, you know, because I was like, I'm not, I'm going to fall asleep on the road. She was in freaking LA and I lived in Orange County. That's like a 45 to one hour drive. It was so awful, but I did it because this girl be saying, I'm going to die. And I'm like, oh. And she even was like gatekeeping she the information she would not tell me because she's like I can't I literally can't talk right now like they're listening they're listening and I'm like oh my god and I even said I'm like am I gonna die do I need to bring like a knife like what's going on and she's just like no 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 you don't need to bring anything but I'll tell you all the information in the car and I'm like okay yeah I actually did it by the way anyways. So, I drive an hour for this girl. I pick her up, and she has a luggage. And she's coming from this really, really big mansion. Gated mansion. Of course, right? Jesus. And I've, like, never seen a gate like that. I was like, what the frick is this? And she goes, oh my god, I'll tell you everything in the car. So... 
Oh my gosh. And the way she was dressed too was like so unlike I've ever seen. She was wearing a leopard print tank top with no bra. And it was very low cut and loose. So every time she like moved or something like or like reached down to grab something like full blown nipples showing like it was she she was just very risque. And I was like, whoa, like, all right, the way she's dressed kind of looks like kind of looks, uh, looks a little wild. But anyways, I take her to my place. We sneak in, but my dad's awake and my dad's like, oh my God, Heather, is that you? And she's like, oh my God, so nice to see you. Like, and he's like, why are you here? And then she, he saw her luggage and he's just, she's like, he's like, are you visiting? Like, Aria didn't tell me and I'm just like yeah I didn't tell you because I didn't know <laughs> but I didn't say that obviously I was just like oh yeah dad is okay she stays here for a night because I literally look at her I'm like for a night and she's like you know because I'm not I'm not gonna house this girl that like I have trauma with but not only that like she served me nothing but also she it was very stressful for me to like I feel I felt a little blackmailed or I felt a little threatened straight up she's like if you don't save me I'll die like you know I'm like oh. so I was I, I'm not gonna lie I wasn't like the most welcoming guest at, at first but my dad's like of course she can stay for her as long as she wants and I'm like <laughs> thanks uh, you're so kind anyways she sits down in my room and she starts venting to me about all these crazy things oh add again okay okay Did I bring a water? I thought I... Okay, do you remember me bringing back a water? Maybe not. Why are you so cute with... Such a small face? See Autumn Dew. Oh, my stomach. You didn't bring water. Oh, okay. I probably got distracted. I go bring water. two water bottles that I left out bro I yeah I have two chairs here this is true anyways uh so okay Guys, I can't, um, I don't know how uh, I I don't I, I don't know how frequent these ads are, but uh, if they're really frequent, I highly recommend you do something about it. And uh, I'm not suggesting you sub to my channel, but there are other methods out there that uh, will help you get through these ads. Just saying. But anyways, so I asked her to tell me everything, and she basically goes, "I got kicked out." So that's why I felt like, "Wow, life really did that to you, huh?" Where now you're the one begging to be in friend groups and nobody wants you, essentially. Because she was telling me the story, but I'm not going to lie. I can, I, can, I can see through everything that she's saying. I know exactly how it truly went down because I know the way she responds to certain things. So I knew that she was giving me a very fluffy, like, you know, bedazzled version that uh, played more into kind of her side of things even though I did say you know your feelings are valid um that sounds really frustrating but oh all, all in all I knew the general census was that she was being very judgmental and really bad vibes and the girls just weren't having it um and let me tell you why because this, this story is pretty freaking juicy 
Um, no, not kicked out of her parents. No, 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 no. Uh, kicked out of her. Oh, so she was going on a girl's trip to L.A. And she basically got kicked out. It was a it was a group of like eight girls or something. It was a lot. It was a big, big, big group. That's why they rented out a whole mansion. Anyways. They had drama because they don't like her vibes. And they basically kicked her out. Um, the girls at the Airbnb pretty much were like, we don't rock with you. We think you're a loser. You need to leave. <laughs> but the reasoning for it, wait till you find out the reasoning. Turns out they had been clubbing that night. And Heather is, she's on a very high horse, guys. And remember, guys, that this is, like, she's only dated men that were, that had money and men that would treat her like you know her their princess so she was used to a certain treatment so she didn't know that the girl because also they were like online friends too like it was a mix of like vancouver girls and um american girls so yeah so the general consensus was that there were more americans than canadians or at least vancouverites because the the three girls were from Vancouver. But the other two girls agreed to split and pay for a table in the club. And I don't know if you guys know, but basically, like, club tables can cost, you know, a couple thousand dollars even. Um, but it basically ensures you that uh, you, you get your own space um, in, in the clubs. So they all split up um, pretty much like a couple hundred dollars. Uh, for an entire table now Heather was not having it Heather was like no I am a woman and the way it works for us is that we don't have to pay the men have to pay because I think there were some guys that they met up with at the club and she was like no I'm not paying for this like and she refused to pay and she has the money to pay she just refused to and I remember the way she was explaining me the story she was like she was trying to explain like the ethics and the code and like and how the girls are like you know they don't have any like they don't have any self-respect and like like basically painting it out to kind of like say that they're the crazy ones and that they're giving into like this whole like fairness thing that is like not supposed to be a thing she's just like no men are always supposed to pay and then i was just like i understand why you feel the way you do but if the majority of them, you know, are, you know, like you say, the American way and your other Canadian girls are agreeing with it too, like you're literally the only one that thinks this, I can understand as well why they kicked you out because you're not complying and you're overall kind of just, you know, being difficult. And she's like, she's like, yeah, I get it, but it's still like out of line. Like they shouldn't have kicked me out because I... I paid for the trip too, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, clearly if they agree to kick you out, I'm sure they will also agree to pay for your portion or at least like give your money back. And then she's like, I know, but like, I can't believe these girls are so weak minded and all these things, just talking mad, like smack. And I'm just like, oh God, I can't believe I'm this is like 5 a.m. and I'm spending my freaking like, like hours of sleep doing this, listening to this crazy person. <laughs> So I'm just like, okay, okay, okay. I, I literally, at this point, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at this point, I just want her to like be done with it. Um, but oh my God, even crazier things happen, guys. <laughs> you think that was all? This is like a mini arc. So not only did she, was she not like down to pay the bill and blah, 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 blah. But she was dealing with a very, very toxic relationship. So toxic. Toxic to the point where I'm like, are you for real? Is you for real? Her boyfriend bugged her phone and she had no idea until I found out for her. Ridiculous. <sighs> because when I text her, Obviously, he doesn't recognize my number. So immediately, 
he's texting her all these crazy things calling her all these crazy things suggesting that she's already cheating on him like super super crazy and then she's like, no. And he's like, whose house are you going to then? And she's like, how do you know about that? Like, she's, she's, I'm not going to lie. Like, Heather was smart in middle school. But low-key, her brain peaked there. Because how do you not know that this dude bugged your phone at this point? Because then when I finally, when she's like venting to me about him and how crazy he is and all of these things, I'm like, have you ever thought of the idea that he bugged your phone and then it like clicked and she was like wait a minute what that makes so much sense one time he did this one time that and then like another 10 stories pops out and i'm just here like i want to sleep but she's just basically giving me more examples of how he miraculously knew of things when she never told him anything someone's behind you yeah my cat cutest little baby in the world Hello, Tika. Anyways. So, she tells me, I tell her, and then she's like, all right, we, we need to figure this out. We need to try to, like, figure out what's in my phone or how I can remove it, blah, 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 blah. Well, turns out, it's one of those things where you kind of just have to, like, go to a professional and get it, get it dealt with. But the way I was able to find out was um, I made a call. And the thing is, when I, you know how you hear like the numbers beeping or something like that? I heard like another beep, like a longer beep. And it was really weird. And then when I found out or when we both heard it, we just kept on doing it again. We would call other numbers to see like if the beep was always there and it was always there. And I think it was suggesting that it was being recorded. So that was our way of finding out. And... So even though we were trying to have a good day, <laughs> the funniest thing is I vlogged this. Anyone that is an OG Arya like vlog watcher, back in the day when I used to upload vlogs, I did up I, there. There was an episode with her because I wanted to show her around because I had nothing else to do. And she was like, "Please, can you make my trip better? Can you at least show me around?" So I was like, "Okay, sure." So we went out, and um. The outing ended up the entire thing, even though we were in a beautiful place. Yeah, of course I have it. Yeah, I, I mean, the video is just private. It, it's not, she's not like, she doesn't phase me in a bad way anymore. It, it's more so like pitiful at this point and a little bit of waste of my time. But anyways, we all grow to set boundaries later on, you know, in life. Anyways, so I'm trying to like have a good time with her. I take her to... The Anaheim packing district and I'm like hey look like this is a really hipster food spot and the whole time she's just like that's cool but you can tell like her mind is just thinking about her toxic ex or sorry toxic boyfriend so the whole time we're just trying to decipher the stuff and then the whole time she ends up fighting with him because she like calls him out even though I told her I'm like please I really suggest you guys talk it out when you go back back to Vancouver because I'm not trying to like get caught in between you know the fire I just want you guys to like deal with it like I'm trying to have a good time right now and she's like but it's on my mind it weighs me heavy I can't believe he did this so unfortunately I had to sit through all of that they're screaming at each other and he's basically denying everything until she threatened to go to the police so when she threatened to go to the police, she was like lying. She was saying like, oh yeah, you know, they can like look through the phone and that's when they'll find the files or they'll find anything that you used to download and hack my phone with, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when he admitted it. He's like, all right, don't, don't go to the cops, blah, blah, blah. It was because, I, and then he brought up apparently something petty and it was like suggestive that maybe she cheated. I don't even know. It was just crazy talk. It was so crazy. It was like a huge waste of my time. And it was just it was just crazy and I remember like months passed after that and I visited Vancouver and I actually bumped into her at the Richmond night market and she was like oh my god she was so happy to see me even though I was like oh my god it's her it's Heather and she was still with that boy like I thought they would break up by now but they're still together she introduced me to him and I'm like oh hell no like he looks 
so sus, guys. Like he's just he just he just looks really really sus. Like unkempt, like and all like you could tell like everything about him, like his skin, like facial features, everything about him didn't seem like tidy, but his clothes were expensive and that was it. And you know when they smile and their like teeth are really yellow too, like guys like hygiene is 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 really important. And you can tell like this guy is just a little crusty. But because I knew how toxic he was, I did see him with like, like poop tinted glasses. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna lie. When I saw him, I was like, Ugh. and I looked at her. And I was like, like she knew my vibes, and she knew that I was like, why the are you still with this guy? Because I remember too. You know, there are times where I feel like I have given so many hours to people trying to talk them out of their toxic relationships. But at the end of the day, you have to understand, like, people have to experience that toxic relationship. They really do. Because you're so blinded by love. You don't know, like, that it's so bad for you until you decide that it's bad for you and get out of get out of it yourself. Or they cut the ties first miraculously for you and you realize later. Either way, it is a self-realization journey. I realize no amount of time I invest in anyone will make it realize it for them so that's what i learned but yeah i'm not envious of that lifestyle at all she used to brag to me too how he would give her a two thousand dollar um two thousand dollar uh allowance and she did i think she wanted to 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 increase the price or something and i was just like two thousand is a lot for like free spending and 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 money that you don't have to don't you don't have to work for like for free and your living situation is free like god damn that that's that sounds really nice but she was like no i want more that's too cheap so he had that going <laughs> yeah One thing though is I definitely do feel sorry for her. She admitted a lot of things that night. Like I remember she told me how she was envious of me, how she just wished she was like talented as me. And that's why I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I get triggered by the word talented sometimes because I'm just like, I'm not going to lie. I have been shunned by girls because of this talented excuse before. It's come back to bite me in the butt all the time they always say because you're so talented i wish i was talented as you and it gives me vibes that like where they i don't know it just doesn't give me the vibe that they will support me even though i can be talented or i'm off doing my own thing i just don't feel supported and i always feel like i'm going to be ditched oh I'm like oh great here it happens again going to be ditched and what's the reason oh it's obviously every situation is different but um most definitely in this case she this case she was envious and she said yeah i just wanted to be more like you where i was talented with everything and i got all the guys and i'm like oh, this is such a lame excuse <laughs> like i hate hearing this but yeah I got raided. Thanks for the raid. I don't have my alerts up right now. I should I should put them back up. Uh, oh, Tasha, thank you so much for the raid. Thank you. We are currently on a uh, journey of my uh, past. My past in school. Yeah, I'm in oversharing mode. Yeah, I'm in oversharing mode. However, it is like it is a story about my my childhood essentially. So, um, it's all about people you guys don't really know, but also the story can be very relatable. You know, having friends that are having friends that are envious or choosing boys over girls or you know betraying your friends or I think. I feel like the, the sentiment is there. 
and a little insight to how I grew up and now you guys know about my traumas and my difficulty um, um, keeping friendships because I never had friendships for very long. I always moved a lot and um, the friendships I had were not sustainable because I was always um, slaving away <laughs> in these friendships and I didn't know it. But it did make me me. This is true. It did make me me. Cat might be dead. Kisa. Un unfortunately, people keep on thinking you're dead. Cat not dead. Sorry, sister. It's not working very well. People keep on thinking you're dead, though. He's not dead. <laughs> but anyways, thank you again, Tasha, for the raid. Appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your community with me. Tango, tango. So, high school. Oh, my lordy. Oof. Yeah, I feel like I don't. I don't. I don't think Brian cares. Anyways, I've I've talked about Brian's arc before. Yes, it is true. There is a person that I play with all the time. I play games with all the time. His name is Brian, and he's one of my closest friends now that I still like talk to from Vancouver. But we uh, dated for a month. I knew him because, mm, in eighth grade, uh, was it eighth grade. No, it was seventh grade. I knew of him in seventh grade because he went to a sister school. And there was a park that his um his elementary school and my elementary school shared. Um it was called Bobble Ink Park. <laughs> Bobble Ink, yep. So every Friday, um our teacher would uh have us go to Bobble Ink if we were good. Um and sometimes students from his school would be there already too so it was like it felt like two schools kind of getting to know each other but also when we played sports because i joined a lot of sports teams in elementary school we would go over to their schools and i always had an eye on him i had a, i had like a little crush on him because i was like oh he's like super cute and he's super good at basketball um so i always had a crush on him but he had a girlfriend at the time um yeah, and this was 7th grade. And then 8th grade was high school, and we ended up going to the same high school. And then we ended up going, we also both joined the badminton team. So I was seeing him ba during badminton practice, and um, but we started dating a month because at the end of summer, I think, um, or the beginning of summer, I found out his email, and uh, we started we started chatting MSN <laughs> and then we went on a date uh, at Metro Town. We met up to watch a movie and he remembers so many details that I didn't remember but he told me recently. Um, apparently I was really late. <laughs> apparently it was our first date and I showed up super late and he was already like, Ugh, don't like this. <laughs> Hate that. Like we were already like not very compatible but uh, yeah, I was late. He wasn't having it. And I remember being late because I just didn't know what to wear. Simple as that. And then, so he, hi Mio. Um, yeah, so we go on a date. But anyways, we end up dating for a month. And <laughs> the reason why we broke up, mm, very messy breakup, super messy. Actually, we're about to get real <laughs> messy. Okay. Um... Is he a water sign? No, he's he's a Capricorn, actually. But anyways, um, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's this girl, okay? And she was actually from my elementary school, but I never really talked to her because she was, like, super rebellious kid. She was more like a skater girl, like... I remember she was like smoking cigarettes at a really young age. Like she was a she was a delinquent. So I, I I never really got close to her. But for some reason, we had multiple classes together. And so we decided to talk 
and all of that. And she was like, hey, are you dating Brian? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, I actually have a couple classes with him. And she's like, wow, like, good job. He's, like, really cute. And she's, like, just saying all these, like, really uncomfortable things. And I'm like, uh, thanks. And then she gets to the point where we do become close. We end up being, like, running buddies in PE. And she was like, you know, tell me about your guys' relationship. Pretty much just, like, getting out so much information. And I just end up telling her because I don't think there's anything wrong. And she's like, oh, okay. And even, like, even, even, like, small issues I'll tell her. And she's like, oh, I see. And then at some point, she started telling me things that were kind of like as if Brian responded or Brian's side of things. And I was like angry because I'm like, first of all, that's, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. So I would, I would argue back. And essentially, long story short, she was getting information from me so that she could tell Brian in her other class and then get information from Brian and then tell me. So she was going back and forth to homewreck us, essentially, because she had a crush on him. But it did get bad. It did get bad because obviously, like, it was my first high school relationship. It was one of those things where it's like, oh my god, we are not going to communicate properly here. We're all, like, communication is one of the hardest things to learn. Like, communication you hear all the time is everything. But also active listening, everything. We're not going to do any of that in like in that year of high school. So obviously we we got we misinterpreted everything, and the stories were all spun in like you know this other girl's voice, and she embellished things that were complete like lies, um, and made us hate each other, and we ended up breaking up through her. <laughs> So the breakup was really messy though because it was one of those things where like my pride kind of got the best of me and it was my very first like prideful breakup where I was just like, oh, you broke up with me? No, I'm breaking up with you. And because he also was like, I don't care anymore. Let's just let it be done. I don't know why, but in like at the moment I was just like, oh no, like I've never not want a guy in my life you know like I always pick and choose like the right men I always get what I want essentially kind of what was going through my brain not exactly those words but definitely I was just like it was a foreign feeling to me to finally not be wanted in that kind of way so I was like okay uh all of a sudden I kind of want you back and he's like no it's not gonna work out and I was just like no, please. This, we can't break up. We can't. We can't let her win. And he's just like, no, I just don't think we're compatible. I just don't like you anymore. He, he was just like, and then this was like the first time where I experienced like super embarrassment with like my pride. And it was the first time I ever begged for a relationship, essentially. I remember class, <sighs> Class was it like a being, what was the word? We were in rotation to go to our next block. And I remember falling to my knees. It was the most embarrassing, embarrassing thing. But oh my gosh, it's one of those things where it's kind of laughable now. And I am so glad that I got all that dramaticness, all that embarrassment out of the way at a young age. I cheated in seventh grade. I begged for a boy eighth grade you know like I mm, I a hundred percent got all of that out of the way <laughs> was it because you loved him no um or just because of your pride it was a hundred and ten percent my pride a hundred and ten like two hundred percent we were not attracted to each other we did we were not compatible as as lovers but but my pride was like oh yeah I can't handle that. <laughs> so 
Yeah, but you think that's all that happened with that relationship? Oh, hell no. Brian and I have such a crazy history, actually. So, after that crazy fiasco, obviously it doesn't work out. But, but, both of us are kind of on rampage mode. We both are talking mad sh about each other. And it gets to the point where Brian makes a joke that he wants to beat me up. Uh, he he was like, yeah, I yeah, I mean, if she's still talking shit, I can just get people to jump her. And he said that. So when Grapevine got back to me, I was super super upset. Mm hmm. And I I end up telling a person. I end up t cause like um I was sitting next to this guy and he he's a pretty cool dude. Like he's he he's a really popular dude too, and he's really cool. And he noticed that I was just like, I look really sad. So he asked me, what's up? And I told him. I'm like, yeah, so Brian's going around telling people he, he like wants to get me jumped and stuff. And he wants to beat me up. And when that guy heard, he's like, are you kidding me? A man wants to touch a woman like that? Or he wants to hurt you like that? He is such a wimp. Blah, 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 blah. How about I go like talk to him and see how he likes that? Because this guy is like super like tough guy, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes out of his way, talks, talks to Brian, and he basically is like, why would you threaten to beat her up? What the hell is wrong with you? And Brian, I kid you not, I, I hate him so much for this because he basically single-handedly made me so hated. Um by a quarter of the school anyways brian tells him what the hell chill out man it was just a joke basically essentially making me look like some crazy dramatic liar also like exaggerated or whatever but to me it wasn't a joke you know i wasn't told that it was a joke and yeah just a prank bro so obviously the guy got really pissed he came back to me and was just like you know you really shouldn't be making a big deal out of things when you, you know you guys should just talk to each other because i confronted him and he said it was just a joke like if it was just a joke like it's not really something you should take seriously blah, blah, blah. and i'm like but i genuinely didn't think it was a joke and he's just like well they're just saying you're being dramatic so i'm not gonna lie like i know these people more than you do more sorry i know these people more than i know you i'm just not gonna i'm just not gonna i'm just not gonna be involved anymore and after that pretty much all of the alumni of his elementary school and the cool guys elementary school both of them all of them hated me or felt like i was really like crazy girl vibes or or horrible like horrible girl that gets herself in a relationship and uh, can't handle herself vibes like you know what i mean like tr problematic yep do you think any of them can be in the chat right now probably maybe possibly i don't care though <laughs> it's fine it was high school um but then the thing is um the funny thing is he ends up reaching out to me because later on he finds out that I started streaming League and apparently it was like one of his favorite games at the time. And that's when he reached out and was like, oh my god, you play League? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> the like, boy that single-handedly made like a quarter of my entire grade hate me? Ew. But nah, we talked it out. We squashed it. We both apologized. We he was he was like we were all young and dumb. Bra, 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 bra. Do you want to, do you want people to play league with? And I was like, yes, I do. I would love some more friends that play league. And now we're really close. <laughs> yeah. Now we're very close. We're chill now. <laughs> No, it's not clout chasing. I actually hate that word. I hate the 
the whole clout chasing um trend i actually don't believe in clout chasing here's my explanation with how i feel about clout chasing i think that people are meant to chase their dreams people are meant to live their best life okay and i am 110 percent transparent that there are things in life that involve networking and connections and who you know and the ability to socialize be a likable person and to get what you want through social engineering you know this is life and who are you to judge someone else's dreams you don't know their goals you don't know their intentions you don't know their dreams i feel like at some point in your life it's too much work to go out of your way to have bad intentions you know what i mean a lot of the times you go out of your way so that you can get something that is you know that you can gain from it you know so to me i don't like the whole like clout chasing vibes because we're all just trying to do our best and any chance that we got we're all trying to shoot our shot whether it's with someone that's more clouded whether it's like just a shot in the dark with someone that you may or may not have a connection with regardless of who it is or their numbers or their their occupation i just don't rock with that whole like mentality i think we're all human at the end of the day that's it we're all human we all make mistakes but we also all want to grow in our own ways so i hate the cloud chasing vibes i understand what you guys mean though and i know you guys don't mean it in like like that kind of way but yeah clout chasing equals networking i mean that the I, I i don't know like i think some people are just a little lost and maybe like oh maybe they see your life and it's so glamorous and they're like oh i want to do what you're doing you know i, I just don't maybe i'm naive i just don't think people are innately horrible people like some are of course there's always exceptions to everything but i think we all grew up knowing that like you don't get anywhere you know being bad you know being a horrible person you don't get anywhere kaylee i'm gonna be really honest um i need you to empathize with me a little bit um they are pets of my past and it's not something i want to bring up uh, all i know is i did the best i can um for them and they are from what i can tell in a better environment um cleo is kind of an example of a pet that i feel like i failed but also i learned from it that dogs are a huge responsibility that i cannot handle sometimes and also with my other cats they are with my ex and i am in i'm not in on speaking terms with him he's blocked me everywhere so please please don't that's all i want to know i mean but that's what but it's still kind of selfish you know because i'm telling you i'm trying to tell you right now that it like hurts me when you bring it up so might be yeah okay all good so it's okay it's okay you didn't know but now you know so please don't <laughs> They're in good hands. They are in better hands. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but anyways. Yeah, no, this this dream is like, I mean, it's therapeutic in a way that it is entertaining for you guys and it is uh, occupying my brain so that I am not focused on my current events and situations um but these are all stories i've already healed from i am like i'm so capable of like of retelling these stories because i'm that confident that i just do not care about them anymore and they're so laughable to me so i don't mind at all but yeah after that guys i, I wasn't kidding when i said i was boy crazy literally a week later i end up eyeing um a bandmate 
in band. Mm -hmm. Woodwinds. Um, except he played the bass guitar. Regardless, I thought he was really cute. And I was a flute player, so I sat in the front. So naturally, whenever I looked back, I, uh, I would see him. And he would see me. And it just became a, a staring thing. Like, literally, we didn't even talk. I, you know, I to be honest, I don't even, I didn't even know what he sounded like for the longest time. Because he's such a quiet person. Um, we just, we just always looked at each other. <laughs> bass guitar. Can't spell bass without, without ass. Oh my god. You were in band. Yeah, I, I was a flute player since 6th grade. I played all the way through 10th grade. Yep. Um, puppy love, sure. It was like a, a puppy rebound love. <laughs> so, he, we'd always look at each other. And I was looking for a rebound because I'm like, ugh, I cannot be down bad right now over a guy because of my pride. So I need to show that I can move on super fast so um i was like all right i'm gonna go for it so a week later with all like the eye glance exchanges and stuff like that we uh we perform at a different school for our band like maybe a christmas concert i don't remember but i remember pretty much sitting next to him um, when a different school was performing so I sat next to him and I was very forward I was just like like hi like um I noticed that you uh, that we're always looking at each other blah, blah 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 and I was like do you like me and he was like oh my god <laughs> but he was just like uh yeah you're you're, you're pretty cute and blah, blah blah and I'm like oh yeah can I have your MSN and he's like yeah sure so we exchange emails and we end up talking. Obviously, he ends up liking me. We end up liking each other for the... Oh, it wasn't Christmas concert. Yeah, actually, no, it was. It was a holiday concert before Christmas break. There we go. All right. So, good old MSN. Yep. Um, we don't even go on a date, by the way, guys, because this is how short this timeline and this relationship lasted because... Oh. So, I, I hate to admit this, but this I, I have to be honest. I've already told you guys all my, my, my deepest and darkest secrets uh, of my childhood. I might as well tell you guys this too. I'm no longer like this, guys, because I got braces myself later. But earlier on, I did not know braces. So, uh, he has braces and I got really scared. I was genuinely scared of kissing him. I didn't want to kiss him. I refuse to let it happen. And I kid you not, guys. This is the most dramatic K-drama scene of my motherfucking life. Let me tell you. So, I was not for kissing this guy. So, we went, uh, like, probably a whole month of just talking and dating, but I refuse to kiss him. Like, I refuse to kiss him. We're holding hands. We make it very public that, you know, we're dating, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's awesome. Except I, I've never kissed the guy. So, finally, I think, like, a month in, He's less like, like the end of, or like, sorry, mid-December. So not a month in, sorry, like two weeks in. He's just like, yeah, so we've never kissed, blah, blah, blah. What's your, what's your opinion on that? And I was just like, oh, I just really like to take things slow. Yeah, just who I am. Are we? <sighs> Until the last day of, uh, mid-december for before we go head into holiday break so it was one of those moments where you're like okay you got to talk to your friends now or else you know they're all going to travel for for the holidays and you know you got to get off whatever's on your chest now so <laughs> uh, this part is so cringe anyways oh my god my eyes are just naturally rolling back like that's how bad this memory is so the last day before holiday break he essentially comes up to me and he goes hey i'm gonna i'm gonna be playing some basketball with my friends and i was like okay and he's like do you want to come watch and i'm like um sure but i really should walk home soon and then because i'm like the weather looks kind of kind of rough 
and he's just like, well, I'm going to really miss you, blah, 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 blah. How about that kiss, though? And I'm like, uh, I'm just like, I don't know. I think like a miracle will have to happen at this point because I just really need to take it slow. And he's like, a miracle? Like something like that. Like something along the lines of like something impossible, right? And I kid you not. I said, I'll kiss you if it snows. And the weather app said it was going to rain. It did not say it was going to snow. You see where this is going? But wait, there's more! Motherfucker was like, not going to bet on that, by the way. Because I didn't bet on it. He didn't bet on it. He's like, I have another idea. How about if I beat my friends? Or sorry, I'm going to go play basketball and talk to them about this. And I was like, okay, whatever. We go over there. And then he... I'm pretty sure he, they set me up because there's no way they knew what to say. But essentially, like some conversation were, were to be had. And then they were like, oh, if da 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 misses this shot, he, ha like, he has to kiss you in front of us. And I'm like, what? That sounds like a really stupid thing. Like he's going to miss on purpose. Yeah. He missed. Not only did he miss, but it was such a dramatic performance that he also slipped on his butt. It was just not a cute look. It was like, oh my god, he literally embarrassed himself too. It was like too much acting. Like he was doing too much for real. Like it was mm, not, yeah, they were wingmen for sure. So I'm just like, oh my god, I, I didn't agree to this. But then also... There were like multiple people at this point. They were all involved. They were all excited. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. No one is above uh, above peer pressure. So at this point, I was like, mm. okay, well. So I told him, I, to I told him, I'm like, okay, I am down to have for this kiss to happen, but can we not have it be in front of you guys? Like, I'm I'm just a very private person. I'm just very embarrassed right now. Like, I, I, I'm just a little shy. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Have at it. Bye. Have fun. Tell us how it is. Like, you know, doing the whole, like, sussy jokes, like, right before we leave. Uh-huh, real mature. <sighs> we are walking the streets. And I'm stalling as much as I can. I'm literally telling him all these things about my life and just random snap stuff. Just really random talks. And then finally, we hit, we hit a street where it is time for us to part ways. I look at him. He looks at me. He pulls me in closer. And I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm like, I don't want to do this. All I'm staring at are his braces. And if you guys know me and know my history with braces the only experience i have with braces is watching brace face and there's a literal episode where she and a dude they kiss and the braces get stuck and it's like nasty and it's like her biggest fear and you know like i that was my image of what braces is gonna happen i genuinely thought that my lip was gonna get stuck to one of his elastics like i didn't i didn't know braces physics i didn't i didn't have braces at the time I remember that. Yeah, you know that episode. It was so awful. That was a good show, to be honest. It was a good show. But holy crap, I was just like, I am so doomed. And I kid you not, right when I was about to tell him, like, I'm chickening out, like, I'll see you. I, I was ready. Like, I had what I was going to say in my head. I was going to say, like, I promise you, let's kiss, like, after the holiday break. I kid you not. Right when I was about to make my emergency exit, it mother freaking snows. It starts snowing. My life is a joke. <laughs> my life, a literal joke. It said 100% precipitation and it was so wrong. It was so wrong. Not a Christmas miracle. No. 
a Christmas nightmare. Uh, the nightmare before Christmas. Tim Burton wrote it after my story. He did. <laughs> but... So when it happened... Godwing Man... Yeah! <laughs> no, no, literally. I felt like the greater power out there was teaching me a life lesson to stop dating guys I don't genuinely like literally they're like this is oh yeah you are about to play another another boy oh hell no we're gonna play you we're gonna play you so I got played bro it was so bad this is started snowing and hit the look in his face he's like oh my gosh I guess we have that miracle after all it's snowing and I'm like oh yeah! like I was nothing about that was romantic it's traumatized me to be honest i was just like how can how can life do me like this i usually love snow but not now oh god so i yeah the kiss did happen and it was the driest like it was not good because we both had chap lips um and it was just it was very crusty and um i honestly did not like the little string of saliva that came out as well um not a good kisser uh he hated me by the way after that because i did break up with him during christmas break i ignored him i ghosted him essentially i stopped talking to him completely because it was like the worst kiss of my life and i wasn't uh, like i said back then very hard at, very hard communication didn't communicate would rather just avoid all problem so i just ghosted him he would talk to me uh, through msn and then finally, by like the fourth day into, you know, the the holiday um, break, I straight up messaged him. I'm like, hey, I don't think we're going to work out. Um, I'm just not feeling it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> his pride kicked in and he messaged me, you beat me to it, dot. Then he like blocked me. <laughs> Okay, whoa. <laughs> he sounds toxic, sorry to hear. I mean it's one of the we were we were in like eighth or ninth grade. I think it was ninth grade. No, eighth grade. It's 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 not it's one of those things where it's like no one really wanted it to happen like that, but at the same time we're not at that age I just wasn't able to communicate my issues and I'm not going to lie, it is a huge turn off that he just wouldn't respect my boundaries too and just kept on forcing this kiss just because of holiday break like bro it's 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 three weeks or no it's two and a half it's two and a half weeks you'll live but for him he's like me kiss me kiss i don't know it was gross <laughs> this is better than shakespeare trash tragedy oh god bro not the snow i i kid you not i literally thought my life was i was a walking meme like i i i felt so so cheated like how how could the weatherman do me like that 100 percent particip precipitation no <laughs> it wasn't i checked beforehand and it said 100 percent that it would rain but it didn't rain it snowed it was horrible I'm I did not kick that leg up. No, no, I no horrible. Horrible. You didn't tell him you didn't like him because of his braces. Okay, to be fair, I told you guys. Oh yeah. Another another thing I failed. Or I, I did tell you guys he was a rebound. Typically when you find someone during your rebound phase, you don't care to get to know the person. You just want to get over your previous relationship. So you're just jumping into things not even realize wait a sec this guy has a this guy makes a rock look like it has more personality like i cannot he like i could we had nothing in common other than the band and we just we did we just could our our conversations just did not flow not good i i, I literally could have had a pet rock and found more entertainment and uh, a life and soul into that talking to this dude was really boring for me um literally <laughs> yeah geodude mm -hmm. why did he hate you then because people already were on a trend to hate me and he was kind of like the let me try let me try to change her let me try to see what this girl's about <sighs> And at this point, 
I couldn't say no to anyone. Was I a hoe? Not really. I, I got, when I say yes to people, I be holding hands with them at most. <laughs> and like giving them a, a peck at most. <sighs> Anyways, on to the next boy. Yes, there are many. Ooh. Okay, so 10th grade. Um, this was my, ah, wushu kid days. Okay, okay. Mm, there was a guy that I liked in wushu because he was just really good, super flexible, just super poggers. Very, very, very poggers. Oh my god, this is actually the funniest story now that I remember. Oh my god. Hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so we're we're doing wushu, right? And I basically uh, experienced my first concussion. <laughs> okay, I say it's funny, but it's not that funny because I, I kind of did go to the ER. But anyways, um, uh, it, it's because we were doing relays like we do to warm up. And um, during our sprint, the, uh, we always roll out carpet for some reason. I guess it's like for the grip. And also we always perform on carpet. So it's a carpet uh, flooring thingy. Um, and at the end of the carpet, uh, you know how if it's rolled up, it's like curled? So it was curled and I tripped over the curled carpet. I tripped over the carpet and I smashed my head into the gymnasium wall. Yes, and I um, blacked out for a whole uh, five seconds. But it was still enough for people to be concerned because when apparently like when you black out, it's super dangerous in general. You need to get it checked out. So I was rushed to the ER. But anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh i was rushed to the er luckily all my vitals everything was okay i was fine uh, but the sweetest thing was i remember him like kind of like hovering me the most and like the most worried um when i like first like opened my eyes and for some reason i think it was like love at first uh concussion yeah i know this sounds really crazy but like at a moment where you think like, okay, maybe I might die here. All of a sudden, like the only people around you, you look at, you're kind of like, wow, these people kind of love me. So I not naturally, I, I kind of looked at him. I'm like, wow, like maybe this is love. So, <laughs> so I'm not gonna lie. He was on my mind for a while. And finally, I started making my move. During Wushu, I started sitting closer to him. During our stretches, I'll be like, no, normally I stretch with this girl, but she's, oh no, she's not here. Do you want to stretch with me? And then, you know, so we started stretching each other and it was really nice. And obviously I could tell he had a crush on me. So I was like, <laughs> like, gotcha. So, oh my God. you guys will never believe why I broke up with this guy. He was such a nice guy too. But anyways, he's a super sweet kid. Super, super, super kind super 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 nice but i'm not going to lie i was always the type that loved my sense of fashion i wasn't like eccentric or like crazy like vogue or anything but i am a girl that lo loves to keep up with trends so with that being said i am a little bit vain but I i'm not vain with like his looks i don't care how he looks but for me I do care about my own fashion, my own style, and I don't like being told what to do with my own style and my own vibe, okay? Like, for me, it's just, like, leave the fashion, my fashion, too much to me. Like, don't... Anyway. With that said, Valentine's Day comes around, right? And he gives me a beautiful card written like he's very like eloquent well-spoken very beautiful card very sweet but he mentions that he cannot wait to see me in a necklace that he got me and first of all when i read this i was like oh so i have to wear it <laughs> okay and i look at no, no no ashley hold up i have a reason when I look at the necklace, it's not a heart. It's not a flower. It's not a star. 
It's a mother freaking flip flop. It's a pendant of a flip flop. A flip flop. Are you kidding me? You want me to wear a flip flop? <laughs> you mother freaking love me. You literally write me the most beautiful poem. You have such beautiful English writing skills. And you're going to give me a flip flop? Like. <laughs> it's Valentine's. Like. like <sighs> ungrateful. No, I was. I was 100% ungrateful. I was not the most in endearing lover. Okay. Cause I, cause I straight up did not know how to love really. I was just upset, uh, obsessed with the idea of dating. And let's, let's be honest guys. When you are in middle school, early high school, you don't know the definition of love either. So don't, don't go judging me. I'm just here to speak my truth. I'm, these are all things that I know I was wrong for. Trust me. But at the same time, I, I honestly just paired the two together. The statement that he can't wait for me to see, like, see me wear it. And the fact that it was a flip-flop. Like, both of them were just running through my brain. Like, it was like, he expects me to wear this. <laughs> I have to wear it. <laughs> mm. <coughs> Not too bad. Kind of original. I mean, yeah. I, okay, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. I think, if anything, I promise you guys, I would not have broken up with him if he did not mention the wearing part. I am a lover of options. I am a people pleaser. I cannot wrap my head around the idea of not allowing someone to have an exit. Because that's just me. Because I would never put pressure someone to... I would never be like, hey, do this for me. You must. Even if you don't want to. Like, I would never do that. Even the possibility, you know, that I might discomfort someone i would never allow myself like that's just my morals but for this guy he didn't even care because he's just more of like a he's more of like a like a romantic where he's just like it's the sentiment it's not about how it looks it's like i got this for you i want you to wear it i can't wait like you're wearing it type beat and i was like mm. uh, i don't think he was going to force you to wear it every day i know i know because i did try i didn't break up with him right away so what i did was every time I had wushu twice a week. So every time I went to wushu, that was the only time I wore it. Do you still have it? No. But anyways. Um, yeah, so I wore it. And I remember too, I, I think it only lasted a week. So two sessions I wore it. And I remember I was like, hey, so why a flip-flop? And he, he was just like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just not really good with these things. And um, it was the first thing that I thought, oh, hey, that's really, that's really cute. And I'm like, uh, I mean, sure, it's, it's, it's cute, but um, it's, you know, Valentine's is, is like about hearts and flowers and blah, blah, blah. And then he gave me this whole, I think he, he's just, he, he's a very, um, poetic not like other guys um not uh not a conformist which is cool but it's not for me like I said I kind of follow trends and honestly we would not be compatible at that rate because he's he's very like not about the trends um and that's okay so I remember telling him the second day I was wearing it. Hey, I'm just not feeling the connection as much as I did before. And yeah, um, do you want me to give this back? <laughs> and he's like, no, I had a feeling. And that's okay. You can keep it. I don't want it. And I'm like, okay. And that was like my most peaceful breakup. <laughs> that's why I knew he was a kind person. I knew he was nice. Like that was the first breakup where I didn't feel like I was the crazy one. So I was like, okay, he showed me kindness. And this, I think this was, I think it was because I dated or I like 
<laughs> guys. I never even kissed him either. We never even held hands. Anyways, um, so once I found out that, or sorry, once I was treated with kindness from him, not with guilt, not calling me crazy, it was the first time that I felt bad. I like genuinely felt bad. I didn't feel bad for my elementary like crushes because I didn't really understand anything. And I felt like it was weird that they were guilting me that I had to like someone or that I had to be in a relationship with someone. Like there was just a lot of things wrong with that. And then with Brian, it was like so messy and the whole threatening to, to, to beat me up, you know, it was like, oh my God. And then the guy after that, the band guy was so purely like looks only, zero personality and forcing me or like pressuring me to, to kiss when I clearly didn't want to um i felt like i was just always treated like of course i'm messed up i mean i played my part in like you know saying yes to people i didn't even like like sure yes i understand i put myself in those scenarios i'm not trying to ask for your you know for any pity points here but at the same time i was just never treated with like genuine kindness so then i was like oh wait this guy is actually nice and that's when I really, really, really felt bad. And I reflected that night. And I was like, okay, I think I am done with dating. Because I clearly keep on messing up. And I keep on getting into these, like, one week, two week, one month relationships that don't work out. I feel bad for the guys. Yeah, I do. I do too. But, I mean, we all live and we learn. And like I said, when you like someone at a young age, it tends to be only about looks. Like, you you can't not admit that. And if you were a little different and you were more about personality than your looks, then good for you. I was like that too. Um, the guys that I liked in between, like, you know, the popular guys, I liked a guy that was overweight and he didn't believe me. He thought it was a prank when I confessed to him. So I'm not gonna lie, like a part of me also was like, okay, now I can't like like a conventionally not attractive guy because they'll just think I'm pranking them. So yeah, I've done some pretty dumb stuff in college. Yeah, we all have a period of learning. There is no such relationship that is just perfect from the start. It's, it's, it's not. As the start as in like your very first relationship. There's always going to be like things you don't understand. Mm -hmm. Overweight but attractive. I need to Google that. No, no, no. So he was overweight and not attractive like conventionally. But I liked him because he was like the funniest guy. And he was very mysterious. Like he's very quiet. But whenever he does talk, he says like the funniest things. And I genuinely had like the biggest crush on him. So when I told him, hey, like I have a crush on you. He literally thought I was joking. He's like, that's not funny. You shouldn't joke about that. And I was like, who? Huh? <laughs> so as a kid, I was like, okay, fine. I won't like, I won't like the, the chubbier kid either. <laughs> I can't like anyone. I can't like, I can't like the popular kid. And I can't like, you know, the kid that's sitting in the back not talking until he talks to me because I finally get his trust. And I think he's actually funny and really cool. And now he just thinks I'm pranking him. I hate it here. <laughs> he's probably been made fun of that way. I mean, yeah, but I was also in like, this was fifth grade when I confessed to that one. So I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, okay. Or sixth grade. Regardless whatever grade it was, we're not very empathetic as children. I'll have you guys know. So I wasn't thinking about his shoes. I was only thinking of mine. And I was just very offended that he called me a prankster. So anyways, what's your ratio of confessing to guys versus them confessing to you? Um, I make sure they always tell me they like me first. But I always make sure I do the first move. I always do. I always, like, I, I see it. I want it. I, I try to go get it. The only time I confessed first was with the chubbier kid. Yeah, he pretty much called me a clown. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
yep, 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 yep. Um, but because, guys, I'm not going to lie, because of that train wreck of a history, of a dating history from fifth grade to 10th grade, I was able to move to America with all this experience, more dating experience than the average Joe. And I was able to snag myself a boyfriend. I should not be proud of this. I am proud that it lasted as long as it did. And this is genuinely the first real relationship I had, guys. The first real relationship. It lasted three and a half years, which I'm very proud of. Um, but... It was also due to brother complex and I lost my best friend or close girlfriend, closest girlfriend. You can't be best friends within like a month, but we were very close and she trusted me to go over to her house and she had a brother. <laughs> and he was also younger too. He was younger by two years. So I was a senior. He was a, he was a sophomore. Dad was right. No, dad was wrong for gatekeeping me. Dad's the fault. <laughs> Dad's at fault. If my dad did not gatekeep me so hard, making it such a mystery, I would not have had a crush on these guys. Because I think like a part of you, a part of me was just like, this is so wrong. This is forbidden love. And I can't help but like, stare because like they're doing things they're they're in their own world but at the comfort of their own home something about it is like vulnerable but mysterious at the same time so how i got this one i noticed he was playing a game and it was league <laughs> my first exposure to league of Leg leggings but anyways but luckily not only was he playing League, he was playing with my friend from Ceramics class. Because <laughs> I recognized his username. His username was the exact same as his uh, AIM. So I was like, oh my god, you're playing with this person. And he was like, you know them? And I was like, yeah, he's in my Ceramics class. And he's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And he completely just ignores me. And I'm like, oh. And he's a bad boy? Or he's like a, kind of gives me the cold shoulder. He's kind of hard to get. Mm, okay. A challenge? So naturally, I come over a lot. I become like a, a fan of coming over all of a sudden. And him and his sister, or sorry, me and his sister are uh, getting along well. Well, in all actuality, not gonna lie, I did come over with ulterior motives. I was not a good friend. I'm gonna be very clear. I should have treated her time better. But she didn't care because she was also boy crazy and she had a boyfriend at the time. So she always thought that it was weird that I would come over. But then I told her that I, it was because I'm starting to game with her brother and we're becoming really good friends. So she didn't think anything of it. She genuinely just thought we were gaming all the time, which we were. We would play the Switch, he would show me more League stuff, and I finally downloaded League and we started playing. Um, but he had zero idea that I had a crush on him. So I was like, alright, it's like crack snuckles. It's time to start sliding in. Yep. And that is when I started... I went to Tous Les Jours, and they no longer sell this bread, by the way, but it was their melon pan, and it, it's like melon bread, which is like a milk bread with a cookie crust that is shaped as a melon, and it was dyed slightly green. It's so delicious, but they don't sell it at the Tous Les Jours around here anymore. And one time I was eating it, and he was like, what is that? And I said, it was melon bread. And he was like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, it's my favorite thing. Like, I love it. And he's like, oh, really? And this was when I actually should have known that I think he already had a crush on me, but 
in his head he's like it's never like we're never gonna you know date but he already had a crush on me because you know how sometimes when you like someone you kind of put on a mask in order to kind of like be agreeable with them like it's it's especially when you're young because nowadays when you're older you kind of know what you want you know what you like so the less of a mask you bring that you put up in the beginning the better because at the end of the day those colors will fade away and your true colors will show and it's not good if you're not truthful so with that said i'm eating this melon bread and i go would you like to try and he's like sure he eats it and i'm like isn't it so good and you guys know me when it comes to food i'm super passionate about it and i'm not gonna lie i sometimes don't give room for people to say it's bad because i'm just like overly praising it so i do know this is a thing i do so he's like oh yeah you know it's it's really good I, I really like it and i'm like okay awesome i kid you not the next four days i see him i bring one and i write like a sticky note every time because he will talk about random things he'll talk about an exam he'll talk about his swim practice he'll talk about other things i'll be like good luck at, good luck with your swim meet or good luck with your test blah 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 blah, blah. And at this point, he knew. I knew. So he was just like, thank you for always thinking of me. Thank you for always giving me this bread. Um, but uh, what is this? You know, like, what, 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 what's going on? And I'm like, I'm like, well, I don't know. You tell me what's going on. And he's just like, well, I definitely think I feel something for you but at the same time like you are my sister's friend like what do you think and I was like oh yeah about that you know happy first um I don't mind if you don't mind but maybe I will discuss with her and yep he was like yeah well I do really like you and I'm like okay well I like you too <laughs> you're Mm -hmm. yep and then fast forward I literally almost get caught sneaking him into my home my dad ends up coming home one day early from work and I'm like dad why are you home and he's less like oh yeah your mom said that it's actually a little slow today at the pho restaurant so I'm home and I will never forget I remember dragging my dad into our uh, powder room, like our guest bathroom, and I'm like, Dad, how could you paint it this color? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, doesn't this look brown to you? And he's like, no, it's purple. And I'm like, but the light, it is so warm, and when it hits the purple, it looks brown. I hate it. And he's like, why are you being so dramatic? And why are you dragging me into the bathroom to see this? It's not that urgent. It's not that it's, this, it's not that deep, pretty much, is what he was saying. And I'm like, but it's supposed to be purple. Like, I remember the most stupid conversation about the wall paint. Like, it was so ridiculous. Like, I literally said, I need to drag you into a different side of the house. Like, it was so troll. But... My boyfriend at that moment was able to run out to the backyard. But oh my god, guess who almost blew his cover? Mother freaking Mickey. Mm hmm. My house Pomeranian starts yapping like crazy, barking like no other because obviously my ex, he's like running outside. He's like, you know, he's just looking, he's acting real sus and he's running. So he's running outside and blah, 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 blah. And yeah, Mickey is just barking like crazy. Mother freaking Mickers, man. <clears throat> and, um, yeah. I remember my dad was like, why is Mickey barking? And my dad starts running over to the backyard and this was when my heart sinks because i actually don't know that my ex escaped from the from the back i had no idea but um 
uh, but he obviously left the backyard door, door open and i was like oh oh it's because i forgot to op i forgot to close the door and he probably sees a bird and my dad was like oh okay and miraculously um my dad gets a call from my mom that he needs to get back to work because they ended up getting a random rush of people so my dad's like oh well guess your mom needs me after all saved by the bell yep and then i was able to get my car and drive my ex home because yeah he there was no way he was getting home from there because <laughs> i think we lived like we lived like like 15 minutes by car or 10 minutes by car which is quite a long walk so yep did you did your dad ever find out nope 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 he'll kill me he'll kill me if he knew that i uh snuck a guy over was this five years ago oh no it was way longer than that this was 10 years ago what if your dad no my dad is not watching the stream right now it's it's almost 4 a.m he's most definitely sleeping <laughs> no not the at dad not the at dad you guys are so troll what the heck you're 18 at the time maybe 17 maybe yeah maybe seven seven seventeen yeah, seven, 17. I was 17. Who's gonna clip it? What the fuds? Yeah, knew you guys were never on my team. God dang it. You might want to delete the VOD. No, it's fine. I don't care. <laughs> it, obviously, he would be like, tisk, tisk, tisk. But at the same time, it's like, what can you do now? He can't say anything. If anything, he, he's gonna... You know what actually he's gonna say? He's gonna say, wow horrible at the time but where's that energy now because all i want are grandkids why can't you give me children like literally <laughs> it's always gonna go back to that children's child statement always always anything i talk to him like as of recent he's always gonna be like no i don't want it I'm like dad i've you know i've set aside money for you for a house it's time and he's like no the market's bad you need to save your money for your future kids. Dad, hey, how 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 is the money situation going? Like, um, you're still living in the mobile home and it concerns me because your health is declining. The wood is really old. I, I When I go there, my allergies are really bad. I want to move you out of the house. No, you need to get kids. Kids will be expensive. Save your money for kids. But, I mean, it's, we, we, I told him, I told him though, like, uh, we are 100%, um, buying a small house next year when he because he everyone is in belief that the market will only get worse so yeah i'm going to put my first down payment for a home for my parents because the mobile home is so so bad it's so bad my dad has renovated as much as he could could but he couldn't replace the walls and the, it's the walls that, that that is the problem the wood is very 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 old and the fumes that i just get horrible horrible allergies from yeah <laughs> Arya is taken oh no uh, what i'm i'm literally talking about my past relationships had the convo with his friend and sister oh it was bad it was not good not good um it was because it's kind of similar with heather's situation where she felt like i was coming over for him and not her at the beginning she was okay with it only because she had a relationship she was very very like invested in so she too was like oh i'm not gonna shame you for being invested in your relationship when i have my own but her relationship started becoming very rocky and she really needed a friend and unfortunately i was not there for her so i 100 percent admit i was not a good friend and a lot of the times too i felt like i felt very underappreciated for the times i was there for her and it became a point where like 
obviously like she was getting hurt a lot and it was just a lot of stress for me and I couldn't do it and I couldn't balance like being her friend and being her brother's girlfriend at the same time so all in all it was it ended bad and I am very apologetic and regretful I could not prioritize that friendship more but she's kind of hostile she's always the type of girl that was very judgmental always talked like poorly about other people and uh, she had an entire Twitter account dedicated to just talking like smack like straight smack and there was a whole section of just her talking bad about me too when I found out about the, the the Twitter account it was so like gross the way she would talk about people let's find it oh no 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 I do not want to I don't even want to reopen that it was horrible a lot of it was just like a lot of it was just basically saying like I hate her I hate her I hate her like super like psycho crazy like anger mode like very inner inner thoughts like but written out so it was kind of scary she's just like I hate her I hate her so much why did I let her into my life blah, 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 blah. she's horrible she's a witch she's like no she just says like all the craziest things and I'm just like whoa kind of gnarly did she watch your streams oh no I had no idea streaming was a thing until a little later into my relationship with the same guy, by the way. Funny fact. Funny freaking fact. He was the one who showed me to Twitch for the very first time. But I didn't understand the hype. I just didn't get it. Because he was just like, oh yeah, I, I, I like watching uh, pro uh, league players play the game. And I learn a lot of strategy from him, from them. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Until... Um, so his favorite Twitch streamer was Aphromoo. So funny how like the world goes full circle because I ended up working for CLG as my first org. But after he was watching after uh, uh, Aphromoo, when um, when Aphromoo sta stopped streaming, he started to scroll down the depths of streamers. And he was in the zero viewer account or one digit viewer accounts and he started opening up their stream and judging their gameplay and at first it was like one annoying thing to just judge out loud just be a constant negative nancy but then he started typing into their chat and he this was when he was like saying really mean things like horrible you're so bad at the game you're so ugly you're so shit blah, blah blah stop streaming blah 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 yeah i found out that i was dating a secret like internet bully and he was hella just laughing and like these people they were getting really sad they're like oh my god like the one viewer i get today and you're so mean like, they're saying such me like, sad, sad things. And I'm just like, hey, this is wrong. What are you doing? And then he was just like, it's so funny. Isn't it funny? Like, look how, look how worked up they're getting. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And then that's when my, like, I was just like, this is a red flag. And I, but I straight up said it. I was just like, hey, I'm not going to lie. Like, this is not cool. This is a red flag. I am thinking this is this is this is just unattract unattractive behavior so he's like okay i won't do it in front of you blah blah blah, blah. i'm like no you shouldn't do it at all like clearly th they're worked up because their feelings are hurt and but he was just like i don't care and i'm like oh my god but i was also like way too invested into the relationship but i should have known that that was like a main red flag yep yep Then, dun, 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 dun. I went on a cruise with my family for the first time. And we were very rocky at this point of our relationship. It was like a year and a half in. I was in, I was like, oh, sorry, not a year and a half, like maybe two years. Oh, I know. This was a year and a half. He was still in high school. Yeah, he was he was a senior, I think. Or a junior, a senior. A senior. So I was in college. And obviously, we went from seeing each other every day at school 
and him hanging out with me in the ceramics room every day to not seeing each other at all. So with that said, he ended up um, reconnecting with a girl that apparently he had a crush on. Like they'd liked each other when they were in middle school, but they were two years apart. So he, I guess, for forgot about her for a bit. But now that they've reconnected, he clearly still has a crush on her. And we were already rocky uh, because we were just weren't spending enough time together. Our schedules were different. It was like hard. So I end up going on a cruise ship with my parents. And at this point too, I, I'm kind of the person where I like, like I said, not a very good girlfriend, not very attentive. Um, so I, I, I tend to just live life and not really think about messaging people. So I was doing one of those. So not very communicative. Um, and then, yeah, he apparently was trying to, uh, to win that girl, uh, behind my back. And then I get a Facebook message from the girl. I didn't even have to do any digging. She messaged me and was like, this is what's happening. I have screenshots. And she sends me screenshots. And I feel so sick to my stomach. Being cheated on is just not fun. Even if it's emotional. In my opinion, emotional is actually worse. Because they're actively choosing this other person. You know, in their heart and in their brain. Meanwhile, if it's a physical cheating, like maybe they're just thinking with their private parts. You know what I mean? Maybe it's just like a dumb, like, I just need a put out type of thing, you know? But I feel like with emotional cheating, it's like, damn, you chose to do this. I did not know the girl personally, but she knew she knew that we were dating because on his Facebook, like our, we were Facebook official. <laughs> But yeah, she was like, hey, I've been talking to your boyfriend. Um, at first, it was just casual because we were catching up as we went to the same middle school and stuff. But <laughs> the juiciest thing ever, me and this girl end up bonding because she ends up telling me what happened in middle school. And I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, she goes, yeah, you know what he did in middle school? And I said, what? She said that they liked each other and they had confessed at this point. But she had a best friend that also liked him too. But she is a real good homegirl and was like, you can have him. Because the other girl was kind of like on the nerdier side. Like you could tell like she just she just like was not as popular or attractive compared to this girl. This girl was like the super sporty, super popular girl. But she was like really good friends with like kind of the nerdy girl. It was really cute. Their, their, their friendship is really cute. But she basically gave him to her. But that's also like her mistake because you have to realize like when you're young. you You don't know this but... You can't pass people on like that. But she also had a story where she like passed someone on thinking that it would work out between them. But he took the bait because he was just like, yeah, whatever. I'll just, oh, he took the bait because he wanted to use it, use the best friend to make her jealous. But his plan failed. He ended up hurting her feelings so much because she obviously realized like all he cared about was the other girl. So she told me that she's wanted revenge for so long. So she straight up was just like, he was so mean about it. And while he was dating my friend, he was still trying to talk to me every day on AIM. And he was still flirting with me. And he even told me like, oh, you know, I would rather be dating you right now, blah, 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 blah. So she told me, he's like, she was like, 
I don't know. I thought I really thought he would change. That's why I started talking to him again. I, I just thought it was going to be like a casual catch up session, but he is he has not changed and I really hope he's treating you well because I'm telling you right now, he is trying he is trying to like slide it in pretty much. And I was like, mm. Well, thank you for telling me. And then unfortunately this was my first case of like being cheated on so I was like oh like this feels horrible my self-worth like all of a sudden like I don't feel good enough I don't feel attracted enough like my hair wasn't long enough like it was a huge trend in Orange County to have mermaid length hair or mermaid hair you know with the curls with the waist oh my god Alfredo's so cute right now oh my god <laughs> anyways so I just I just felt very unattractive I felt very horrible I started binge eating like crazy I started getting very, very, very chubby. I just, I just let go because I just felt like, what's the point? But because this happened, my ex was feeling so disgusted and like betrayed that he genuinely was like, I hate her, blah, 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 blah. And he, but I think a part of him wanted to prove that he could be a good boyfriend. So the relationship ended up becoming him just trying to make up for the fact that, you know, he did all of that. So that's where I learned for the first time that having someone's Facebook account does not, it, it doesn't change anything. Because I became obsessed with checking his Facebook. Because that was a suggestion that he um, had for me. He was just like, if you don't trust me, because I told him I didn't want to be with him anymore. Um, because it will always be in the back of my head. But he said, how about this? How about you, how about um, for your Facebook app, it's your Facebook. But then for your browser, like, I'll give you access to my Facebook. Because I won't have anything to hide. I will never cheat on you. So at that point, I, I didn't know any better. I didn't know that this was like, could be toxic. I had no idea. For me, I was like, that's fair. So he logged on to his Facebook on my phone. And this is the most juicy detail that I'm about to tell you guys. <laughs> hmm. It's not that juicy. It's not what you guys think. He has a password that is very intricate. Like it's one of those like numbers mixed with mixed with letters mixed with punctuation. Like it's very difficult. And it's a it, it it's just a different password. And I told him, I'm like, how do you memorize this every time? Because he types it really fast. And he's just like, it's just something I, I came up with. It was, no, no. He said it was like a part of his library code or something. I forget. But he always, it, it always stuck with him. So fun fact. I've yoinked his password. And to this day, I use a, a rendition of his password. <laughs> And to this day, because I was so used to logging into it too, or asking for it whenever like it booted me out of my desktop version or my uh, web browser version on my phone, you still have access. Um, I might actually, but I, I don't care to look anymore. Interesting flex, yeah. You might be watching. I mean, it, I said it was a rendition, guys. It's not like a like a to z exactly the same, but it's there's a crucial part of it that's in there we go on his facebook right now no i literally could that I, that's that's not okay not you guys asking me to hack a person <laughs> she took his password style and format i really did it's such a good password and because i know it now i think i am somewhat cool because it's like I am able to memorize these sets of numbers. That's why whenever, you know, sometimes when you're logging into something and you kind of like have to, or your friends have to like do this or they have to like look away because it's a password. I always confidently say, oh no, go ahead. And it, and people are always like, huh? I even tell people to like, oh, you can try to remember it. Let me know. And I type it and they're like, huh? Because it's not a word. 
it is a series a, 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 like multiple letters and numbers and punctuation together but i'm able to memorize it because i was so used to typing it in <laughs> But anyways, and through that relationship, I, oh, actually, I, I, I should tell you guys how I end, it ended too. Uh, nothing too toxic or anything. It, it was just, I did become obsessed with checking his Facebook. It became like the morning newspaper to me. And I realized I wasn't proud of being like this. And because I almost felt like it was like, uh, it was there was a trauma response with any time that he didn't respond or took some time to respond I immediately check his Facebook and it was just I was just not proud I was not happy with the person I was becoming I was always stressed always thinking about oh he might be cheating on me oh he might be doing this oh he might be like blah blah blah, blah. and um yeah I just I didn't like it <clears throat> and then that's when I got my job with um CLG and I had to move uh, all the way to Arcadia. And it was really, really far from OC. And he also got into um, an Ivy League school. Uh, so he obviously could not have the time to hang out with me anymore. And then finally, um, during Christmas break, he uh, I went over to see him. And I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I drove from Arcadia to Orange County to see this guy. And the thing is, I was like, I remember our the the trend for our entire high school relationship was can't wait till you can pay me back. Because I funded the entire relationship because he didn't have a job. I had a job. I was, you know, doing the boba tea. I was doing the bakery place. I was doing the, I was doing Swatch and GameStop. It was during that era. I was you know balancing so many jobs and then I also was paying for the relationship I also um did tutoring like I was a tutor for kids and I also babysat them while I was tutoring them so I was just balancing so many side hustles and jobs I even sold hamsters I I I was just grinding my butt off and that's how I became a foodie by the way because I would grind my butt off and then our dates would just be trying restaurants and I would pay for everything uh hamster breeder poor hamsters hamster pimp yeah it was an accident it started off as an accident because I just wanted them as pets but then um where I bought them uh mislabeled them it, it, it's actually very it happens a lot because sometimes hamsters are very difficult to gender um sometimes their balls don't drop and I really thought I had two females but unfortunately i had one female one male so it was a complete accident and i couldn't take care of like 10 extra hamsters so i resorted to craigslist and this was when i was very introverted um the only times i would go out is with my boyfriend so the times that i didn't go out my dad was concerned for me he's like you need more friends and i'm like uh yeah i'm uh, about to go hang out with my friends at the mall and my dad's like okay have fun here's here's some allowance i'm like oh thanks dad takes the money goes to the goes to the back of a mcdonald's with a kleenex box with a hamster inside and i do the trade for five dollars yep and the cuter ones were like ten dollars yep mm -hmm. so my dad really thought that i had friends that i was going to the mall but really i was just using his allowance to fill up my gas and i just further kept on meeting up with stranger i was so fearless <laughs> i mean obviously because i wasn't an influencer and nobody knew who i was you don't have those fears of meeting up with strangers i was meeting up with craigslist people every single week just selling hamsters or selling old stuff i didn't need <laughs> i was not afraid of meeting up with people how could you tra how, how could you traffic hamsters i never traffic hamsters stop it it was an accident and i just sold the 10 that i had it wasn't a big deal <laughs> and i sold them cheaper than PetSmart. so PetSmart it was like 15 to 20 dollars per hamster okay like i was selling them for five or ten so you're welcome <laughs> How'd you get the CLG job? Um, uh, yeah. So 
fast forward, <laughs> fast forward, during our holiday break, um, I realized I drove so far for the guy and I was like, you have a car. How come you didn't come to me or dri offer to drive me? Like, I thought we talked about how this whole relationship was going to, you know, ch be chalked up to like you one day treating me good. He goes, well, you know how my parents are, blah, 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 blah. Like his dad is like pretty strict. And he's like, and I'm driving the BMW now. And if I drive all the way to where you are and back, like it just doesn't make sense. It makes more sense if you come to me, blah, 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 blah. Like just kind of being a butt. And I was just like, you know what? I think I'm done. Yeah. And he's like, done with what? And I'm just like, I think I'm done with this relationship. And he's like, so you're breaking up with me? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go. And it was literally exactly in that tone, in, in, those, in that voice, and in those words. So I, I, I literally got up and left. <laughs> Nobody is worth the drive from Arcadia to OC. Ooh, wait till you find out about that. <laughs> my life, man. My dating life. I mean, I was always treated well at some point in the relationship. I promise you guys, I was happy. But my God, they end for a reason. It's all good. Best drive back. Um, Most relief. So I, and I didn't drive back to Arcadia because it was really late at night. So I drove back to my parents and my mom and dad were so shocked to see me at the door. They're like, why are you here? And I'm like, oh, I just broke up with my boyfriend. And they're like, oh my God. My dad was like cheering because my dad never liked him. But my mom was so sad because my mom was like, he was going to be a dog. And, you know, he, and, and you know, he was Vietnamese and he, you guys were going to have such beautiful kids because you know he he has like a he has a look to him that makes him look la la which means like mixed because he, he wasn't mixed but sometimes you get the genetic where your hair is like really light and you you also have really light eyes so my mom was just caring about the grandkids again and then my dad oh this is why i'm a daddy's girl immediately tells her to shut up she has no idea what happened in the relationship he could have been treating me poorly for all that we know like my dad was really sticking up for me mm, chef's kiss my dad is a wonderful man but anyways um yeah i love it um my dad was like mm, we don't even know the whole story yet i can't believe you're like trying to pressure our daughter and you know what my my mom freaking what her response was to that and this is why I just, I, I don't hate my mom, but we just don't see eye to eye with things. She goes, I kid you not. She goes, well, at least have a heart and like break up with him after the holidays. Why would you break up with him right when it starts? That's so mean. Unbelievable. My mother, everybody. <laughs> pageant mom always put your best foot forward always be super ladylike make sure you wear lipstick oh oh god actually unbelievable and my dad literally was like shaking his head and was like oh hell no like he was just not having my mom's answers either ah <sighs> crazy there's no good time for a breakup. Really, there's no good time. Like, seriously, if anything, the sooner the better, always. You, you'll, be, you'll be saving both of you, you, your guys' times. And also, um, you know, don't let that toxicity fester. If you're not happy, go. You gotta go. If, if you guys can't agree to be on the same page and work towards ironing out those kinks, then just leave. It's not worth it. Exactly. The sooner, the better. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Wait until their birthday, bro. <laughs> yep. And... 
Yep, yep, yep. My life. Um. My last relationship uh, is to, I mean, technically it's it's been a while, but I'm still not really comfortable giving details on it. I think down the road one day I will. But overall, a good relationship. Learned to love. And uh, ultimately chalked up to distance. But unfortunately, I have this curse <laughs> where both of those relationships, I tend to be the first girlfriend. And at some point, it does result in very easy fixes to be had with simple communication. But because a lot of the times your very first relationship with someone you are more afraid of hurting their feelings than telling the truth even though the truth would do you so much better i promise you guys it's just so much better to be honest but a lot of the times i get it it's hard you, you care about the person a lot but you're also uncer un uncertain about your feelings so you end up not wanting to do any harm and you end up being very you know conflict averse and you don't want to confront so ultimately uh, my relationship after that, I was also emotionally cheated on. Um, and I also forgave. And down the road, it was also something that was in the back of my head. Lowered my self-esteem and value a lot. I lost a lot of my confidence. Because I'm like, this happened to me again. And I've come to realize there's something about me that... I've told you guys, right? Like... I make a bad girlfriend, but I, I think I would make a wonderful wife. The reasoning for it is a lot of the times I get very focused on certain things like or addicted, as you can see. <laughs> and um, yeah, back then it was like ceramics projects or certain games and and things have not changed. <laughs> and, and like sometimes my hobbies, I do take it very far and very seriously. And um but I also show very caring qualities when I am in, in person with these people. So at the same time, they don't want to do anything to potentially lose out on that either. But because they can't communicate their frustrations whenever I am in like an addiction period, um, they end up being a little weak-minded and they end up emotionally cheating. They emotionally cheat until they find a safety net um, until they find another woman that is 100% down to, you know, date them, that is when they'll break up with you. But because the guilt, the tremendous guilt, you know, that was had, um, yeah, it didn't get to that point. But communication happened and then they're like oh, i'll be better i never want to do this to you again i realized so much and they realized too like them being a horrible person there they didn't know they didn't even know that they were capable of doing that they didn't even know it would hurt me that much uh so they always make it their entire life goal to like pay me back kind of and i don't want to be in a relationship like that anymore that was my final one i promise to God that I will not be dating anyone that has interests in dating other women or I will not be a first girlfriend anymore. And if I ever do find a person that is dating me for the first time, as in like, sorry, dating me as a first girlfriend, I told myself I must understand that it is not serious because it's just they're they're going to get bored or they're going to go through the exact same thing cuz two strikes out of two 
first relationships are very difficult for communication and rather than communicating they'd rather go behind my back so i have lost faith <laughs> has being an influence made, made it harder oh hell yeah i can't trust anybody i don't know why people like me anymore i've lost all hope i think i am like i said i have waifu qualities i understand I love cooking. I love cl I love cleaning for my significant other. I love doing their laundry. I love giving back massages. Like I'm an acts of service wife. I am that person. And I'm also I'm also like really goofy. I love making jokes. I'm super playful, very youthful in that regard. I, I like for me like being playful is very important. So at the at the most part I know I'm entertaining a two. But, with all that said, I just can't trust anyone. And I can't find anyone that can make me feel that they're 100% devoted for the long run. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm just like, I need a person that is going to only see me and want me. So, unfortunately, that curse of the first girlfriends is just not it. I will forever have doubt. <laughs> um, oh, I refuse to date through a social, uh, sorry, a uh, dating app. I do believe that it can work, but unfortunately, I've had a very, only bad experiences. If you guys followed my alt Twitter account from before, um, you guys will know a couple of them. I've talked about it even on stream before. Really creepy guys. Guys that pretend not to know me, but they actually do know who I am. Guys who report me for being fake just because I don't respond in a way that makes them feel like I'm attracted to them or I want to continue the conversation. Their pride gets in the way, so they just hit me with the report or hit me with the blackmail. Um... They are on such high horses on that app. I don't know why people are so entitled on that app. Um, I, for one, am a very uh, spotty person when it comes to texting. Um, unless it's like a specific request or something important. Sometimes if it's small talk, especially if it's small talk, actually, I tend to let it like, you know, I tend to let it like go. <laughs> And then, yeah. So, I've had people, like, yell at me on the app. Um, so, I'm just like, I do not want to use a dating app ever again. Pokey made a lot of non-streamer friends. Um, honestly, it's the people that are in your area really like physically speaking and if you're going out or you're going to events or whatever <clears throat> like you you say they're normal people but at the end of the day they're they are probably like adjacent like they're not influencers themselves but they are like a photographer or they're like a friend of a friend or they um you know they work in some sort of business or company or whatever it is that allows them to be living in the same area as you sometimes and that's like huge so yeah the vis your vicinity matters a lot jesus christ that is some heavy stuff that you guys are putting in my chat what am i reading sheesh Yeah, people don't get through that sip of water. Anyways. <sighs> what started off as pretty funny and a, a little depressing. I'm sorry. But at the same time. I have to be realistic to you guys. Um, when you get into your addictive phases, do you prefer doing those hobbies alone or with your SO alone? 
Always. Always alone. I've always been a person that does things alone because I've always felt like my entire life I had to prove something. <laughs> so even when I played, when I played like League or I played games, like even if I duoed, I would always have to make sure that it was never like I felt like I was jumping tiers that I was, you know, not supposed to be in. When things started getting difficult, that's when I actually stopped duoing. I'm like, I don't want to duo anymore. I want to play solo. I was just always felt like I was unworthy and I needed to like prove something on my own. So naturally, I just became a very like hardcore lone wolf when it comes to like hobbies and games and stuff. Because I'm like, I have to do it by myself. <laughs> and then we have all the esports trauma that I still cannot get into today. Who needs to hear this beside Aria. And I don't think I will be able to get into it until like probably another 10 years or something. <laughs> it's pretty bad. A lot of bad things happen to me. Yep. Are they all still in the scene? Nope. All retired now, doing their own thing. But it has also made me lose faith in men. And, uh, yep. Oh, please, you're fine. Q ranked? Oh, no, I can't. That guy, Mass, thanks for the gifting five subs. Two books? Sure. Sure, 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 sure. I can't guarantee you I'll remember to, to read it, but... Mm -hmm. It is an NDA type of thing, unfortunately. Not the hush money. A tell-all book. Yeah, one day. One day I will, I will do a tell-all with, like, fake names for sure. Not right now, though, because there are still some relevancy with, like, scenario. You guys will be able to draw the dots if I speak of it, so I can't talk about it. Thanks for the sub, guys. The courage to be disliked, the courage to be happy. Finish them. Aww. I think I'm. I've definitely changed in a sense where I am very aware that, like, what was causing a lot of my issues and how I was behaving and a lot. I do genuinely feel like overall my mentally has been the best it's ever been in a long time. I promise you guys. I promise. Uh. I just sound really sad right now probably because I've been doing a lot of talking and then it ends on like a sour note too so I'm like uh, you know so I promise you guys I'm I'm doing a lot better I've um realized that you know a lot of people um sometimes you can't you can't force people to you know stay interested in you even with friendships and um and that's okay, you know, sometimes pe people are meant to find other people and become closer to them. And I can't, like, I realize too, when it comes to relationships and love and uh, friendships, the best thing is you are not possessive over them. Uh, a part of me that is very gullible and naive is that, you know, we should be able to be real with each other and be friends to the end of time. But not everyone wants to be real with you. And I realize this now, and I should have realized it before, rather than constantly beg people to, you know, admit things to me or tell me what I did wrong or stuff like that. Like, I would people please to a fault. Like, I would be just like, why don't you guys like me? Why don't you guys invite me to things? Why don't you guys blah, blah, blah. I would beg every day. And at this point, I'm just like, I realize it now. Like, you can't expect people 
to hang on to you as much as you hang on to them or expect people to give you explanations for things you've done wrong and if they don't want to tell you then that's on them and if they want to find new friends that are or find other friends that are more compatible with them so be it i am not owed an explanation i'm not owed anything so yeah i did see a really helpful post that someone responded to me um about like how sometimes you are blessed with angels in your life to kind of save you or pick you up from a moment like a really hard moment and that's why you're so you feel so grateful and indebted to them but in all actuality they are angels for a reason like they are meant to bless you and then fly back up to heaven so I t when I read that I was like oh my gosh that's actually so relatable to so many friends that I've like met throughout the scene where I'm very I feel so much gratitude I'm so indebted to them I'm so like infatuated with the friendship but it doesn't always end up in a direction that I expect it to and then I always end up feeling a little bit like a little bit uh fallen behind and um sometimes I always have to think like in LA too it's like a rat race you know like people are making new friends people are making new content people are doing this and that and I'm like oh my god I have to do it too and it's like it's really rough even now like um I finally got the courage to like ask a bunch of content creators to do this collab with me and it's crazy because like literally more than half of them can't even have the decency to respond to me and it's not even a thing like oh yeah like I could just tell myself and copy I'm like oh they're just busy or they haven't seen my message but like I know these people they're like the most social media obsessed like again I'm not owed it I'm not owed a response but it's also crazy to me like that that's the life of an influencer guys some people all they do is they care about numbers or they care about certain aspects that if it's not important to them they'll just ignore it and i'm guilty of this too sometimes like i'll have people reach out to me people of my past of like years ago like i've met these people in like like league season two days you know and then all of a sudden they're like trying to get into my life or trying to hang out with me and although I am like flattered in a sense that they want to hang out with me at the same time like I can't make myself too available and if I apply that to other people like the people that I've asked I'm like okay I guess I can I can do that but at the same time I'm allowed to like feel a little bit of hurt you know <laughs> I'm allowed to feel a little bit offended that people can't even tell me no even though I make it very clear like oh like please feel free to say no but they won't even tell me no like they'll just leave me on red <laughs> so I'm just like okay it's okay I knew that this could have happened I just wish people would say no at least so I so I'm not like left on red because I'm always very prompt with them messaging me but like I said you can only control your reaction to things you are not owed anything at the end of the day and you need to constantly remind yourself that especially in LA where everyone is the, their own main characters you are the side characters to everyone so you can't expect them to respond but i am hurt but i'm trying i'm trying my best to like focus on the positives and focus on the people that did say yes i actually have um a decent amount of people that said yes but also a decent amount of people that are unanswered which kind of bothers me because I'm just going to assume it's a no but I'm not gonna lie some of these people I have literally gone out of my way for in a heartbeat and in a second and it's so hurtful for me to see them not even have the decency to respond like I don't care if they say no. In fact, I am more than happy to accept their no because I understand they're very busy, cool people. But god damn. When you like when you feel like you're the type to just go all out for someone, drop anything at the like you know, at the second and they can't even respond, bro. I wish I could expose, but I'm not that petty. I think 
it's very natural to feel hurt by people, unintentional or not. What I'm trying to say is I'm allowed to feel hurt. I'm allowed to feel hurt. And I'm sure I've unintentionally hurt people too. I get it. It's fine. Yeah, no, exposing is just immature. But what I do plan to do, though, is tomorrow I will end up messaging everyone again, like, hey, um, at this point I'm just going to take it as a no. Feel free to correct me. But, um, yeah, thank you for your time. Probably. <laughs> it's okay. There's a lot of times where like, that's like a life lesson for me to learn too. Cause I'm very self-aware with where like when I give too much to people, it can be uncomfortable because they're, they have a right to not want to give as much to me. It doesn't make them a bad person. A lot, a lot of the times is I also can be learning from this and not be a person that does things and expects the favor to be returned later. Because some people are just not, they don't have the capacity to give that to me. So it's a two-way street. I don't blame them 100%. I'm literally just venting and I'm sure you guys can relate at some degree. You guys have felt ignored or felt like, not prioritize or felt like you've invested more time in people and they can't give you the time of day. So it's okay. Please no speculation. I will not even give you remotely a hint of who it can be. And I'm telling you right now, the number is over six. So don't even, <laughs> there's multiple people. And I'm sure, and I know for a fact that December is the busiest month. I do not hold this personally against any of them, uh, but I am just venting that I'm allowed to feel pain. That's all. It's okay. And also, you guys have to know that I'm very self-aware that I was a very unhealthy amount of a giver. Very unhealthy. And it was unhealthy to the point where I was giving, but then my subconscious was, t was giving expecting something back and you shouldn't give in general expecting that the, the favor could be returned i'm not going to lie though it does feel like bare minimum sometimes but my bare minimum is someone else's maximum you know i can't assume because i was brought up differently you know and my dad he's the kind of guy where if i'm craving pho from a place that's an hour away, he will drive to get me that pho and drive all the way to my house that's an hour away and then drive all the way back. A two hour trip just to give me my pho. So I'm telling you guys like, which is uh, beef noodle soup if you guys don't know what pho is. But basically, I was brought up very acts of service. He would drop anything and everything because my, my parents are poor. You know, and they're poor because they make poor decisions a lot of the times. But at the end of the day, when I want something and, and if I need it, if I crave it, he's going to get it for me. He's going to get it for me fast. And I realize, God damn you, dad, because now it's rubbed onto me where I do this for other people. And obviously, do you guys expect gamers to drop everything at a bat to travel two hours just to get pho? No. So I'm very self-aware of my predicament, guys. So no speculation, no shitting on my friends, no assuming anything, nada. Very aware of the scenarios, very aware of my weaknesses. Just, I'm allowed to feel hurt. It's okay. It's okay. That's your love language, yeah. Well, it depends. I think my love language is more, um, lately it's been definitely more words of affirmation. 
because I feel like I've been lacking the affirmation as you can dis I, as you can as you can tell not many words are being given to me so I'm like <laughs> I think people are a mix of all five though unless a traumatic event happened where you are very averse to a certain love language which is very natural because trauma does that to you it changes you but for the most part um uh, people do require more than one so whichever you're lacking in the moment that's probably the one you crave most so yeah you missed a hundred dollar dono what no way you trolling me <gasps> Maka Yuri What the heck? <sighs> Shane Thank you so much for the generous donation. Can I free? Thank you. Very generous. Very, very generous. It was donated I think a couple minutes ago. Thank you. Anyway, this isn't supposed to end on you guys feeling sorry for me. I don't like that. I'm fine. I'm actually, like I said, I'm the mentally, I'm the mentally most happy person I I have been in a while. I'm so sorry that it ended up like being a little bit on the negative at the end. It's, it's not that negative. I'm fine. I just said my feelings are a little hurt. That's it. That's fine. But it's December. Everyone's freaking busy. I get it. Literally the busiest month. It's Q4. And not everyone is checking their texts. And not everyone has me as a prio. So what if my messages get buried? Who knows? I don't know. It's not their fault. Yeah. But I can't wait to like say no to more people <laughs> if, if it's it's like uh i know that i can't keep on dropping you know my plans and stuff to help so the sooner i'm like less of that the the faster i can just heal and move on <laughs> Waiting on being clouded enough to to say no to more people, bro. Clout is so dangerous. Dangerous. The 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 closer you are to stop seeing people as numbers, the better your mental will feel. Because unless you are in first place, I feel like people are you're always going to have that worry. Like, I, I can't. That's actually something that um, a clouded friend of mine told me. Um, is that they said a good thing about clout is that you're able to handpick your friends. And to me, that like hit me like a truck. Because I'm just like, I've always wanted to be able to select people and have them automatically accept me you know so i'm like damn that's that's the recipe all i need is clout how do i attain this clout but a part of me is also very stubborn and very prideful where i'm just like i don't want clout in a way that makes me feel that it's not my effort either otherwise people will see me and use me for my connections, which has happened before, unfortunately. You know, and it is what it is. Um, it's hard. <laughs> oh yeah, because me and Speed have so much in common that I would feel comfortable enough to ask him to collab with me, totally. Yes, we are literally peas in a pod, by the way. <laughs> Work on your content will automatically turn on you. Yeah, this is true. This is true. And I've been, I 100% have been concentrating 
and focusing on my in my own element doing things that people are like what the hell is she doing and i'm like okay with it because i'm like this is me people are like how do you stream for this many hours and i'm like you know this is who i am i can get really addicted to games and i can prove it to you guys by streaming 30 hours straight <laughs> And I think I'm slowly, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been, I've been going upwards. It's been really nice. So thank you. It's really nice. And obviously I can't have, I can't take credit for everything, you know. My current connections, my friends. They still always support me, even if it's more on the sidelines, you know, but I'm still a friend, you know, so by association, I still feel like, you know, I'm indebted to them. I appreciate them no matter what, even if they don't respond, it's fine. It's cool. I'll just have to prove that... My upcoming Christmas collab streams with the people that have responded really, really, really fast. Um, yeah, those people and those streams, I'm going to do my bestest to make them as fun and entertainment, entertaining as possible. And that they'll regret not saying yes. They'll look at it and they'll be like, damn, that looked kind of fun. Maybe I should have said yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's not the end of the world, guys, because I, I do have quite quite some cool really cool people that have said yes um like super cool <laughs> definitely up there so i can't wait for you guys to see who and they're going to be in the funniest of outfits i've spent over i've spent over a thousand dollars already because um i spent a couple hundred dollars on buying a bunch of funny and cute sexy outfits but also i um between us because i don't think anyone is watching me at 5 a.m anyone that i've asked to collab with but between us i've also bought um at all everyone a very very nice gift it's not like brand name or anything but um they'll be going home with a nice gift and it's a very practical one especially during this time of the year so I can't wait for you guys to see that. Um, I see someone in my viewer list. I think you're also assuming. You might not know who I invited. You guys don't know. You guys don't know. <laughs> What is this event? Have you announced it? I've tweeted it, but then I, I quickly deleted the tweet because, guys, I have this thing about me where I'm kind of like, I second guess everything. I genuinely think I'm just like, oh crap, if I say this, what if people feel left out? Oh crap, if I say this, what if, what if I make someone's Christmas a little less Christmassy? You know, like I just didn't want to. So I, I, I literally was just like, okay, I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Real quick, I'm just gonna delete this tweet. I wish I could invite every single friend. I really wish I could. But I know I, that is a recipe to burn myself out to oblivion. To a crisp. I will literally quit cooking streams right after. <laughs> cooking streams are no joke, guys. I'll have you guys know. When you cook, you have to clean. And when you clean... That knocks the wind out of you. It is not easy to do multiple cooking streams in a row, but I will be for this event. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. 
pretty ambitious, I would say. Some people will say I even bit too much more than I can chew, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Cleaning is satisfying? Wow. Do you want to be my new best friend? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh. I really wish there was just like a magical wand you can buy where you're you're just like flick of the wrist and everything is just clean for you. Like, please. <laughs> Have your friends on stream cook with them around you. Uh, it's hard. It's really hard to get um, streamers to do IRL stuff with. Even even the most like popular or the most close of friends, it's it's not easy to get two schedules to align. Not easy at all. And I have chosen the busiest month to ask people, so it's it's it is like no personal hard feelings, for sure. And then outside of that. Uh, my mental space, I was not in a good place. So I could, I literally could not ask people. I remember when Mion got back to me, she was, she literally celebrated. She's like, oh my god, Arya's finally asking me to do a cooking stream. Like literally, in all caps, celebrating. Because I don't ask. <laughs> Especially when I'm in a mental rut. Oh shit. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Context, context, context. 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 Onigashimasu. Myung is not confirmed. Surprisingly. She has responded, but she's not confirmed because she's also very busy. But she said she will see what she can do. And if any of you guys pressure her, I'll have your names written down. I am a dirty VOD watcher, by the way, so I'll have you know. I'll know. Do not go over there and guilt her or pressure her into joining, partaking. I want people to genuinely be okay to do it. Because it's a busy month, guys. It's busy. Everyone's so mad and busy. She has stream miss going on, okay? I'm so proud of her. She's so cool. Literally giving away PCs and like... Ugh. Please. Me appreciate her. Yeah. And you know who's so cute too? You, know, you, you, wanna, you know who replied to me like instantly? That I, I genuinely was like, I'm just going to take a shot in the dark. I, free I asked Kaede, and she is so sweet. Like, she's literally the sweetest person. And she, she actually tried to consider it. She even tried to, like, fit it in her schedule. Um, ultimately, it didn't work out because she's doing so much. She's literally moving. <laughs> she's moving and she's traveling. So I was just like, oh, my God. I can't believe that she would try to consider it. And talk to Tyson about it too. Like, she really tried to consider it. And I'm just like, and she 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 actually I think she had the fastest response time too. But you know, she could she could have just been it could have been just lucky timing. But my god, she is Kaide W 110%. I love her. Like, she deserves all the success coming her way. I genuinely feel like she's one of one of the most authentic people i've ever met in the industry she's so raw and she's so she's so honest and there's something about her that just like screams cool girl and you just know because you, you just know she's just oh i love it she's uh i she's so cool she she is really really cool i freaking love her yeah and she's so helpful too it's like she's She's like younger than me and like like newer to the scene yet she's so experienced already and like is so open to help people about like, you know, 
making sure they don't get scammed or like I remember like hearing her conversations because we went out to lunch and she was just so informative and so caring and bro she's she's w she is a w definitely a beautiful person inside out type b for sure 110 percent 110 percent total is she pretty she's gorgeous so beautiful her skin is poreless i'm like when i met her in person i'm like ain't no way i literally i remember one of the first things i talked to her was like modeling i'm like she really like a hundred percent can get model modeling contract a hundred percent it's like a matter of time <laughs> Pores are good sometimes. I mean, but also if I could choose to have pores or choose to be poreless, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna have to run with the poreless option. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe we just spent all that time fangirling. We need it. We, we gotta chill. We gotta chill, guys. We gotta be cool. We gotta be cool. We gotta be cool. <laughs> we gotta be cool. Time well spent. <laughs> God, I'm embarrassed. Expose speed right now bro you like the only one right now you're literally that one guy that's just constantly talking about speed you gotta you gotta you gotta chill out my, my guy you gotta you gotta you gotta sit down you, or should i say you gotta slow down <laughs> but, okay sorry i won't even <laughs> I did not just go there. I did not just go there. Oh, but <laughs> don't. Are you got jokes? Hell yeah. Uh. Pre-wish, J13. You are the lucky guy that I'm going to respond to because I'm about to leave. But let me tell you, I asked one of them of the two that you mentioned and they confirmed. But I won't tell you. Both would have been poggers. But... Yeah, I only sent out a certain amount because I could allocate only X amount of days to X amount of people. And if I could, I, le I literally said if I can invite every single one of my friends, OTV and friends plus extension, extended uh, in influencer friends or, or uh, content creator friends, I 100% would have done it. But you guys can't speculate any more than that. Gordon Ramsay confirmed, bro. If Gordon, if I had a collab with Gordon Ramsay. Okay, you know what? I need to stop talking as if these people are like, I can't stop. I need to stop putting it like an impossible factor or that I'm like peasant. I'm not a peasant. I'm not a peasant. The other day, I actually was on YouTube, and I saw, what's her name? Um, Song Jia, and also um, one of my favorite mukbangers of all time. Um, um, what's her name again? I swear she's my favorite. I watch her on, stre on stream. It's, it's, oh, it's uh, Korean, cute girl. Suyang, yes. I always forget her name for some reason, but I, I, I do always watch her videos. Um, yeah, so Suyang and Song Jia both met Gordon Ramsay. So, you know, it's not... <laughs> okay. They are really clouded YouTubers. But! But! You never knew. One day, I think our, our paths will, uh, will cross. Because you're transgender. What? What? Damn. Wouldn't you like to know? Anyways. Um... And you have a pee-pee. Well, 
I'll have you know, if I had a PP, it would 110% be bigger than yours. Anyways, that wraps it up before I get any more toxic. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to send you over to one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. Um, Daph. We love Daph. She is... I, I just love her. She just, I don't know, she just she just reads me like a book. And sometimes you need people that will read you like a book because they will call you out on your bullshit and they will kindly message you and check in on you. And I, I just love that. She's the best. <laughs> and everyone, be a real one real quick. And when we raid her, make sure you say area raid. We gotta beat her at her own game. All right. <laughs> it's area, okay? Spell it A R E A. Area raid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Area raid. Get it ready. <laughs> no confusions here. It is a straight up area raid. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for today. Um, you know, I've noticed something about me is whenever I plan something, it never goes as planned. So at this point, you guys should just expect the unexpected <laughs> especially if i have something planned maybe expect what it is i'm not planning <laughs> because i i originally planned to make chinese wiener buns i originally planned to uh hunt six shinies and play some overwatch in between and um not talk but uh, i ran into a little uh hiccup with my family and it made me really really sad and i uh, honestly needed some company and i appreciate the company anti parasocial parasocial club out never gonna date y'all probably won't meet you guys in real life to be like friends friends but i do appreciate you guys but i just have to put it out there because reality check you know i'll do that once in a while anyways love you guys in a non-parasocial way bye <laughs> see you guys tomorrow